Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here to Esports U with coverage for the NJCAA brought to you with all of this Overwatch action we've got going tonight. My name is K10, and joining me on the desk is a friend that we don't always get to see here on the network, but we love having you here. It's Chef Billy. Billy, how are you doing, man? Oh, man, I am so excited to be here. Uh, Polly uh, let us know about this going on. I've been like really super busy. Um, working a lot of different events and Rocket League being one. That's how I actually know you guys is through uh, the Southeast Regional yes. uh, qualifiers. So I was looking at Kenneth, so I'm like, oh, I know some of these names. <laughs> so now we get into my main game, though, baby. And now this is where I get to, you know, kind of flex my, oh, flex the muscles and go, oh, oh, you know, I, okay. this is what I know. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm looking at this, you know, and, and we're, we're getting towards the business end of your guys' tournament here, here in group number three, Alexandria County going up against Union County if i was if i'm correct in that one four and oh versus three and one uh union county's got to bring themselves out here they got to get a win today to make sure that they secure one of those top two places going out of this group uh and not have to you know wait for all the different tiebreaker scenarios to go through so uh, a win today will definitely lead them towards that and I, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what this level of competition is because I've been bouncing all over the place between, you know, <laughs> top of tier two down to like community stuff. I mean, the off season here in Overwatch for everybody is a lot of fun. Uh, you get to see lots of different facets of the community. So here's another little notch that I get to see a little niche community. I can't wait to see how they play, what kind of metas are in place and whew, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I mean, quite quite a mouthful there, but yeah, I agree with you, Billy. It's all <laughs> over the place. I mean, no, I, I, I hear you. There's so much going on, action across the board, right? I mean, even just here on, on this network, we've got different colleges, different conferences, right? This right here is the junior college level, but even then, uh, just to give you the background on it, we've got teams that have varying skill levels across the board we've we've come into multiple weeks where it'll be two three and old teams they're two teams that are just absolutely dominant and at least on the standings and then it just does not look that way in the game but one team just absolutely dominant i'm curious to see if that's the case what we have tonight because alexandria sitting at four and old means that yeah they've, they've been sweeping their group so far but you'd be surprised billy there's there's some times where that is not the case that is not you know it is not the team that's undefeated that ends up, you know, being the dominant one in the match. We've seen some pretty interesting things so far in this network, and I'm being told we're ready to take it to the to the first map. We are going to Ilios, so oh, Billy, what do you think? You ready for this? You ready? You ready for some Ilios? I am ready for Ilios. Ilios is one of my favorite map types uh, because. Look, you've got three different metas that you can go through here. I mean, Wrecking Ball can really, really set the tone here on Lighthouse. When you're going to Relic Ruins, you're looking for something Brawl or Rush. And then you talk about Well, and Well's kind of the outlier because you're looking for environmental, but you're also looking for a little bit more aerial control, uh, running with an Echo or with a Pharah. You know, and it just depends on how you decide to work this. Um, Symmetra's really been rearing her head here in a lot of the metas across the competitions. Uh, teams using it to get out the gate fast. Sometimes they'll stick with it. Sometimes they'll pull back to a tracer. So we'll see what Alexandria and Union County come out here. Union County three and one on this season so far. They need the dub today. I cannot wait to see how this goes down. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Can't wait. Excited to see what we've got. And, and yeah, you're talking about the metal, right? We're talking about the potentials there. But I think at, at the end of the day, Billy, all I want to see is the Lucios. Show me the boops. Let's see those environmentals <laughs> off the side. You know what I mean? It's It's been, there's been so much fun. Actually, we saw last week there was a spawn hold at the ship, like at the spawn, and people were getting boops before they could even get off and into the game. But here we go. Alexandria starting out. There is no Lucio on Union County side, but a Baptiste and the Lucio starting up for the boys on the blue side. So as first skirmish. Looking like it's going to start off at the front. It's a nice flashbang, goes forward. Not going to be able to get much more, but Alexandria takes positioning on the point. Yep, and I mean, look at this. Parasol already getting some work done on the Doofus. There's times two for them. Yeah, Chubbs is going to have a lot of fun here. Well, I thought so, but uh, gets <laughs> taken out for, uh, for their troubles. But that's going to be cleaned up there for Union County. So great early progression here for Union County. And look at that Parasol, 50% towards Meteor Strike. Chubbs. Taking it to Ghost and saying, yeah, I, I'm going to alpha male you here and I got you taken care of. So, whew, I, I like the moves here. I, I like Crispy now swapping over and going off the Edgelord over to the Ferris. So now, you know, you're looking for aerial threats as well. 
Yep, there you go. Pharmacy up in the sky. They want to see what they can get done here. Union County, though, holding their angles. And actually, there it is. Nevix, the Junkrat. They're getting some good some good kills at the beginning of the match here. He's trying to push him off. Alexandria does actually get positioning. They're on to the point. Yes, they lose the Junkrat, but they've got the flip. They've got control. They know the Pharah's up and above, but it looks like they're just going to push her off for now. If she can get a reset, it looks like that is the plan. And yeah, there you go. No snipes from the middle of the sky. A good flip. Yeah, I mean, losing your, your mercy so early in the fight, thanks to uh, Mr. Nevix there, uh, that definitely takes your fire out of the play. So easy flip for them there. But, you know, they're coming up close on Shatter and on Graviton Surge. You want to see how you go there? I'm looking for them maybe to combo uh, the Meteor Strike into the Big Bang there and see what it goes. Nice Shatter from Chubbs! Yeah, Chubbs lays it down right on the side, and now it's fighting in the point. They're trying to push in. Unicony is there, but there it is. Meteor Strike also pushes them out, and it's looking like it's going to be a wipe so far. But remember, the Zarya was pushing out. Nevix still here. They've got a Junkrat and a Zarya. What more can they get? Lucio around the side. They're still trying, and actually, he's creating a menace, but no! Gets taken down by Parasol and the Doomfist in the end. It should be a flip to Unicani, and they will finally get everybody out. But that is a nice trade, and actually a good fight between both sides. Uh, two ultimates, and Chubbs almost has uh, their Shatter back. Hey, Tad, so that's how much work the uh, the UD County Reinhardt got done. But man, I mean, you, I, I'm looking for Alexander right now. Graviton Surge into into their uh, into the Rip Tire. That could be a wipe. S is gonna have to hold on to this immortality field until they hear that go off. Dragons, I mean, look at that ult economy right on the blue side. Alexandria, they're almost rocking all six. There it goes, Grav is there. There it goes, the beat. But whoa, can whoa, they whoa. sustain everything? The answer is no. It's a just an absolute chaos. The wipe in the front, they're gonna try to get some damage in the backside, but now it's just an all out brawl on the point. Reinhardt swinging away. Hammer v Hammer, can they do it? Can they get the showdown? It looks like no, he just <laughs> concedes it. Alexandria is forced to give up that one after a great surge from Tubes. Oh man, I mean, I tell you what, yeah, Dad. I mean, what happened there? Crispy just said, I'm gonna go ahead and live through this and I'm gonna go ahead and drop my barrage while you're doing your little combo here. Uh, and I'm going to win. So, I mean, we're at last fight territory now, my friend. And lots of stuff going in their favor. This Doofus has not been answered to yet. Yeah, that's actually a big pick on the Tarantino there on the side here. They do not have the Zarya. They do not have that shielding, that protection. Now, again, tanks swinging away. Junkrats are there. But actually, Alexander manages to get the flip and manages to get the hold. It's just this two-man combo. They're holding the line for now. Mercy's able to rejoin them. They've got some time. They've got some pressure. But can they stall out long enough? Because there is some ultimates to play with. There's the Meteor Strike. There's Window on the side of Union County. And you can bet they're going to use it. Well, I mean, they've got three ways to boot people off the map. Now, that's a huge oh! take out there. What a combo. He's gonna go looking for the Ana too. If he can find this, that means no healers there are all gone. DCP has to do his best to try and stay alive for now. They're gonna push in Union County, all the might of their entire team comp. But here comes the tire around the backside. What can he find with it? Just the Baptiste in the back line. They're gonna get that one. But the rest of the fight has gone the way of Union County. They've got the damage, the kills onto the tanks. That's a nice trade back from the D.Va, but what more can they get? It looks like the answer is not much. Union County gets the flip. It's gonna be overtime full, 99 to 99. Can they get it? Lucio trying to stall out for the overtime clock, but the rest of the squad needs to get back in now. There's the res, there's the kill though. They've lost Lucio. He got pooped off the map by the Wrecking Ball. No, this is disaster. Alexandria cannot get it. They look like they've been pushed out. A few more kills left to finish. Just the Reinhardt, but this should be point one going over the Union County. It should be, but I mean, they're still holding the point. They take down the Para as <laughs> well. What the heck am I seeing right now? Okay, oh, okay. Alexandria, not willing to let go of it whatsoever. Uh, let's talk about Tubes there. Uh, swapping over to the Wrecking Ball. Uh, and getting a couple of environmental kills that I, they still weren't able to completely phase out the point. Oh my word. Okay, I see what we're all about here. This is a, a you take this point over my dead body. And uh, well, UD County goes up one nil here. They take the first sub map. And now we're going to head to the pit of hell, otherwise known as well. Yeah, I mean, that was a crazy, uh, just the amount of times, Billy, we saw... 2v2 skirmishes left, right? When the dust settles, it's a tank and a DPS or a tank and a healer left on the point. 
and that's it, right? That's that's all they're fighting for at that point, and it, it's it's crazy to me to see that we've got that much action. You know, it's coming down to the wire. These last few executions, you know, hammer v hammer. But now, actually, look at the compositions here. We've got an Orissa Hog on the side of Union County. There's very little shielding here. I'm really curious to see how this one's gonna play out. Yeah, oh, don't no. worry about that because Crispy already got the concussive blast. You're down one already, and you've got the annoying gnat in the background of Parasol on this uh, tracer. So that's what I'm looking for. Huge poop again. Crispy <laughs> is absolutely owning the skies, my friend. He's got. He's not just the skies, the ground. You can't. You can't stand. You can't jump. You can't walk. You're just gonna get sent flying off the map. I mean, we talked about environmental kills, but the Fara is putting in the work now. They've got a good hold, they've got the point, they've got a solid, solid bastion of, of, of defense here in the front, right? No pun intended on the hero, but they've got a lot of control there. They cannot get past the doorway. They are just struggling from the side of Alexandria. Oh no, another kill there. And yeah, they're, they're trying to get creative, right? I like this. They're trying to go through the tight corridors, force the fight around. There's the stick, there's the damage though. Only Immort Field goes down, but a barrage right there in the face. Can he use it? No, he chooses to hold on to it for now. He doesn't even need it. They've got the rest of the damage and Alexandria forced back. Uh, smart, and now you see the uh, the murder moth uh, pulling out the Glock. And this guy, DCP's decided to choose violence. Uh, and <laughs> not really getting much out of it. Uh, but they get themselves out uh, of the fight, so that is what they really need. Crossing 50% here. Nevix has a tire ready to go, but look at that. Four, almost five ultimates for Union County on the other side. This is just a, going to be a Q-Fest coming up very shortly. That. They've got the ults. If they're gonna make it work, they're gonna have to make it work now. I mean, if you can't make it work with five volts, I mean, there's only one other way, one other scenario that's better for you in that regard. But here we go, Union County. There, that's a good trade onto the Aww. Arisa, but the Genji does pick him up in the back line, and the Res is there. The scoreboard, the kill feed, lighting up red. Union County, they're burning their ultimates now to push Alexandria even further into the hole. The window gets used, but it's not going to be able to do much more good from them. Alexandria still struggling to find a way onto this point. I mean, let's talk about that. Two ultimates, really, uh, to win that fight. Uh, I mean, you, you throw out the, the Valkyrie, and you also throw out the whole hog. And now they're in the back line! They're gonna let Ooh. loose with the barrage. Good night, see you later. Oh my gosh, the, the direct hits too coming out from the side of Crispy. It is just not looking good. The far in the skies, that is a menace. And that, that is definitely just domination from the side of Union County. Remember what I told you earlier, Billy, about how we don't know if the 4-0 teams are, you know, where do they stand? There it is. This, <laughs> there, there, there you go. Welcome to the network, Billy. <laughs> hey, I mean, I, I, I was agreeing with you and I was loving it. I always love a good underdog story. And boy, did they take it to Alexandria. They're uh, looking very crispy indeed after this. I mean, the beat dropping everything and they just said, nay, nay, it's mine. All mine, get out, you're done. And uh, so yeah, they now have k, k they've now taken the first map of control off of Alexandria. And now Alexandria has got to be worrying what the heck do they got to do to even get their foot on the point. Yeah, I mean, that is that is definitely not a great start, right? That's not what you want. But, I mean, credit where credit's due, right? Map 1.1 1. 1 looked very close, right? 99 to 99. We can't take that away from them. It was a very, very close first point. However, the far from the skies, I mean, it just felt like, you know, Alexandria, maybe not not enough hit scan or not enough, you know, answers to that that terror in the sky. And with them having the first map or the next map pick, I should say, as we go to, I believe it's Escort. For, forgive me, Scoots, if I'm wrong on this. It is hybrid. I'm sorry. I remember it was like there's like a mixed one. It's a hybrid map next. And honestly, I mean, you got to imagine there's no way Alexandria picks a map where pharmacy is a, is, a, is a, even a viable option in any regard. Well, I mean, I don't think that they're, they're worried about it because you had both Aiden Ash and uh, Cassidy. And they still couldn't deal with Crispy. So that's why they went back over to the Junkrat. Um, they had no answer for the Pharah in the sky. The pharmacy was uh, reigning supreme. So, my my my, uh, I don't I don't know if they've got the uh, the hit scan or if they did enough Kovacs before they came in here today. But uh, <laughs> the, the aim game uh, was definitely not in their favor because Crispy was just uh, dominating in the skies. They had okay. If we think about it right there on well, they had uh, they had the Ash, they had the Cassidy, yep. they also yep. had a Diva, pocketing. Uh, w pocketed by a mercy, so ye. 
I don't think they're worried about it at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I gotta uh -huh. agree with you. I, I oh, okay. Wait, we've got some substitutions from what I'm being told by by the rest of the production team there. I mean, they're changing it up. Alexandria changing it up a little bit. Actually, oh no, I take that back. That's Union County changing mm -hmm. it up. If I'm looking at the the rosters right, we've taken we've taken out Crispy. They don't have Crispy anymore. They've they they they've chosen. They said good work. You may now rest, good sir, as as they're moving <laughs> on. I I just I I just say Nani. <laughs> Why would you take out the person who carried your team? Oh man, that's going to be a difficult one to see what they got. So. Man, uh, we'll see who comes in for them. Uh, hopefully, they, they they live up to the uh, their predecessor's dominance. And you know, hybrid. I mean, yeah, hybrid. you might want to change it up a little bit. So, we'll see. We'll see uh, yeah. what what map we head on to because I, so, I'm I'm looking at a, a Alexandria Technical College. They're kind of like, eh. man. So <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll we'll see. They ran into a no. wall. They, they definitely did, but yeah, we are going to King's Row, Scrim's Row, as it's famously called, right? And I like this idea, right? It takes the far kind of out of the equation a little bit, right? There's those close street lines, right? Those close sight lines, if you get to streets, right? The overall, yes, point one, you've got a little bit of air, you know, airspace to work with, but they do have that ability, Junkrat, to bring it out, right? If you're on the side of Alexandria, they've got to, they've got the ability to play tight corners, to play, and please forgive the pun, like a rat. To sit on the <laughs> side and sit in the shadows and wait for your enemies to walk by and then say, haha, I got you. And throw a bunch of bombs in their back and say, goodbye, go back to spawn, right? I'm curious to see if that's what Alexandria's game plan is or if if they're even going to be able to make that work. Well, I mean, here's the deal. Uh, if they run what I call the Ice Coal, formerly known as the McFlurry Comp, um, they're, 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 it's just going to be a trade of who gets their immortality healed out last and who's last the longest. Um... I want to see what what uh, Union County bringing in here. They got SoKev coming in here. They're showing us the uh, the Australian bombers, so I'm not hating that in the slightest. Uh, a little bit of single single uh, target healing coming out of pockets once again. So that might be a little bit of concern, but you do have the res on the table. You've got the immortality field, so I don't hate it. Um, running Ryan Zarya definitely okay here. Um, they're gonna. Uh, I think that they're gonna run into trouble defensively with this. Uh, with this May, uh, Se's gonna have to pull out the immortality field as soon as that wall uh, cordons off Chubbs, and they're gonna have to really sustain through that. Yeah, I want to see how they're able to make this work. The Widowmaker on the point, just getting that information for now doesn't find any stragglers. So all right, they've got the information they need. I'd expect to see the swap soon. Yep, there we go. Ramen immediately hops back to spawn. The rest of the team, meanwhile, going forward, pushing through. Wall goes out, but does not cordon off Chubbs like you're talking about. However, they might freeze him out. He doesn't have a retreat, and actually he gets what? traded out. But meanwhile, Union County on the flank. They've got the Cassidy just gunning away, firing from the side. And it, it was a good play to kill the tank, right? They trade out Chubbs, but they trade him for the rest of the team. I'm still kind of questioning how they got, how they didn't win that fight outright. Once the Reinhardt goes down and you punish down the Mercy, you're done. And they just did not have the wherewithal to get in on the point. So now a Parasol halfway to Deadeye on the Cassidy here, uh, landing some pretty good shots with this Peacemaker. Nevik super low coming up close onto the Blizzard. They're gotta be playing for Blizzard. Yeah, you've got to imagine that's going to be the goal, right? Force them down, force into that open area. Don't let them have any real estate on the center of the point. But Ult Economy is there. Sokev does have a tire ready. Oh, and it no. looks like this is going to be the play. Here we go. Follow it over to the left side, looking for the victim. They know it's there, but can anybody get out? <laughs> no, it's a double. Zarya and Ana say good night, goodbye. He's done his job and more. Sokev with a huge <laughs> one. Oh, no. <laughs> Alexandria. Yes, go back. Go to jail. Do not pass. Go. Do not collect. $200. They're forced to rethink this one. Yeah, and, and great use there of the of the uh, res there as well as the immortality field. So, yeah, Chubbs is filling his oats there. <laughs> uh, definitely going in with impunity and just letting them have it. you love to see it. As a Reinhardt main, I uh, I fully approve of all this going. Here you go. Talking about being a rat. 
Uh, so Kev is choosing violence, and uh, I, I'm living for it. I'm living for all this right now. I mean, you've got so much to go into this next fight. Already half the time off, k Ted. This is what we're looking for. Nevix has got to land a big one here. Yeah, he wants to, but the flank, high noon, the dead eye in the back line. Yes, Blizzard is there, but they've already lost their honor. The rest of the squad is not in a good spot. The Reinhardt, the Shatter goes down. It finds a bunch. They've got a wall to cordon off, but Tubes manages to trade back onto Nevix. They can't quite get him out, and that means the rest of the squad, with no backline support, they're forced to pull back. So many big ultimates just got burned from Alexandria and no value out of it. Murder Moth do the rescue once again. You love to see it. <laughs> you love to see when the Mercies pull out the Glock and say, I I'm good. So Nevix now uh, has decided that the May just has not worked. They're going to be trying to play for Nano Blade here. Technowitz, 65% uh, towards that Nano, but you're looking at Window, your Grav, and the Shatter. So lots to go off here. Grav just gets burned in the center of the point, but there's not a lot of value there. Now they're looking for it. They don't end up getting the tire either off of a clutch shot from Tarantino. It pushes them back, and now they're going to burn it again. They're on point. They've got a lot of members back. There's the window, but there's a huge shatter coming out from the side of Chubbs. It's just a complete wipe. The kill feed blew. They're all gone. Alexandria, they've got 30 seconds, but I don't even know if they can get back to the point. Oh, they'll be able to get back, especially if they swap to Lucio, which DCP has. So now you're looking at lots of burst damage. Parasol gets a kill out the gate. That's the Lucio. That's your win condition. They at least get to the point. Oh, no. Yeah, they've got it. Yeah, they're there now. They're here. They're on. But the question is, how long can they stay here? They're trying to find damage. It's just the duel, the brawl in the back line as they're just pushing it forward. Hammer v. Hammer. There's another shatter. Actually, hold on. Alexandria might have some things to play for here. They're going to get a res. They're looking for a pin. That's a nice one on the tubes. He goes down. The res from the Reinhardts. They're back at it again. But this time, Alexandria is successful. They might have to get it done in overtime. But it looks like they will cap point one and we do move on to streets well i mean it took them all four minutes to go there so now uh having burnt almost their entire battery of ultimates here uh this should be a pretty conclusive hold here for union county it's not the full hold like you want but now they need to push up to archway they need to deny the space coming in here and they will have a very good win condition going into their attack phase oh my god oh you say this but then Parasol just says, no, 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 sit, sit, sit back. Oh, never mind. And then Nevik says, no, 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 you also sit down. Okay. Wait, what is going on? Billy, do you see this? Yeah, okay. I see it. <laughs> yeah, well, mm, so did, so did Ramen, apparently. He doesn't like this. He, he's not happy about that. Oh, uh, UD County is getting a little bit too big for their britches, if I'm being completely honest right now. Uh, they, they, they've completely given any kind of positioning off this is just free cartload push for Ale for Alexandria. I mean, they just now started pushing, might I remind you. Uh, no, they uh, didn't. It's right here. It's right here on half. So, I mean, yeah, these uh, fights they just took uh, makes me scratch my head. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a little confused on that one, too. As because of those errors and because of spawns, we now see that Union County is all the way uh, still trying to just get back to cart. But Alexandria, meanwhile, is three meters away from finishing off point number two. They're going to lose another tire from Alexandria, but that might not be a big deal as the grab is there, but the shatter comes back in response. It means they're going to be pushed off for now. The kills is currently going in favor of Union County. They want to get out here. They need to clear the back line. Another grab goes across. More damage coming through. Union County will, in fact, clear them from this one. But with how long this took and the amount of time they've got left on the clock, Alexandria could, in theory, they just got to push two more meters. That's, that's it. I mean, that's all they got. yeah. If Etsy uh, is able to put this window down in a good spot, uh, I, I think that they win this out without even having them letting them touch the point. That's the big point right here. They've got to set up this window. Uh, Parasol's going to have their old spawn here. And look at this. Parasol is in your spawn area, cleaning up the kills. Oh man, this is just going from bad to worse for Alexandria. Yeah, Alexandria, they had that momentum. They're gonna try to get back now, but remember, yeah, they are down one, and that's a huge pin from Chubbs. That might just seal the deal here, but it's a nice step blossom in the back line. Ramen does get some. Now, if they can close this kill onto the Reinhardt like they just did, 
they might be able to clear this out. Tracer's gonna try to stall it for as long as she can. Meanwhile, the rest of the tank line is back up in res, but how long can they hold? Can they clear out the Reaper? That is the problem, the thorn in their side. And it looks like Ramen is able to get it done. He just has one more pesky little gnat to get rid of the tire. Doesn't clear him either. And now with backup, reinforcements arrive. It looks like, yes, Alexandria finishes point two. And they've moved it on. They've only got a minute 30 left, but what an improvement. Well, <laughs> I, I'm yeah, still yeah. scratching my head. I'm still scratching my head how they lost two fights and now they're looking at possible completion by Alexandria. They have uh, thrown their ult economy to the wayside and Ramen has been completely unchecked. Yeah, Ramen so far. I mean, look at this. He's almost had another Death Blossom, right? He's going to try to have it ready. He's got it building up. And honestly, it could be a big play. It could be a big point. But Parasol getting the two kills onto the back line means that the rest of the squad is forced to retreat. Look at this. He's about to clean him up again. There goes the Zarya. A little wow. bit of the PM. He's on a rampage. The Madman. He's got another. Oh, no. He will get taken down by a fire strike. But job well done. I mean, cheers, love. They all go down. <laughs> and you can see it there. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not happy about that. Uh, I would not be either. Four ultimates coming up into this next fight for Alexandra. And uh, you've got both tank ultimates here. You can lock them up and go in swinging. Oh. Hang on. There we go. Sneaky beaky like. There it is. But he gets pooped up into the sky. Oh, no. That could be a big problem. He's got to kill the Mercy here. Otherwise, there's no value out of it. They might get the trade. They're all so low. Finally, he picks up one. And now, actually, that is the play. Alexandria, he can't quite get the kill onto the Mercy. But can they pick off the Ryan after the res? They're trying. They want to get this kill. They want to at least start closing out onto some people. But the trade backs are there. You'll keep your eyes on that back line. Here comes the tire. Grab forces them back for now. But can he get value out of it? Trying to find that juicy target. And he gets it. It's Ghost. The Reinhardt, the main tank, is gone. They jump off the stage, or I don't know if that was a force there or not, but with the tanks gone from the side of Alexandria, the rest of the squad will surely fall, and that is it. First half done. A great effort from Alexandria. They managed somehow to scrape together two points. They do, and I tell you what, I mean, compared to, to that they had to capture point A in overtime, they got a lot of value for what they had. So, UD County, they still have a, a pretty good win condition on the board here, K-Tad, where they just need to go a little bit further than what Alexandria did in the point three. And they're gonna take two, zil, two nil lead. And I tell you what, Alexandria, they're, they're on the back foot right now. I think they're starting to get a little bit sweaty. Uh, and I think that Parasol uh, dipping the uh, the nether regions onto, onto poor Ramen there uh, may have woken up a beast that they should have not done. Yeah, you hate to see it, right? You're feeling good, but all of a sudden, that's the rallying cry, right? When when the rest of the team is like, "Oh no, did he? Did he just? Oh, he didn't." And then you know, and everybody just you know, like, "No, no, no! Now it's time, right? We are not losing this game. We, how dare he? You know, the gauntlet has been thrown to the floor, as they say. You know, as 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 Alexander, right? in up in arms, they're just like, "No, we we will not let this stand." And yeah, I got. I'm curious to see now, right? I got. I, I want to see. Yeah, has the beast awoken? Right. Was that enough? You know, they, they managed to scrape it by in the beginning. It was looking rough. But I mean, hey, even if it ends up being Five. just a draw, if they can hold him in the streets, if they can hold him on point one, I think that's a clear message Alexandria is going to send. And I mean, I'm, I'm liking how this game is developing so far, if I'm being honest with you, Billy. I mean, it can be, yeah. I mean, we'll see what SoCap can get done here with some damage boost at their back. A uh, definite breaking shield opportunity. Aerosol. Looking for this angle. Nice Ooh. angle once again. Oh. That's two. That's it. You're done. Goodbye. Hold on. Let me let me just clip that real quick for the, for the replay. <laughs> Hold on. Somebody clip it. <laughs> let me just let me just make sure it's in the real. Okay. Uh, there we go. Because that's uh that's pretty much the that single-handedly is just point one. There's uh there's no other there's no other words for it. They they gotta push back. I mean, yes, the rest of the team has respawned, but when you lose half of your squad in the opening salvo, the opening arrow to the face. I mean, look at that. Alexandria now, five minutes 40 on the clock, but they're gonna need to stall out at least before, you know, in the streets phase, it's a tough task, a daunting task, and not a lot of old economy for them to work with here in the middle sector. So, all right, what can you build up? What can you stall is the big question. 
Well, what they can't stall right now. Yeah, he's getting vision for this uh, Dragon Strike. Oh. Has it? Oh my god, this is gonna be disgusting. Yeah, here we go. Dragons come out as well. There's another fight in the backside. Chubbs is there in the front, but also we've got the Harzo in the back line. Parasol just knocks them all Parasol! down. What was that? They all fall down, and now next fight, Union County can go in with Grav Tire and head into point C with almost seven minutes on the clock. Let me remind you, uh, the fastest that I've ever seen somebody pull into point B or point C was six and a half minutes. So they have all the tools going forward for that they want right now. Go windows out. Tire gets one. Will they even burn the grab? That's the question. It looks like no. They don't even need it. They've got the damage running right on through. You want to talk about seven minutes? Well, here's six on the clock for you there, and they're gonna keep it rolling. They're just pushing through. There's a beam, a laser to the face right now. The rest of the squad can't even get caught up. Meanwhile, that cart slowly making its progress in the back line. I mean. When the tea is this hot, of course, you dip it in the bag, but oh, no, Parasol. <laughs> it's, uh, he's looking, uh, he's he's ready. He's, he's got that lifting, and it's not ice. It's very hot, it's very spicy. Can he get another? No. The Deadeye on the backside, they're trying to find some damage. Here comes the Surge, and the rest of the team, meanwhile, forced the back line. It's a close-up duel, but actually, hold on. Alexandria, they, they hold the line. They held the line because, uh, I, I, I mean, they just, Kind of press Q because they were, I think, memeing a little bit on, on Alexandria. Uh, and they they paid their price there. But uh, Dragons and Tire available into this next fight. Tarantino is going to have grab, but all they have to do is put out their immortality field and they're going to survive it just fine. So far, so good. I mean, honestly, now looking at it here, too. Yeah, alt economy. Dragons pushes them back, but it looks like the rest of the squad was able to retreat. Meanwhile, the grab in response and it forces them all up onto the cart, but not a lot of value there. They only do break some shield, not much more damage going across. It gets traded back, actually. That's huge from the side of Nevix. That's a great kill. Can he get more damage across? Close quarters, Junkrat action. The damage is there. The res comes out in the back line, and now, actually, here comes Sokev. He's got a tire in response. What can he find? He finds the Ash. And that means with that said, it's just the tank in the front line. They're just trying to hold it. Bob says bye. The rest of the squad is there. And this is looking like a map to victory for Union County. Yep. And I mean, that uh, is trapped there. Trapping up Alexandria's Reinhardt absolutely laid waste to it. So my goodness, Union County, they angry right now. So, Kev, uh, definitely good uh, substitution in there, K-Tad, uh, replacing Crispy. Look at this. Sneaky! Oh. I got you, bro. <laughs> yeah, and then, whoop, from the from the top rope, from the back. Yeah, we talked about ratty gameplay. Well, there it is. That's, uh... I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> are, are this you looks also... like my ranked games. <laughs> Are you also a Junkrat uh, enjoyer there, Billy? I've, you know, Septilence all the time just loves it whenever he sees it come on the cast. And I got I to gotta wonder, Billy, are you also in this boat? <laughs> I, I, I love to see it come out every once in a while. But, um, yeah, I mean, seeing dueling Junkrats, that's even better for me. It was actually my first main when I first bought the game. Junkrat was just so much fun to play. But then I learned that I was actually a tank player. So, uh, I mean... You love to see it. You love to see the duels. Uh, they brought out theirs versus uh, versus Nekev. So, man, uh, I believe they're on match point now, our uh, Union County and uh, Alexandria. They have had zero answer for what uh, Union County is coming out here. And you, we, we talked about it in the beginning of the series. Yeah, Alexandria is 4-0 and oh, and Union County is 3-1. and one. I have a sneaking suspicion that both teams are going to be four and one coming out of this encounter. Yeah, I mean, honestly, really curious to see. I mean, actually, this makes me wonder. Now that I'm staring at it, Union County's only loss, then I believe that must have been to Brian and Stratton, uh, Virginia. Because at that at this point, then hold on, uh, let me let me do a, a quick little uh, research here for you, Billy, as we look through it. Yes, it was last week, in fact. Very fresh. The wound still fresh in the minds, I think, of uh, Union County. There, they don't like that they lost the game. They don't. They don't like that they're here in this position. And 
It, it almost feels like they're taking it out on Alexandria. I mean, the poor the poor team. They just, you know, <laughs> they've got arrows in the face. They've got a junk rat bomb in the face. I mean, how much more can you take? I mean, you're gonna have to keep taking it. So uh, we are we're well, I believe we're swapping sides now. Uh, and I, I if we're going to escort. Yeah, oh. so I mean, we're gonna we're gonna go to assault next. Volskaya Industries. We saw the ash come out from Alexand or from Alexandria, so that gives me a little bit of comfort. Especially if you throw a damage boost onto Ash, uh, it's 195 HP taken with an aim down headshot. Uh, so if you pocket with a mercy, you're going to have that. Do they have the ability to play Sigma and have a split defense here? Because that's something that I would be running personally um on Volskaya because you can set up two separate bunkers you can have one with the shooting line where you've got the mercy the sigma and the ash and then you've got the other one with the orissa you can spam damage you can throw out a tracer in there if you want to you can once again pull out the hanzo and keep vision going um and keep a baptiste up there in case things get really gnarly and you've got the immortality field there's a lot that they can do here um you can also run with a zen here uh and really take those angles from the top high ground uh, and make use of that Discord orb. So there's different ways that these two teams can can really take the approach here into Volskaya. If UCC is going on uh, the attack here, if Uni County is going in as we head into the map here, if Uni County is on the attack right now, they're looking for blood. They smell it in the water. They're ready to go. I'm worried about Alexandria right now. I'm worried about them because they have not been able to uh, to deal with the pressure. And I just heard that Crispy's coming back in. So Farah Mercy will be on the du jour yeah. menu today. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know. Sokev was putting in a pretty good performance there, K-Tad. Uh, so if this is their swap of DPS, once again, I'm not hating it because Farah gets so much work done. Yeah, no, I don't hate it either. I mean, to your point, Billy, I, I, I like the idea of the double bunker, but I think Union County has shown they're, they're more than willing to just flank and hard flank at that, right? Even if it costs them, right? We saw that in Streets phase on, on their defense. They were trying to flank so hard that they, they gave up a whole point for it, right? And and to the to a, right, to a double bunker or to that defensive play style, you know, if, if all of a sudden now you've got six members all the way on your back line, right, on the side of the fight, it does create a bit of a problem for the side of Alexandria, right? for that double bunker, just like you talked about actually here, right? Orissa, Sigma, we've got a bath, we got a Bastion, a Baptiste, right? We've got some of those tools for them to set up strong defensive holds. Five, but on the other side, right? Parasol, three, the two, the tracer one. gameplay. Attack this man is not afraid to dive deep, dive hard, and I think we're seeing it too. The Winston there as well, Union County, they're totally ready for this. I mean, double bubble look here going in. So, I mean, I'm, I'm worried about this uh, for Alexandria. I'm also worried about it coming from the, oh. Uh, yeah. Oh my God, Never mind. I'm not worried anymore. Mm -hmm. And just as we said, the Tracer flank pays dividends. There will be a res in the backside as now they're trying to get it. But the Bastion, if he's forced to focus on his flank, he is not getting the damage down onto the tanks like he wants. And this is the problem. They can't deal with the tracer fast enough. They're gonna. She's gonna blink. But meanwhile, while that happens oh, no. on the right side of the fight, the entire squad of Union County has already, you know, cleared out the first bunker. They move on to the second, and now they just get to cap the point. Yep. And I mean that's lickety split. They had a bastion going into a double bubble comp, and they still win it because we all know that Winston's bubble is flimsy as a as a as a, a soap bubble. So, you know, the fact that they were able to conserve not only Zarya's bubbles, but also Winston's shield bubble, that explains how much coordination this team has. And now they're going to go straight on the point and just start creating havoc. Parasol is the antagonist. Good Lord, this is scary work. Yeah, this is absolutely scary stuff. He's got a pulse bomb ready. He's got some ultra economy. Tarantino says, no, no, I am. We're done with that. Enough of that. Back off. But now it does mean that the rest of the squad is forced back. Alexandria so far so good. It's a good hold. They've got a high energy Zarya in the back line. Tarantino doing great work to build up that charge. And so far, all right, it is a small hold. Spawn advantage to the defense, of course, but look at those ults. Look at those ults, Billy. That's a lot of that's a lot of uh, charged check marks that we've got staring us in the face. 
I mean, if you launch the primal here and throw Ghost out of the positioning that he wants to have, you've got Tac Visor and Pulse Bomb to clean up this fight. Oh, yeah, see, look, they don't know. They don't know. Here we go. Monkey in the back line. The instant two ultimates get popped. The visor is there. They're going to find them all. They don't have a shield to work That's with. That's it. And the rest of the squad is gone. Yep. Map done. Clear. They've got both points. And they're going to have four minutes, four and a half minutes on the clock to work with. Yep. I mean, it's done. Four and a half minutes. So they gained 35 seconds. And they lost a fight, K-Tad. <laughs> That's how dominant that was. They just they had their win condition basically set in stone by the time they hit point B, and they just waited. They waited. They took their loss on their first fight. They knew they kind of overextended a little bit. So what do they do? They just go back, re-rally together, and then take it to Alexandria. Alexandria. Woo, boy. Now I am really worried because Chubbs and Tubes had a fantastic synergy with the double bubble composition. I called for the primal rage. I my primal rage. It took everybody out of position. You dropped the tac visor. The auto aim is perfect, of course. And now, you know, four minutes, 35 seconds. Alexandria have to at least meet that. They've got to capture both points with time. Uh, if with, they don't, uh... it's, it's going to be four minutes, 35 seconds to take one tech. Yeah, with a with a lot of time at that, they, they've got yeah they've got to clear it you know hopefully with with enough time that when we when we run this back right when we when we do the two CP shuffle and we run it run it all back again, uh they're gonna have to be yeah, have enough for it now, let's see the adaptations Billy let's see what they change up because uh so far it looks like the call is to match that hard dive I I'd be curious to see if this is what ends up being the comp they run out the door with, Winston Diva sure they can right. Dive buddies, hold your, you know, pick your partner, hold the hands, and, and let's go for the back line. But the rest of the squad, though, they've got they've got the junk route again. Nevix trying to force this, trying to make it work in an area where we'll have to see what happens. As there goes some bombs, he's gonna hop up to the top, get some damage across. But the rest of the squad, all right, they're giving him the space for now. But there's a Bastion just lying in wait. Look at this, like a shark looking for his prey. Well, I mean, getting rid of those slows right now uh, in the Symmetra turrets. Also, the thing to worry about from Union County is that they don't have to worry about keeping uh, cubes alive because you've got self-heal there, and uh, that's just one less target for these healers to have to worry about. Very true, but now in the front. Yep, there it is. Tubes gets that one. Speaking of, as the rest of the squad, you know, forced to push back, it's just a split fight constantly as it's just 1v1s, 2v2s, right? There is no center point, and it's allowing the Chaos Parasol just allowed to fight them in the back line, just tear through the undefended flanks. I mean, yes, he gets picked off there, but the work is done. He's already found his picks. The rest of the squad was distracted, killed back. They forced to concede the ground that they had managed to gain, and as it stands, Union County holding strong. Uh, self-destruct is going to be huge here. Oh, I thought they had the, I thought they had that hook on the uh, pilot diva, but they're going to go deal with that right now. And, and right now, this Winston is just under so much duress. Every time they go in, the Bastion is just taking care of them. They go, Parasol getting kills once again. <laughs> that is disgusting. And oh, never mind. They had a shield. They were ready. The healers, the healers are trying. There we go. Actually, the push Q strategy so far working. They found some kills. They need to close out on the rest, though, if they want to cap this point. Tank form being used out by Crispy, the last member of Union County out here. He needs to get this kill. He finds it somehow. Self-repair, trying to pull up, and instead does get support from his Mercy. The rest of the squad still trying to push them back. They're slowly capping as the rest of this fight happens. But is that a mistake? Is that the problem? Can Alexandria finish the cap before the rest of Union County gets back to point? Coalescence gets burned now, but there isn't much of a team left to chase. The Glock comes out, but it's not enough. The rest of the squad still trying to hold steady, hold firm. They managed to get two ticks out of it. But considering that they need to full cap, that is not good enough right now for Alexandria. Nope, and they have time to get back as well. So, uh, I mean, Rally is going to be great for them. Oh, God, that's a late stagger from Tubes onto Nevex. That is not what you want to see. Shatter, Whole Hog, and Window available into this next fight. Technowitz is going to have to hold their Rally for the last second oh. so that they can get everybody Rally armor. 
But there it is, Rally gets burned, just like you say, Parasol meanwhile in the back line looking for these kills, but it's Crispy on the side, just gunning him down, Self-Destruct's gonna go out, can Crispy get away? No, he does get manage to get past, but it is the Mercy going down, instead Tubes gets traded out, they're gonna just have to retreat to the side, but instead the Shatter also goes wide, hits a shield, Tank form gets pushed back into the it's a push. Techno Wiz manages to get that one, and all right. Three minutes back on the clock, a slight reprieve for Alexandria. Well, the, yeah, here comes the swaps right now. Crispy going over to the edge lord. So now you're looking for bursting down both Ghost and Tarantino. You've got Chubbs here now on this Orisa, so you've got a more firm shield going in uh, and a little bit more CC ability with the halt, so Lots of work going to be done here. You see it getting done. These are the cleanups that you need to see. Oh, no, Techno. It's not like this. Oh, okay. He does get killed at the end there. I thought he actually just went into ult for a second, but no, he does get traded back. Nevix gets that, and the rest of the squad will push back for now. Those staggers like you're talking about, yeah, it does buy them the time, but Alexandria regrouped, ready to go. Three ults on the board. Both DPS ults ready. If they can get a monkey, the primal in the back line to disrupt the the aura, that might be what they're looking for, but no! <laughs> the Dead Eye does get one before he gets dropped, so there is a trade. Meanwhile, the tire doesn't get value on the right side. Nevix trying to do his best here to get some kills cleaned up, but he will get picked off. The res also comes through. The Diva, the last one on, and forced to pull back. The rest of the squad. Alexandria burns some ults, but does not get value, and oh, the stagger now. Tubes. Not like this. The flank. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Lily, uh, close my eyes. Close, don't look, don't look, Lily. Oh, oh no. Oh, okay, there we go. Is it over? I think it's, I think it's over. The nightmare's over. It's over. For now. <laughs> For now, because now Death Blossom is ready to go. The res is expended from Miss Pacas. Or Pachas. I'm not sure which one it is, but still. Uh, window available. Nevix did reflect a lot of that whole hog back onto Tube, so you know, fair play to them. But we're at a minute night or 98 seconds left. Ultimate's coming up online for Uni County. Nothing in the bank right now for Alexandria. Nothing available for them to work with. And now, with these tanks getting dropped out the gate as well, it's not looking great. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, take a take a little nap. You, you, he's earned it, right? He's 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 he's, he's earned some some R and R, right? Parasol? Oh yeah, Parasol's been the hard carry all day long. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the work's being done. Uh, as, as one of my friends says, he's doing the work <laughs> and uh, getting it done. There goes Nevix down in a clump. A uh, tough one, tough one for Alexandria. Now they've got some time. Yes, one minute left on the clock. They could try to build ults up if if that's the play here, but. Not able to find anything through the door. This would have to be a huge self-destruct if they want to get any traction there. Ramen getting dropped on the side means they don't have... Wait. Did Ghost just charge off the map? I think uh, so. Maybe think maybe so. forced? Oh, may maybe, maybe. But all right. We've got something to play with here. Self-destruct goes up. It's going to force them off of the point. Positioning! And Essie... Not where you want to be, right next to the Diva Remek does get picked off, but the rest of the squad, it's again, Parasol. It always has been the Death Blossom on the side as well, from the side of Crispy. He's gonna just serve it up on a plate. Just instead, the Reinhardt is not able to get back either. They're all going in, the ants go marching one by one, but the ants all fall at the end of the day. Whole Hog pushes them back, and that is it. Well done, Union County, the clean 3-0. I mean, GG's uh, fair play to Union County. Alexandria did not have an answer. And I mean, the, the DPS swaps that we saw, so good from them. Parasol definitely gets my gold star of the day for the MVP. Technowitz getting work done as the Brigitte, but still just the work that was done. Just so much done. And yeah, this is great work out of them. So, you know, uh, Alexandria County, looking at what they've done, uh, so far in this season, three or uh, four and zero, oh, they take their L. They take it in a sweep as well. Yikes! That's all I gotta say. Yikes! You better be uh, think about who can step up for your team going into playoff season because uh, if you face Uni County again, uh, GGS. That's all I gotta say. GGS.
Yeah, I mean, honestly, and that's a tough one for me because now, you know, going into this, Billy, right, when, when I scheduled these matches for stream, I was like, okay, you, uh, Alexandria 4 0, right, Union County fighting to hold on to their spot in playoffs. This throws a wrench into what I what I understood about this group. <laughs> I no longer understand. I no longer can predict who's making it out anymore. You know, I, I I just don't anymore because between Union County, Brian and Stratton, I'm sure Alexandria looks good on, on a different day. If we picked a different match, maybe they they you know they they had showings like this as well. It's 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 a it's a wild west here at the NJCAAE Overwatch Division. I really don't know. I can't tell you, Billy. I, I have no I have I have no information for you. I don't now, know. did you tell me that Brian and Shredden was uh, playing on the other stream right now? They they were in fact on other stream. I'm being told though. Uh, let me let me just check. I believe that match is already done, Billy. That match finished. Um, did, did they did they win? It was a three zero. Yes. Woo that definitely throws it. So now that all those tiebreaker scenarios that you were trying to explain to me before we came on <laughs> camera. Well, have fun with that. I'm going to go away because I've got a podcast to do in just a little bit. But uh, I, I'm going to be keeping my eye on this because, holy crap, the insane action that I saw today, definitely worthy of the NJC AAE. Man, fantastic work. Thanks for having me again, my friend. Yeah, no, thanks for joining me, Billy. Thanks for being on the desk. But you know what? Actually... Uh, we might be able to hear from one of the players. We might have, uh, from what I'm understanding, Tubes might be able to join us in a little bit. So Ooh. I know you might. I don't know. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I mean, I know you're curious to hear. Maybe. Maybe you might I get am. some words I am. from the man himself. But with that said, guys, yeah, don't go anywhere. I'm being told Tubes will be joining us. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Chubbs. Yeah, Chubbs lays it down right on the side, and now it's fighting in the point. They're trying to push in. Union County is there, but there it is. Meteor Strike also pushes them out, and it's looking like it's going to be a wipe so far. But remember, the Zarya was pushing out. Nevik still here. They've got a Junkrat and a Zarya. What more can they get? Lucio around the side. They're still trying, and actually, he's creating a menace, but no. Gets taken down by Parasol and the Doomfist in the end. It should be a flip to Union County, and they will finally get everybody out. But that is a nice trade and actually a good fight between both sides. Economy right on the blue side. Alexandria, they're almost rocking all six. There it goes. Grav is there. There it goes. The beat. But whoa, can whoa, they whoa. sustain everything? The answer is no. It's a, just an absolute chaos. The wipe in the front. They're going to try to get some damage in the backside. But now it's finished. Just the Reinhardt. But this should be point one going over the Union County. It should be, but I mean, they're still holding the point. They take down the para <laughs> as well. What the heck? Am I seeing right now? Okay. Whoa, okay. Alex Sardia. Tight quarters. Force to fight around. There's the stick. There's the damage. The only immortal field goes down, but a barrage right there in the face. Can he use it? No, he chooses to hold on to it for now. He doesn't even need it. They've got the rest of the damage, and Alexandria forced back. Immediately hops back to spawn. The rest of the team, meanwhile, going forward, pushing through. Wall goes out, but does not cordon off Chubbs like you're talking about. However, they might freeze him out. He doesn't have a retreat, and actually, he gets traded out. But meanwhile, Union County on the flank. They've got the Cassidy just gunning away, firing from the side. And it, it was a good play. It does have a tire ready, oh, and it looks no. like this is going to be the play. Here we go. Follow it over to the left side, looking for the victim. They know it's there, but can anybody get out? <laughs> no, it's a double. <laughs> Zarya and Anna say good night, goodbye. He's done his job and more. Sokev with a huge one. He's got a lot of members back. There's the window, but there's a huge shatter coming out from the side of Chubbs. It's just a complete wipe. The kill feed blue. They're all gone. Alexandria, they've got 30 seconds, but I don't even know if they can get back to the point. And that to get rid of the tire doesn't clear him either. And now with backup, reinforcements arrive. It looks like, yes, Alexandria finishes point two. And they've moved it on. They've only got a minute 30 left, but what an improvement. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what SoCap can get done here with some damage boost at their back. A uh, definite breaking shield opportunity. Aerosol looking for this angle. Nice Ooh. angle once again. Oh. That's two. That's it. You're done. Goodbye. Hold on. Oh my God, this is going to be disgusting. Yeah, here we go. Dragons come out as well. There's another fight in the backside. Chubbs is there in the front. But also, we've got the Harzel in the back line. Parasol just knocks them all Parasol! down. What was that? They all fall down. The tracer fast enough. They're gonna. She's gonna blink. But meanwhile, while that happens oh, no. on the right side of the fight, the entire squad of Union County has already.
you know, cleared out the first bunker, they move on to the second, and now they just get to cap the point. Oh, yeah, see, look, they don't know. They don't know. Here we go. Monkey in the back line. The instant two ultimates get popped. The visor is there. They're going to find them all. They don't have a shield to work That's with. It. And the rest of the squad is gone. Yep. Map done. Clear. They've got both points. And they're going to have four minutes, four and a half minutes on the clock to work with. Yep. I mean, it gets burned now. But there isn't much of a team left to chase. The Glock comes out. But it's not enough. The rest of the squad still trying to hold steady, hold firm. They managed to get two ticks out of it. But considering that they need to full cap, that is not good enough. Diva, the last one on, and forced to pull back. The rest of the squad, Alexandria burns some ults, but does not get value. And oh, the stagger now. Two, not like this, to flank. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh oh Billy, it did. So close my, close. <laughs> close, close. All right, hello everyone and welcome back here to the Esports U Network with coverage of the NJCAAE Overwatch Group 3 action. If you have been watching the stream, you just watched as Union County uh, wiped the floor with Alexandria in a quick 3-0. Once again, KTAD here, Chef Billy over there. And we're joined by Tubes here. So Tubes, I'm going to bring you in right now. Tubes, how do you feel after a win like that? What's the, what's the immediate uh, emotional response from you and the team? Absolutely. Uh, so we lost last week on stream, and that was pretty. I, I, I half like half wanted it, so because we were undefeated at the time, I wanted us to um, basically get our bucks butts kicked. Um, but now we're looking for a redemption on stream, and this is a very important moment for us, especially since uh, we haven't been on stream. This is the first season really we've been on stream for, so. Um, I'm looking. I'm. I'm really happy with the win, and looking forward to have more wins in the future. All right. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, Ilios was close on Lighthouse. A uh, couple of swaps from you guys to secure the map. Your wrecking ball. Uh, you should probably focus on that a little bit more because it was pretty darn good. And, uh, you know, you were getting a couple of environmentals. Your positioning was good. Your patience was good. Um, is that typical for you guys to try and rally to a point using the wrecking ball just in that situation? It's very situational. Um, I'm mainly on the Zarya, the Hog. Uh, I rarely have a chance to bring up my wrecking ball. I haven't used my wrecking ball in a long time. So um, I've been kind of skittish around it. But definitely, I, th I felt like I needed the wrecking ball there. I, I really did. All right, so D.Va did not make a, an appearance on your side. Is there is there an aversion uh, to the Korean Mecca player? Um, it's how I'm feeling the day, you know? It, it's, Zarya just feels so good. I don't know, I'm, I'm a long time Zarya fan. And... <laughs> okay, all right, so are you, are you are you getting ready for Overwatch 2? I guess that, that's the second, that's the lead up to that. Are you getting ready for Overwatch 2? Because, uh, you know, we had a chance to take a look at some of the San Francisco Shock versus O2 
uh, and Zarya played a very big part in that. So you might be. Are are, are you getting ready for? Is that is that what we're I doing was, here? I was I. I was a little scared about the Zarya in Overwatch 2 because I'm like, how can Zarya function as a single solo tank? But hey, I haven't watched the match yet about the Shock and O2 Blast, but I need to because I need to see how strong she is. Uh, um, Tracer Tracer plays very well with Zarya, especially with the uh, chance to be able to throw two bubbles out or bubble yourself twice. Ooh. That's uh, that's one of the big mechanics that we're seeing right now. Um, I, I want to head to King's Row. Uh, because I, 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 I took a peek, I peeked at chat and, uh, we saw the chat come up on in our screen and I didn't teabag. Yes, you did. You <laughs> did teabag. I'm calling you out right now. Uh, your, your, your tracer player. That was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah, uh, I need definitely got, yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we saw it happen. So, and we saw the kind of back and forth of that, but, a uh, very comprehensive. Uh, going through that, um, you guys swapped out Crispy and, and brought in uh, Sovek, uh, and then you saw some role swaps there. You were on the Han, or your, your, our T back player was on the Hanzo. Um, really, they didn't slow. You didn't slow down. So, was that a uh, a, a thought going in? Uh, is that you were going to play the Junkrat Hanzo and just absolutely decimate the front line? Um. Honestly, we're looking for ways to make their experience as hard as possible. And Junkrat <laughs> is definitely one of those things. As a tank player, I understand that very well. So we were trying, especially since we requested the King's Road defense, we were trying to scope out how much we can decimate. And that's what we did. All right. Well, I want to ask you yep. this then, Tubes. Uh, with that in mind, uh, talk to me then. What happened in Streets Phase with uh, you yes. and your other tank deciding, you know what, uh, let's go to their spawn. And, and, and you know, is, was that part of making the experience difficult for them? Was that, was that the goal? Well, it was a little of... So I was thinking about our experience, how we can make our experience harder too. <laughs> uh -huh. But uh, they definitely saw us. Uh, I was hoping they wouldn't see us. I was hoping they were clicking straight ahead, but they weren't. And we thought we had the whole team there. We were limit testing. That didn't come to be. We kind of called for that play five seconds before we did it. And we just kept rolling with it. It showed. <laughs> yes. It showed so very clearly. <laughs> Parasol, uh, you know, really took over on Volskaya tubes. And uh, the, the Tracer start out was fantastic you guys shut down um a bastion double bunker defense using double bubble okay parasol yeah. got my got my gold star for the day uh not only because he's toxic like i am in my rank games but um also you know just putting on a show so you brought the roadhog out you comboed a lot with said uh with said parasol so you guys feel comfortable no matter what composition you guys are running um, do you think that Alexandria was worthy of a 4-0 uh, team? Or uh, maybe their strength of schedule wasn't as good? No, I think they're worthy of the 4-0. Um, it just opens up more opportunities to have more losses with them. I, I think we also were undefeated as well uh, up until last week. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's pretty much just because of uh, there's a whole bunch of skill in some teams and not in others. It's very, the disparity is it's huge. So um, I think they deserve the 4-0. I think those wins are absolutely for them. Mm -hmm. But now they deserve the 4-1. <laughs> uh -huh. My last one that I got for you, who are you looking forward to playing in the playoffs? Uh, definitely our first preseason match, we had, we're missing one player. And so we got 3-0. We got, uh, I want to have another roundabout with Crowder College. Crowder College, I feel like we absolutely could have won that game. But uh, now that we have our roster situation handled, I think we can absolutely 3-0 them. So I want to rematch with Crowder College. Interesting. Oh. Well, yeah, I mean, hopefully you get that chance. I mean, looking at it here, looking at the schedule, uh, I, just for your update, actually, um, Crowder College, I think, lost earlier tonight on our second stream. Yeah, they got they got taken down, and you might not even see them in playoffs. So, 
Just giving you that information, okay. Tubes. Take it for what you will. But all right, with that said, you know, last minutes here, last few bits here on the interview. No. Any shout outs? Anybody you want to say thank you to? Anybody, you know, here's the time. Plug, you know, give, give thanks to your mom. Give thanks to your dog. Give thanks to <laughs> anybody you want to. Uh, it's your, it's your, it's your time here, Tubes. Anybody you want to, you know? Absolutely. I, I would like to give thanks to my moms, uh, as well as my brother, my dog, Teddy, as well as Coach Reed. Hey, well, there you go. Yeah, thanks. Shout out to Coach Reed. He's uh, he's always been helpful with me when I'm trying to schedule these things. So yeah, definitely shout out to him. But all right, thank you very much for joining us on the desk today, Tubes. Appreciate it. Well done in the win, and I'm sure we'll see more of you guys as the season goes on. Have a good night, my friend. Thank you for having me. All right. And with that, that does close us out for the uh, the cast between me and you, Billy. Um, I got to get back to producing this dang thing. And uh, I know you said you got a podcast to go to. So we'll close it out. We'll, we'll move on. I think we've got another uh, match of Overwatch that we're going to air from the student side, as well as League of Legends from the ECC coming up after that. But before I let you go, I mean, I know this was the first time we had you on the network. Billy, any last words you want to say before before we're out? Impressed with the impressed with the caliber of competition. Impressed with the production as well. So thank you for having me once again. And uh, yeah, I will be keeping a very keen eye on this. And if I, if my schedule allows me, I, I definitely want to come back and uh, see how this whole season plays out. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, it was fun having you, my friend. It was fun being able to cast with you. you know, we don't get to do that. I don't get to do that very often these days. But it was a lot of fun. Had a lot. Had a great time. Thank you for joining me. But yeah, thank you all for watching. If you're in the audience, don't go anywhere. When we come back, we will have the student casted match from said match of the Crowder versus Bryant and Stratton match. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is the Esports U Network.
Let's see if that might change tonight. Uh, just as a notice, the Rough Riders will be down one player. They are waiting on one. We'll go right into the maps here to show you what we'll be working with tonight. Since it is during the four to six week period, we're going to start on Ilios by default. Now this map is great for both a mixture of dive, double shield, and rush. Uh, depending on which part of the map it is, will be very dependent on what we'll see tonight. We also will find after that hybrid, followed by assault, escort, and last but not least control, if it comes to it. This is a best of five series, so first of three wins. Starting out here, we do see that uh, going into the map here, we're looking to find out what these teams will be running. We're here on the Ilios Lighthouse, and uh, as we wait for the match to start here, we see both sides picking out a mixture of players, just having it out, having some fun. As mentioned, we are down the one player on the side of Crowder, who will be on the red team to start. difficulty to get this map underway shouldn't take too long uh look since we are starting at lighthouse the best thing i think we might be seeing here is brawl based on what uh, uh the bobcats were showing us earlier even if it was just a quick pick because they were waiting around in skirmish sometimes that does define what you see played here and brawl can be very strong on this map Best thing about Brawl is sitting around the inside of the point. It seems they're doing just that. The Rough Riders is going to try to opt for Brawl with one DPS being their soldier. Versus what appears to be a mix of Dive and Bunker here on the side of the Bobcats. Quite unusual comp I must say. You see their healers as Lucio Moira, which look to be a bit brawly. While Tor and Widow, a, slight a quick swap to Widow just as we go out of the gates here. You see that uh, the Rough Riders try to take the high ground first, but are met with Winston on the side of the Bobcats. First one to go down is Blank, unfortunately, as OBL takes him out with a nice clean hook. Currently a brawl fest here, but Slayer getting two, three picks! Two of which were thanks to the turret! And Ryan is just left to die. Poor Ryan. It's truly unfortunate uh, what happened there. It seems that after the soldier fell, they all tried to collapse down on top of the hog, but were met with adversity right away, coming from all sides. And without the Ryan to shield his team, they were not able to do much of anything. OBO gets a quick hook kill off of the Moira on the side of from the Rough Riders, but gets traded back with Soldier taking out Seth, the Lucio, on the side of the Bobcats. But uh, with the way the fight is going, it is going to be in favor of the Bobcats here. You are not only just having capped point, they are fighting in the Rough Riders spawn right now. Quite unusual to see, but uh, to be expected, if I'm honest, this 5v6, it's really tough to play with, and I'm not sure Soldier is the way to go here. Honestly, I think it would be better best used to have a McCree, or I should say Cassidy, due to the name change. See Miro going over the top, getting some nice picks in the back line, taking out both the Mora and the Soldier. Bomb comes in on the side of Crowder, but doesn't find any value. Said it's a team kill, and the Rough Riders are forced to sit back up and spawn again. You don't usually see this kind of gameplay where uh, it's all spawn holding, but uh, see it here, folks. Soldier gets the quick pick on Injustice. They're trying to get the Lucio, who's uh, surfing outside the map there. Not getting much value. Lucio's going after the Mercy. Will he find the kill? 
Not quite himself, but Slater he gets the kill. He even gets a hammer kill! That's Torb! I love to see it. Shut down with the visor thanks to Narwhal. And with that, that's first point of the map in favor of the Bobcats. So going into the next part of this map here. If you are the Rough Riders, you have a lot on you right now. Especially on Well here. Uh, currently looking at your comp, you're not based for moving fast, which is a real uh, crutch you have to deal with. But that might change seeing that we have a Winston now instead of the Diva. In fact, it looks like they may be trying to mirror what the Bobcats had thrown at them. A little unusual, we do see the Junkrat pick, and Bap Moira against pretty much no change on the side of the Bobcats, except the Widow has now gone Genji, that is Miro. So if you're the Rough Riders here, your best bet here is not to be playing rough and out in the open, not to just go charging in like Rough Riders do. You want to play it a little bit careful, you want to try to take your fights, play your corners, it is even right now, well I should say, it's actually, uh, Rough Riders are down by one, where, it seems that we're, Omni Slash and Blank are getting quite a good amount of kills here, although Blank does fall to the turret and the Bobcats have capped the point. Uh, we do see the Echo Swap on Miro and OBL has gone off Hog onto Reinhardt. A little unusual seeing this double main tank, but honestly, I encourage it. As main tanking play myself, we see Slater, Narwhal, and Justice. All of them getting the picks right now. All that's left there is poor old Hog on the slash. Not living long. All into Narwhal. Oh no, this cheeky Lucio, the Bobcats, trying to see who they can find to poop out of spawn into the abyss that is just beneath you. And Ryan, going for a courageous charge there, doesn't really find anyone and instead gets killed himself. Link, getting the kill on Nero. And Lucio, I don't know what happened, but he died to a charge. Some way, somehow. In fact, OBL does as well. The pressure is still on as the Bobcats are just holding the Rough Riders in spawn. Narwhal has to pop his ult in order to stay alive. Not a whole lot they can do here. In fact, the Shatter does not come through as they're trying to stop him from getting pushed off the edge. He dies to the Echo Laser Beam. This is, uh... It's a rough one. Um, not sure what happened to the Lucio quite there, but it seems he lost his footing as he was trying to make his way down. Uh, OBL tries to go for a cheeky charge, just runs into the light pole, doesn't find much of anything. Same thing on the side of the Rough Riders. You see Tyre coming in, let's see if we can find any value here. Oh, finds off the map, and Tyre finds Slater, so that is one tour you don't have to worry about. Now that it's a 4v4 situation with Zoe just having respawned, you see the whole hog come out trying to get some value but gets eliminated right away. And with that, it is the end of the first map in favor of the Bobcats, getting a 2-0 here. I do have to say it is unfortunate to see the Rough Riders having such a hard time just staying alive, getting out of spawn. But sometimes them's the breaks. It's not uh, what you really want to see. It's not really what you came for. But uh, you gotta you gotta work through it at the end of the day and try to adapt to what's going on. So looking at all this here, it's 1-0 on the side of the Bobcats against the Rough Riders. You're not doing too well. You're down a man. That's all understandable. We do have the hybrid coming up here. So depending on how you pick this, you might get away with trying to run, say, a pirate ship. Pirate ships are typically, they're very notorious. There's no sugarcoating it. But it can get a job done when you're down in a 5v6 situation. It's hard to pull off, but it's very doable with coordination. If you're the uh, Bobcats, 
you kind of do the same thing. Their strategy seems to be not to just go full comp at them. It seems each individual is doing their own little thing in order to the, draw the attention away from the Rough Riders and try to make them lose focus so that they can't work together to bet to utilize the comps they run. So looking at what possible maps we could go here, we could have a King's Row. We could have a Hollywood. We could have a Blizzard World, even. All these are great maps to be picking on, not to mention Eichenwald as well. If you do want to run this Bastion comp here, which I am suggesting, you may want to try to get it on, say, Eichenwald or even on the Hollywood. Honestly, because King's Row, Nambani, I got to mention that earlier, and Blizzard World, those are not the kindest to a 5v6 situation. Those are typically the hardest to hold in them. For now, we will be going off to a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll tell you what map we get when we come back. I think it would be better best used to have a McCree, or I should say Cassidy, due to the name change. See Miro going over the top, getting some nice picks in the back line, taking out who gets the kill. He gets a hammer kill! It's torn! I love to see it shut down with the visor thanks to Marvel. And with that, that's the first point of the map in favor of the Bobcat. So that is one tour you don't have to worry about. Now that it's a 4v4 situation with Zoe just having respawned, you see the whole hog come out, trying to get some value, but gets eliminated right away. And with that, it is the end of the first map in favor of uh, Hello there all, welcome back. It seems that we are actually going right in the game uh, as I was going out for break. Which gave me quite a, a nice little breather. I'm going to be honest, it's a little tough solo casting. So looking at the map here, we do have King's Row. Everybody loves King's Row. It's a classic to have. But this is also a map where you will probably see a lot of spawn holding. Just as a fair warning, a lot of teams that do spawn hold and dominate on this map will be holding around the bus and the choke point where the brick walls are. As for the 5v6ers, your job here is to try to make sure you can contest you try to either get rid of a dps you try to get rid of the healers tanks are usually the last on the list because they're way too healthy to eliminate honestly i'm not sure how rough riders are going to be able to pull this off but if they can it's going to be quite a thing to see here as we go into the british or the european i should say map here Taking place in the good old UK. Nice little alleyway street view as we make our way towards Ready the map here. Battle. Now we do see on the side of the Bobcats, they are immediately running with Bunker, Farah, in Double Shield. Specific Bunker of Double Shield. I think this is overkill. I do respect the play of holding point here. But I'm not sure how this is going to go down entirely. Uh, we do see that the Rough Riders have opted in their Overwatch 2 gameplay to take one tank, two DPS, and two healers. Which might actually be the better thing to do. Five, four, As we see the Bobcats here three, sitting up on top of the theater one. and or bus. Attackers They're taking off angles again. The Sigma Defend alone on the left side. Trying to get some poke. While the Pharah is right up in the spawn door, spamming it with rockets. Well, see, this Pharah should be punished, but gets away with it as they just hold right up in front. If you're a Crowder here, if you're the Rough Riders, you cannot be going out this main door. What you gotta do right now is you have to hit your side doors, your left door or your right door. That's gonna be your best friend. It would be a lot better going out that uh, left door in order to try to take out the Sig, who's completely isolated at the moment, and from there, focus the attention towards the Pharah while undercover. Currently, Crowder's not making many moves. They're uh, trying to figure out what to do. They're trying to spam through the main choke. 
you do see a little bit of the idea of moving out the doors, but it's instantly is shut down. The immortality and the window come out on the side of the oh, Bobcats, but it's taken out by the Anna. In fact, Miro, the Bastion, goes down. A little unusual seeing the all from spawn there. Not sure what that's about. But uh, the Bastion does come back into a res. Fog trying for the hook kill, but cannot get away with it. In fact, Mercy gets out unscathed. Well, mostly. Hero coming down, ripping the shreds into the hog. Does not get out alive. Mortality gets used once more, but goes away to the Ana. The Ana here is quite the sharpshooter, I must admit. However, it seems that base needs to do a little bit more uh, bird watching. So this is the hog. Both being eliminated from the air. Max Leader is on a roll right now. We do see the Bastion gets left once again. They're trying desperately to protect him, but the shield on the Sigma goes down. As the way this stands, I would not want to use this Nano here if I'm the Ana. Try to get something going here. Right now you're holding it, and now we'll use it. You can do a lot more value out in the open rather than just sitting there. Horror Cassidy tries his best to get this Pharaoh, trying to take the off angle, but gets eliminated by Miro. In fact, the Ana Panda also getting eliminated. And once again, Cassidy tries for that right side door, but history is just repeating itself at the moment. They need to take different angles here and try to properly off angle. Otherwise, they will get spammed out and eliminated, like so. We see Slater take out Panda. Link's trying to see if it's safe enough to go out, but <laughs> Slater knows people are there. He's constantly checking, going back and forth. We do see the flux come out from Narwhal, immediately eliminates Cassidy, who is not able to live through just the initial flux. Window is also popped in order to provide the extra amplified damage. And as it stands, we do have another. A uh, person down on the side of Crowder, being Zoe, won the DPS. So now we are looking at a 4v6 situation. Fortunately, seems they're not able to come back at the very moment, so we do see Slater take out Blank once more. And Crowder is unable to do anything. Do you have a pause come in here on the disconnect, which finally came around? But there's not much the pause can do here at the moment. Sorry for the pause, everyone. There's a bit minor technical difficulties on the side of Crowder College. Hopefully, the player can come back. Right now, this game is looking quite grim. It seems that they are just running their heads against the wall right now, trying to break whatever is going on. And nothing's happening too well enough. However, there still can be hope. It's just looking very dim. As it stands, the Bobcats are just utterly dominating uh, this series right now with their spawn holding. And honestly, it's, it's kind of cheeky to see the spawn hold here. Sometimes it's uh, it would be nice to see uh, Crowder just make it out of spawn, but we're not likely to see that. We do have uh, Zoe come back, and Slater immediately is able to take out Omni Slash. In fact, Panda is also eliminated along with Face. The Blink trying to go for the last minute touch as Sombra cannot make it. Time had clocked down, and they were nowhere near close to touching, unfortunately. As it stands here, if you're Bobcats, you just need one tick. There's not much you need to do here. Crowder, you gotta hold this point like it is your lifeline. This is all you've got. It's gonna be a rough one, to say the least. There's no understating that whatsoever. If this was a regular game, you would more than likely see a lot of brawl coming in here on both sides. But I doubt we're going to see that here. We might see a ball to disrupt the play because they like to disrupt Ready the play. You see a Doom Fist here. Not the most unusual. 
On the side of Crowder, we have the Orisa, Farah, Bastion, and a Moira Mercy. Ugh, I'm not, I'm not, really not sure about this. Don't get me wrong, Moira can output a lot of healing, but if you're trying to keep this Bastion alive for the long term game, much less your Orisa, you definitely want to have a Bap. A Bap has his immortality as well as just his basic healing and the amplified damage he can provide from the window or just his primary fire, which works as a hit scan. Not, no other healer has that ability. All other healers are mostly projectiles, unless your Ana scopes down sight. As we see here, we have the ball, Winston, and actually Winston goes down first to the Bastion, but Bastion's immediately eliminated by Reaper. All's rolling around just trying to get some slams, and it's finding value. Doomfist killing with the uppercut. Trying to find the Mercy, but gets him at the very end. Well, it took a while to do it. Admit that. And with that, we do see the Bobcats take King's Row. Oh, hello. <laughs> Did you see a uh, wild little box come on through to shine in the play of the game here? Granted by Slater on the Doomfist. Not quite sure that uh, this would be the play of the game that we'd see, but... Also, yeah, I approve of it. A lot more action than what we would have seen if it was a spawn held. Now, it is a 2-0 in the series right now in favor of the Bobcats. Rough Riders are down bad, and they are gonna be going to 2CP next. This is gonna be, it's gonna be like what we saw here on King's Row. There's no sugarcoating this, because if you're still fighting a 5v6 situation, you're gonna have a rough time doing anything. And if you're gonna get spawn held like this, you need to have more ways to get out of spawn rather than the first ones you see. With that in mind, while Skya might not be the worst, actually, I take that back, it most likely will be. While Skya is not what you want to go for here if you're getting spawn held, because it's real easy for teams to sit around inside the room with the Mega in order to spawn hold you. Anubis, on the other hand, is not the same case. There's a lot more open space that is provided to the defensive team. So as, I'm sorry, to the attacking team. So as attackers, you have a lot to work with if people are pushed up against you and you have three places to exit from, main, left door, and right door. And it provides you an ample amount of cover as well. No one can cover all three angles at once if you were to split your forces in order to focus down targets. As for the final 2CP map here, Anamora is what I had not even said yet. This one is a mix of the two. As the ability for the defenders in order to hold high ground and give you just that ample ability to go at it. However, as the attackers, it gives you a lot more cover out of all the maps in comparison. And this is the map where a lot of tricky stuff can go on. We We'll more than likely see the uh, TP on the, from the sim here going the point, trying to get as much value as possible, whether it be just a tick at a time or the whole point at once. And as we come here, looking through the archway of the Yamato clan, quite nice, serene, and peaceful as the cherry blossoms fall, petals and all. You know, I never did point this out, but it does it is quite interesting to see how you have levitating lamps. So if you have to figure that out in current technology, isn't that something? You see the dive composition on the side of Bob of uh, the Bobcats, which I'm personally surprised about. As for the Rough Riders, I was expecting as much. However, again with the Moira Mercy. Uh, I'm not too sure about that one. I'm going to be honest. I would have rather seen a Lucio over an Echo. And by what I mean by that is that you get rid of the Mercy, you get rid of the Echo, or the Lucio in order to move fast for the TP. But, since we have Soldier here, it's better that you have the Mercy. 
Uh, especially against this comp, which has Echo and Junkrat. So your Soldier and Echo will be able to provide a lot more different angles of damage than prior. And that's what we see here. Winston just jumps out right away. Miro getting both kills with mines. Oh, by Slider getting hit. Ooh. Headshotting the Reinhardt. You do see that Soldier comes back with the revive, but it's another clean swipe. There's uh, not much you can do here. You got three and a half minutes of work with, but if you are Crowder here, you now have a Lucio. You're now working with Roadhog. You're trying to go for picks. You're trying to stick together and isolate people. Or find those that have isolated themselves. And right now, you actually now have space. You're not getting killed, you're getting the kill. Slater is down. Although traded by Miro, you do see that the hog is trying to get some value here. Narwhal, very scared, runs away towards the point. And uh, a nice little hello to Lucio. Not too much is happening here. Panda trying to get some value. They're frantically hopping around on the point, trying to do some damage. Not healing themselves up. They find more value moving fast, and they'll do much of anything. You see the Sombra come out on the side of the Bobcats, hacking Omni Slash. Omni Slash, not able to live or heal himself, dies. To Miro, who also gets a mine and a tire coming right on in. As Seth takes out the last Lucio that was standing on point. Do you have ultimates coming up on the side of Bobcat as well as the Rough Riders? Now, if you're the Rough Riders here, this visor is going to be very useful. You may want to try to utilize this high ground here because this team li likes to push up and see how they fare. But Slater taking out the soldier on the side of the Rough Riders just as they were getting the visor. Not able to find any value. In fact, they also take out Panda. Mercy coming in to take out the Echo while Winston takes down Moira and Slater, cleaning it up with elimination on the Hog. It, it's a round repeat cycle here. There's uh again, it's a rough one. Pfizer is up and ready, and on the side of the Bobcats, Miro is actually doing taking a lot of damage. I'm not sure they're going to be living through this, but they live long enough. That's uh. I take that back! They're down! But they're gonna be coming right back thanks to that res. So, being wiped the board. You see Junkrat copy come out on side of blank. Gets hacked, gets discorded, gets annihilated. All the same. They try to pop coalescence here, seeing what damage they can do, but the EMP comes out canceling it. And the hog must run away hacked. Oh, she gets out alive, thankfully, to his heels, but he's struggling. The entire team on the side of Crowder is struggling. Ohawk is ready. In fact, they opt to go for a TP. Lucio, again, trying to distract with the point touch. It does send everyone go running back to the point. It gets their attention. And they do make an attempt to TP in. In fact, the Junkrat falls to the sentry mines, or the sentries I should say, in the chokeway. Those get quickly eliminated thanks to the pile drive, and we do see Junkrat come back. Fire comes in, finds only one kill on the Moira, not much else, and all alts are popped, let's press Q, it's time for the Q fest. Oh goodness. You have no percentage. You have no points. Crowder, in order for you to stay alive here, you need to defend. And as we've seen before, this is going to be very hard for you. More than likely, they're going to run the dive again. They're going to run people that will cancel your abilities. The best thing you can do here is probably try to work the spam. Instead of running the Bastion, try to get a Torbjorn. Torbjorn is great man thanks to his turret, as well as just in general. He has a, a great ability for survivability. Uh, and also, drop the mortar and pick up the bat. That, I think you should really do if you're on the side of the Rough Riders. But, it is what it is. On the side of the Bobcats, we're going with a traditional brawl. 
with Evo, Reinhardt, Lucille, Moira, Hanzo, and Reaper. In fact, this is one of those classic death balls. I'm a bit surprised to see it come out of the side of the Bobcats, but I get the feeling they're here just ready to shut it down. Instead, we lose the Reaper to the other Shimada. We have the Shimada Bros coming on out Five, to play. Four, and on their map, three, no less. Two, one. Attackers now they have, them. on the side of the Rough Arms, they have opted to hold on point, this. which is not a bad thing to do. It provides you a lot of cover. However, you also are providing all this free space to the Bobcat. You are going to second point. I'm going to be honest, in all my uh, Overwatch career, I have never seen this. This is quite odd. If I'm... Gonna be honest, I was expecting a quick game, but they seem to be lined up in the defender's spawn. Lucio seems to have... Now they've all decided to go! I'm not sure what was the decision making there. That's, uh, that's an odd one. You see Bastion first to fall thanks to the charge of the Reinhardt, followed by Mercy and Moira. Both heroes have been down, and you don't have a lot you can do here. Thanks, and the soldier will also go. It is a team kill, and that is the game. Bobcats come out victorious in the series. 3 to 0. Play of the I'm going to be honest here. This Junkrat kill was a great tire. By all means, it was a great time. In fact, I'm curious if he just walked out on mid, or he made the jump. It seems it's just that. Luckily, able to find all those kills just grouped up there, nice and clumped. Just what you need. Now, as it stands, we will be trying to see if we can find an interview. We'll be looking into that. Don't go anywhere. I think it would be better best to use to have a McCree, or I should say Cassidy, if you can name change. See Miro going over the top, getting some nice hits in the back line, taking out and gets the kill. Even gets a hammer kill! That's torn! I love to see it. Shut down with the visor thanks to Narwhal. And with that, that's first point of the map in favor of the Bobcats. So that is one tour you don't have to worry about. Now that it's a 4v4 situation with Zoe just having respawned, you see the whole hog come out trying to get some value but gets eliminated right away. And with that, it is the end of the first map in favor of the Bobcats. You can do a lot more value out in the open rather than just sitting there. For Cassidy, first the Bastion, but Bastion's immediately eliminated by Reaper. All's rolling around, just trying to get some slams, and it's finding value. Doomfist killing with the uppercut. Trying to find the Mercy, but gets him at the very end. Well, it took a while to do it. Admit that. And with that, we do see the Bobcats, I should say, in the choke wave. We'll get quickly eliminated thanks to the pile drive. And we do see Junkrat come back. Tyre comes in, finds only one kill on the Moira. Not much else. And all alt are top. Let's press Q. It's time for decision making there. That's, uh, that's an odd one. You see Bash in the first of all, thanks to the charge of the Reinhardt, followed by Mercy and Moira. Both heroes for that, but you don't have a lot you can do with your ace. And the circle will also go. It is the team kill, and that is the game. Hello again, everyone. I do apologize. I got ahead of myself. There is not going to be an interview. However, you will be able to see some more Esports U content. After this, at 8 p.m. EST, we're going to be having League of Legends. who will be casted by none other than Chaotic Thunder. Great guy. Should, be, should meet him. Recommend him entirely. In any case, 
My name's Sami Nami. You'll see me all around on Twitch, and I hope you all have a great day. Mekon. Um, I am 19 years old, turning 20 in a month or so, and I am a freshman turning sophomore in uh, college. Happy early birthday. That's exciting. <laughs> How do you like college so far? What has the experience been like for you? Uh, college has been a pretty good experience. You know, and for a lot, you know, I can't speak for a lot of the players, but I'm one of the few people who was uh, born in near my resident school. It's been really nice being near family and having help to help me with a lot of like life stuff and it's been really helpful but uh, college itself has been really nice you know the school experience is pretty decent everyone around me is pretty cool and I've been making a lot of friends and I really enjoy uh, basic college it's been a pretty uh, good experience for uh, all things considered I really like the uh, I really like how the school is turning itself into an esports school, and that'll definitely uh, attract a lot more uh, uh, new students into our program. And I think that's the most exciting thing about it. How has it been being a part of a collegiate team? It's been a very exciting experience. You know, it's been very awesome just uh, playing on a team. Not even not just any like collegiate team. It's like one of the best Overwatch teams in collegiate teams in the country, and I'm very happy to be a part of that. We all get along. We like to joke around with each other during games, and um, but when it gets like serious and when we need to focus up against like a really good team, it's been, you know, everyone's really up for it, and everyone's like really uh, excited to play with each other. 
and I'm also really excited for the future of the of the teams that we have here. It's gonna be awesome, and the school itself is gonna grow more and more, and we're gonna have more games, and I'm really happy, uh, all things considered. So, what games do you play, or what is your main game? My main game is Overwatch, but when I feel like I want to, uh. On my free time, I'll play some other games like Elden Ring has been out for a little bit, and I've been dabbling on that for a little bit. That's not what everyone is playing, but, um, you know, I like to chill on Football Manager uh, when I am just have nothing to do, or um, every now and again I'll play another multiplayer game like Valorant or uh, whatnot, so... Uh, but my main game is Overwatch. It's the one I play on my collegiate team. So how long have you been playing Overwatch? I've been playing uh, Overwatch since season five, which was probably uh, probably July of 2017, uh, June July of that year. I started out as a uh, typically everyone starts with like one hero, and I was Reaper. I always played the Reaper, uh, and uh, you know I out of that and now I'm a support player for my team and um, Overwatch has been a very I didn't expect for Overwatch to take over my life much not like everyone else um, everyone else experiences that sort of way like no one really thinks about like oh okay this is gonna be my game <laughs> you know but um, it's been it's been a wild ride to say the least I'm very excited to be playing this game and for you know for basic college so yeah and I'm sure you've definitely evolved since 2017 so how would you say you've improved yourself or how have you gotten better in the game well uh, initially it was just uh, play time just like playing as much as playing the game as much as i could uh you know when i lived in las vegas uh before i moved to boston but uh playing you know just keep playing the game getting better you know learning more stuff and then now at this point it's a lot of um, self reviewing, watching a lot of uh, scrims and matches over, sometimes with myself or sometimes with other coaches, sometimes with my coach. Um, you know, it's just like taking notes, applying that in the next scrim or in the next match, and it's been um, it's a it's a pretty repetitive cycle, but it's like the one of the few, it's one of the great things that will help you get, improve as a player is just keep playing and keep trying and keep taking notes. It really helps uh, build, uh, I guess, it builds that mentality of I'm getting better and I'm learning, and that's what really like seal like sells um, playing like the game competitively. And practice makes perfect too. So I'm sure over the years that's helped you as well. So can you tell me a little bit about what you think about CECC and just how you feel about competing in general? Well, for the CECC, with the recent announcement of the Atlanta, uh, Georgia LAN, which sounds like really exciting. I've never been to Atlanta, and I think the um, invitationals that are going to be happening soon are going to be really exciting. I know Southwest just wrapped up, so um, I'm really happy to be playing in that and potentially traveling to Atlanta and we really all want to go so like I, I think it'll be really fun I think CECC will um, I think CEC, CECC is going to be probably really exciting I'm glad that uh, you guys are going to be running this tournament or running it in some capacity so I'm, I'm really excited I can't wait to see what the uh, organization does in the future of collegiate there might be more in different locations as far as I'm like, as far as I'm aware, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I think it'll be really fun. I can't wait to see what you guys will do. Yeah, definitely. We're really excited, and we hope that we can see you guys in Atlanta as well. And I personally have never been to Atlanta either, so I am really looking forward to it. I think it'll be great for everyone, especially you know a lot of the players haven't been able to go to a land event, and then with COVID and everything, so it's super exciting for us too. Um, but those are mainly all of my questions. Is there anything else that you'd like to end off with or anything in general that you want the world to know about you or your team? For the team, for Base 8, this isn't the last you've heard of us. You're going to see us pop off for sure. I think uh, this isn't, this is definitely, like, I, <laughs> I got to word this somehow. Um, I'd say for me and for Base 8, well, it's not going to last, it's not the last of you. Uh, we're not going anywhere anytime soon. We're going to be taking over collegiate as far as we know it. 
and we're gonna have lots and uh, we're gonna have lots and lots of fun in Atlanta in future lands future games like we're gonna we're gonna take over collegiate well I hope you're right and that's a great way to end it so thank you again so much for your time and uh, doing this interview with me I really appreciate it and we hope to see you in Atlanta Welcome, my friends, as we bring to you the League of Legends East Coast Conference. It has been a stellar six weeks already as we are going to enter now into our seventh. Uh, but it is a little interesting is the fact that even though we're in week seven, we are actually doing round eight. There's been a lot going on over the course of these weeks, and I can tell you right now, it has been an awesome opportunity to be here. I am Rich Rat here alongside Sofchan, who I cannot wait to be able to get this action underway in just a matter of time, as we do actually have the privilege 
privilege of seeing both SNHU versus Damon. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here casting with you for the first time, Rich Rod. Mm -hmm. It's I'm definitely so excited for what's the action going to be for this series. So as you said, we do have the, the matchup of Damon versus South New Hampshire University. Mm -hmm. Well, what are your expectations for these series, right? I mean, I could really seeing it be qu quite an entertaining one because this is the fourth and the fifth seed. And for those that might be potentially following along with the battle file, looking at the week seven, as I mentioned, there is a little bit of an adjustment. So it is going to be like we mentioned the, the change up here. It was originally going to be Farmdale versus SNHU, but because of some adjustments, we do have Damon being that fifth seed. So I think this is going to be quite an intense matchup because of how close they are in proximity for those standings and their competitive play recently. But even to build on that further is there's been a lot of tape looking at those previous weeks that we've been able to at least see every team once on the broadcast before. So there is some intel that both these teams could have gathered about their opponent because this is the first time they're facing off against one another going into today. Yeah. I have to say this is my first time with the, working with this wonderful team with East Falls U and I think your opinion is going to be my opinion for tonight <laughs> because I'm a little bit out in the open, but I'm sure we're going to have great games. Mm -hmm. And as you said, both teams are definitely have definitely been looking into what the other teams might have of threats. So yeah, I'm just really looking forward to what we're going to see here mm -hmm. on the Rift. Yeah, in addition to also just seeing how closely related to what we see, even if we you know take a look at Academy recently and what type of compositions that they've been bringing out compared to you know professional play, there's such a plethora of competitive League of Legends that we can really look to see if they're going to follow in suit with what we see in the mainstream or look to opt something you know a little bit more unique and you know take their own path in that sense. But I was able to talk a little bit just before going into the games with the Southern New Hampshire uh, University and their coach gave us such a really great insight on you know their team specifically just because they've gone through such a hurdle going into this you know um, amazing east conference because they have had actually a big change up in their roster they had you know a Ooh. staple their mid laner that was you know present last year going into this new season had to step away just because you know things outside of their control personal reasons that they couldn't continue to be this real pillar and key individual inside of their roster to keep tabs on the rest of the players not only that mid laner who had such a overwhelming impact in just their roster as a whole for the for the university but also they lost both i believe their jungler and their top laner and had to scramble to fill to wow. get the rest of these slots taken up and they've managed to find you know these individuals that they've brought on three of them being glorious killer uh con air and then 12 cs uh, a minute who we're going to be seeing shortly once we do get into the picks and bands to see what they're going to possibly be selecting and with them really being you know this first refined five coming in last minute and making sure that they can give everything that they can to build out this roster. And even the coach, uh, King Frito, had told me, you know, looking at this composition and the players that they had going into it, it was it was dreary. But now they feel really, really well going into these later weeks and have really been able to set themselves up for success. And, you know, going into it, I cannot wait to see how they perform live on the stream because we've seen them, I think, continue to evolve over the course of these weeks. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a big challenge for SNHU. And well, so you mentioned they changed middle lane, mm -hmm. top lane, and jungle. Was mm -hmm. that it? Yes, correct. Yeah, so that's most most of the team, mm -hmm. more than a half of the team. That's that's a great challenge. But I'm glad to see that by speaking to the coach, they gave you the the assurance that they feel confident. They feel they can they can put up a good fight and speaking of good fight let's jump in right into the draft mm -hmm. and we'll see these picks and bans coming through and really looking to see who's going to be able to get some valuable pickups because there was some discussion as well again since we had the opportunity to focus more specifically on 
SNHU that they do look to try, especially with this main lane, main lane or mid laner, go for this Lux pickup, go for a, you know, Zareth, which we can already see is actually banned out from their opponent. So they have, as we mentioned, the opportunity to see tape and know who they want to eliminate. Hecarim being a very dominant pick when it comes into that jungler realm to see that they can get this heavy mobility cross map, a lot of presence and, you know, it's almost like you're going to have uh, SNHU focus on this jungle top positioning where you're going to have the reverse side being focused by Damon. Yeah. As you said, we do have the focused uh, bands, especially from that Lux. And it feels like SNHU is building a sense of security on, no, we're not going to face those junglers, no, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think we will. They, they are too powerful and... That's not what we want. So we do we do see now a Ben on Nautilus, and the last Ben for this first round of Bens from Damon Sejuani. Yeah, and I'm again, interested to see what their picks are going to be. Yeah, and again, like you commented, just the junglers and the significance there that they're going to take out of this. And as we do have the picks starting to come through, looking to see what they're actually going to lock in. I really, really am curious to see what this top lane focus is going to be. Because when we do look at SNHU, we do see more so of, you know, this variety of opportunity that they can pick going into it. But we actually see the Rakan coming out first. So we're talking about a initiator, the engager in that bottom half, looking to try and see if they can get something with this grand entrance and really curious to see what they're going to couple it with. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like an Aphelios. Again, you typically look to see it more coupled, of course, with the Thresh or someone who's got a lot more ability to disengage. But since you do have that completely taken out of the equation, same thing with Nautilus, we might actually see more of a combination of potentially even a Zeri who is available and is not banned and has slipped through yeah. the initial ban phase. Yeah, that's really interesting that we did not see Zeri in the first round of bans. And I, I'll have to agree with you. Felio sounds like one of the perfect, most perfect picks along with uh, Vrakan. Because we we know how the hyper carries, Felio, Jinx, Zeri, have been so predominant in any sort of uh, tournament, where it, whether it's LCS or like just collegiate in the tournaments we have here. So. It wouldn't surprise me to see any of those. And speaking of hyper carries, we do have another one. Not really that much of a pick choice recently, mm -hmm. but we do have Vayne locked in along with Volibear has been really strong as well mm -hmm. in the top lane or jungle. Yeah, I mean, the Vayne is, is an interesting pick as, again, like you mentioned, we don't really get to see it too much. There's a lot of, you know, Ezreal even as an adjustment just because it's a little bit more of a safe lane on the bottom. The slight adjustment that we've also seen from Ash uh, utilizing that as well in this bottom position as we do have SNHU able to lock in that lover's duo. So they're going to really have that opportunity of, again, crowd control, nice engagement opportunities. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Gale Force coming out again with this uh, Zaya to get that extra movement to have that ultimate more so for an aggressive play and looking for that reposition tactic and we have the akali actually going to be selected as well here so that assassin type of play that really really great execution style is here for them but my biggest concern is again rakan is an initiator does have that frontline capabilities but doesn't have the beefiness that we're looking to see like the opposing side from damon yeah absolutely volaba and mordecai is a really really beefy beefy boys there and well we i mean we do have the akali we could try and see what the nsaju's next picks are going to be but they really need i feel like they really like now that tankiness that's probably going to be coming from top lane um well we'll see we'll see i mean even and to be just... fair it <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good. Because I'm just like looking at like some of the matchup and the history that we've got for the teams to kind of just better understand like, you know, what they're looking to pick. And, you know, the jungle is going to have to be a place of focus. I mean, the Akali could go top, but that can flex just slightly. So really after seeing these last final, you know, bands that are coming through the Annie and also the Vigar, again, Vigar still does have a really nice place into it. You take the Predators, you look to get a nice lockdown with that extra movement speed, especially since the adaptation and adjustment into the queue to stack that AP more successfully successfully and also getting an extra stack as well coming from that larger minion with the tank minion in each wave although you're also going to see the victor get picked up now you can see that this is now completely transitioning to that mid lane focus and getting rid of those power picks that are available for these last couple of selections yeah 
Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, some more beefy. Uh, it's a beefy, beefy girl now. The tanky Leona on the side of Damon. And uh, well, in regards to to middle lane, I I have a feeling that the Akali might be mid because uh, they might be trying to avoid the really big range mm -hmm. and zoning and CC that uh, both Viger and uh, Victor can can impose. So. I, I think that might be that case, and they're going for the Vi okay. jungle. I really hope they do uh, opt for a more tanky top lane, or else that team will will be will have really to rely on early picks and early um, skirmishes along with early drakes mm -hmm. to really build on or. Oh, I like oh, that. Okay. I really like that. Okay. I mean, it's got a map presence that comes to mind. This composition right now from SNHU, it's basically green means go. When when you find a chance to dive or aggress onto a target or a select group of individuals in an uncomfortable position, they will exploit them instantaneously. Yeah. Whether it's the engagement from the Rakan, the, you know, the quickening coming out, Vi finding a, an instant, you know, click point and click engagement or even the aerial positioning by the galio there's so much here to hard engage on this and there is at least some counter coming through by damon with the leona able to get some crown control try and see if they could slow this momentum forward so between the two of them this is actually going to be quite a spicy compositional difference between the two yeah i agree on the, on the side of SNHU, my apologies, uh, we do have a, a team that has the potential for those early ganks with, mm -hmm. with the Vi. Um, but Damon, that composition is basically beefy people <laughs> to protect the carries, beefy people to protect uh, Vayne, the Kale that just hyperscales so much throughout the game. And I, I mean, we'll we'll have to see them holding their ground, not giving any objectives, and fighting really precisely, so that they can actually grow and um, have a way of facing the threat, the so aggressive uh, threat that SNHU has on early game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as we do get the opportunity just to look at the bigger picture here, I mean, my, my biggest concern is going towards, you know, this later portion of the game when you talk about Mordekaiser, you know, starting to really stack up that health value. Same thing with Clorox in, you know, the ability to shred in the late game with Vayne. The ability to get to this Vayne, if there is enough space maintained from this front line from Damon and really not allowing southern new hampshire to get an opportunity to really pick up jtix is going to be such a challenge so i really have to see southern take the advantage early really grab hold of this game and start to run away with it whereas if we start to get towards the late of it we're talking about you know kale late game mordekaiser late game vein there is so much to stack up against this like not to say that you know there there isn't an opportunity for late game opportunities with snhu but it's vastly vastly more in favor of damon yeah that there's no question about that we we really do have a case of uh a spicy matchup of a more early focused team with south new hampshire versus demon is so heavily focused on late game and really do have all the all the front line to defend the hyper carry mm -hmm. so that's gonna be really interesting to watch yeah, absolutely. And as you know, we're about to get into this first game again, it is going to be a best of three for this evening. We do have this solo game so far. And for those that might be tuning in a little bit later towards just the introduction of this League of Legends broadcast, it's the fifth and fourth seed. I mean, that's that's going to make this a really, really competitive game between these two. And being able to get some information on both of them is going to be quite interesting. Um, and like I talked about already, at least for, you know, Southern New Hampshire, when we talk about, you know, Damon on the opposing side, they acknowledge that there is quite a, a dominant presence from a lot of these players. Uh, Damon in the top laner is something that, you know, Southern has really acknowledged is a very formidable player. Uh, even further than that is really looking at Verks, who is going to be, you know, that ADC, the AD carry in that bottom position for them, that they're probably one of the better ADCs in the conference that they've come across so far. And because they have this tape and history that they've been able to manage and build a strategy out of, 
they're probably going to be looking a little bit more towards that bot side, especially because Yoriuchi is very well known for human capabilities presence amongst this bot half up through top with their ward coverage is also something very significant they're actually one of the top overall ward placement scoring uh individuals across this you know conference as a whole wow wow that's uh, very very significant because as as we pointed out earlier um as an AG really does need to gather all the possibilities all the vision around all these lanes so they can get a bridge to gain kind of top middle or bottom because i mean with a vi you can get any anywhere so quickly and you can you can clean the the, the jungle camps so nicely as well and gather that level up so you outgrow the the enemy jungler as well so it's really going to be and i agree with you it might um be a fight going more towards bottom lane of course we we do have the counter for Drake whenever it's about to spawn. So I think that area is going to be more most targeted, especially mm -hmm. because even if Vayne doesn't grow that much that fast, nope, we're actually going <laughs> into the game right now. <laughs> so let's not interrupt that. Uh, actually, we do we do have a subtle break. There is just a brief moment, so we will be back Ooh. in just a moment. No worries there. But again, we've got this action coming at you in just a moment to see who's going to be able to take the early advantage for this best of three. So don't go anywhere, friends, because we'll be back with that action in just a moment. I am an entertainment management student from Bay State College, uh, sophomore year. I go by blue on the Smash team. Okay, cool. Why do you go by blue? What made you choose that? It was somebody called me a cheesy player when I was playing the last Smash game I was playing. And I was like, that sounds like a good name. Why don't I just name myself Blue Cheese? I don't know why, but I was like 14 when I made it. It sounded cool. Yeah, I mean, it works. It's unique. I like it. <laughs> so where are you from? Are you from the area or? I am from massachusetts a little bit south of boston but same state lived here my whole life how would you say it's been being part of a collegiate team for esports oh it's been amazing i never thought i'd be getting paid to play smash like i don't know i'm not even like a spectacular player but they were willing to take me in and i thought that was amazing how long have you been playing smash i want to say about seven or eight years now i haven't always played this game but i think about that long <laughs> yeah how would you say you've gotten better what things do you do to improve yourself in game honestly just understanding like fundamentals better over like eight years i've realized like you need to be a lot more patient a lot more looking for habits from other players a bunch of stuff like that and i i could tell like way back when like watching videos i didn't know any of that <laughs> it was really bad so would you say that your teammates have helped you grow? Oh, for sure. They're all amazing people and amazing players. Could not ask for a better team, honestly. Do any of the players on your team stick out to you or any success stories that you want to share? Any success stories from them? Um, well, my teammate is Sonics. Uh, if you know who he is, he's probably one of the, probably the best Sonic player in the world. He went to the world tour recently. And he, yeah, he's he's pretty amazing for it. That's his success story. Uh, everyone else on the team is like ranked in their regions, which I think is awesome. So what about you? What's been the most proud moment for you while playing Smash? Probably getting second in ECAC last semester. Like it was very challenging for us. Our third like dropped out like mid semester. So I had to train up another teammate. <laughs> Somehow managed to get second still. I was amazed. Are there any schools or teams that your team kind of watches out for or gets nervous when playing against? Right now, yes. Uh, the NG, NJCU Gothics, they were the first, the, the team that took uh, first last semester. And they they wiped the floor of us. <laughs> uh, we had to face them twice, and I I think like the second time was a lot better. But the first time, we we did really bad. But we learned what they did. Do you think if you could compete against them again, you would win? I think so now, yeah. We've looked into their team. They've lost a few players. I still I still worry about them. Hydra's a very good player. He's still on that team. 
how would you describe yourself as an esports player? Not really the rankings or anything, but just like, would you say you're more competitive or do you like to play for fun or just how would you describe it yourself? I'd say a mix of both because there's been days where I want to compete and then I, I think about it like, is this going to be fun today? I don't, I don't really know. But if I'm in the mood, yeah, I, I'm always competitive. So would you say that you carry your gaming strategy into everyday life? When I like to play, I like to go like head first. I, I think I also go head first into life, honestly. Is there anything that you want the world to know about you or your team? Like The world's going to have to get used to us being around because I don't think we're going anywhere soon. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a good rest of your day. You too. All right, gamers, it's the moment that we've been waiting for. We enter in onto our first game as we have nothing but clear visuals of the baby frog amongst the rift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the entertainment we want to see. No Absolutely. league matches, just froggity frog. <laughs> nothing, nothing more than a hopping good time, let's be honest. As, as we're going to be looking... <laughs> As we get to the line of scrimmage here, again, we do have Southern New Hampshire here on this blue side, as we do have Damon on the red, looking to try and see what we can have come out the gate. If there's going to be any cheeky plays or bush dives, it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing that between these two as we continue on with the ECC Lowell Regional Season Round 8. And again, just really curious to see how we're going to fixate onto the initial push. You've got junglers going back. They've reset their wards as typical. And I, I'm really curious where that first initial point of pressure is going to be from both these junglers. Yeah, I agree. And with Vi um, going in for the red buff clear for, uh, in the first place, I feel like she may be going to going towards a full clear on the lower jungle and maybe rotating to top lane for an early gank or maybe middle, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is the possibility too, where you get that, you know, quick level three, don't do a full jungle clear, rotate down from the upper position so that you can try and get that early mid lane gank or even just potentially do a full clear to then network up to that top position. Because if you can really stent that Akali early and put them into a very challenging position just because this is the melee to melee it's not really a melee into range composition that's something that can be really substantial and going to keep an eye on that rotation yeah now we do have just nothing nothing much active or impressive going on <laughs> but i think that's that's always what we're gonna see when when we have a team on the side of daemon that knows they can't overextend the early game because they don't have that pressure, they don't have that power. And they know they're facing such a strong game, such a strong team in the early game as is SNA do. You can see a little bit of a swifter pace coming out from Damon towards his top position. Should about equalize. But again, they didn't look to go for the full clear, whereas you do have the Vi opting to mm -hmm. do so. A couple of vision placements as well. Pings towards the mid lane. Could look to see if there is assistance toward Glorious Killer, who is still going to reside in that middle position, opting to go a little bit outside of their comfort selection. And they do have his story, you know, continuing to play on this character, but it's not one of their go-to uh, initially. So looking to really, I think, just kind of stick with the composition as there could be a flank coming around the back position. Doesn't have knowledge of it. We're going to have JTX getting very aggressive just behind. A little bit of a retreat, though, seeing if 12 CS a minute can escape out of here unscathed. 
and actually is able to do so. Not really too much damage coming in. A couple of pots rolling. The slow is there and actually does have to force the flash. Didn't feel confident to stick in that. Yeah. That might have been the uh, safest but wisest. Oh, oh. my god. <laughs> You've got Mr. Reno coming in with a flash. There comes the dash in as well. That Ooh. is a little bit of a turn of events that I don't think that JTix was ready for. And thankfully, Clorox is going to get out of it. Great early advantage. And like I talked about, you need to see SNHU get this early game advantage and start to just take it right from the get-go. Yeah. And that was a great window of opportunity there because... Uh, on the side of Damon, they were really, really sure and confident. They had done their job top lane. Akali had wasted their, their flash. But little did they know, Vi was just around the corner and ready to counter gank that. Even though the gank was already over, we we, we did have a lot of pressure coming from, from her. And it yeah, did turn into the first blood for us in Aju. And as you can see now, transitioning down towards the bot half, they're not going to be able to get that scuttle. So Mr. Reno is going to be seen, at least for the moment, as there's a reset to the bot laners. Both Born Stellar and Pain going to be able to get a decent buy in return. Actually, I'm sorry, the scuttle is there. That was actually a vision ward. I thought that was the scuttle <laughs> intel that was given. So now they actually do have that to potentially be ready for when that dragon does come up in 30 seconds, since they have this opportunity to potentially even counter gate here. Mr. Reno might look for it. Yeah. We, we have both junglers going around the, the Drake area. And do we have an advantage now? Just a little bit of advantage in CS for the five compared to Volibear. Bear. Already level four, but nothing that Volibear Bear is not gonna keep up before the Drake. And it has spawned. We might see some action going on on bottom lane to try and pressure, at least from the side of SNAJU, to try and pressure to have that uh, vision on the area to secure that Drake. Mm -hmm. And Glorious Killer doing a stellar job in this middle position. Does get the harassment underneath the tower. A couple of chip damage onto that first initial play. Can't quite seem to get it, though, at least from what I can see so far. And, you know, in this bottom position, they've got it nice, slow pushed into this bottom side where they can really just, you know, lock down and freeze this lane in their favor to continue taking the advantage. There is a subtle you know, opportunity here for uh, Verks to get that early advantage in CS, but should be able to recover here. Look at how aggressive Glorious Killer is playing, just constantly trying to harass Solo Vane. And this mid lane just going to be overwhelmed with it. Yeah. And it's interesting to see, I mean, we do, we do know that Kale is, uh, her forte is definitely not before level 6 or 11 or 16. <laughs> so, uh, Galio is definitely taking advantage of that, of that early pressure. And is doing a great job by doing so. Uh, Pink Ward placed in the Dragon Pit. Do we have vision from an SAU there? No, I believe it's going to be sought out. And again, this is what we talked about too a little bit with Yoriuchi with that roaming potential, able to try and keep vision up. Bot lane has been very proactive in making sure that they do have intel, not only through the river position, but also going in for the dragon. You have a little bit of a harassment that, you know, gap close isn't quite necessarily there. Even a, you know, posturing with that shield to be generated from the thunder to potentially go for an engagement, but it's not favorable. Again, you're still playing behind. That early first kill went over to Mr. Reno for first blood and has been more dominantly presenced in these lanes and at this point you really haven't seen snhu step out of place for any sort of capitalization from damon mm -hmm. yeah they're playing carefully even though i mean they they know they they have the early game advantage but at the same time they're not letting it slip they're not letting damon have any sort of opening so they could capitalize on their mistakes no mistakes have been made uh on the contrary we saw uh, JTX trying to early gank on top lane that unfortunately did result into the first blood for SNHU. So they're playing this very carefully and uh, gradually. Yeah, the tempo is, is definitely very manageable right now for both teams. It's not like some of the others that we've seen where there's such explosive energy out the gate early. These, you know, heavy engagements, it really only was that first one. And now it's a more methodical game because, again, like we talked about it, this is the, the fourth and fifth seed that these two are trying to make sure that they can solidify a greater advantage over their opponent because of where they are in the standing. So they don't want to play too risky here. They're playing cohesive and they're playing cognizant of knowing how important it is as we continue to extend into these later weeks and of this round eight. Yeah, we, we already have SNAJU 
engaging in their trade, basically finishing it. Mm -hmm. They secure <clears throat> first Cloud Drake of the game. So they they did a very cohesive, as you said, job on bottom lane of oh, and we have a maybe. Oh wow, oh. what a play coming through forces out the old oh. solo vein gets by barely but i i was quite impressed right now from glorious killer in this mid laner and talk about just precision and knowing mm -hmm. how to play that champ oh my god we we we've been seeing precision from uh, ever and each one of them on snhu uh, oh my god what i was mentioning was that they they carefully played on bottom lane as you said they were freezing and then when they when the side when they decided they had enough vision of the dragon pit and they they could push and guarantee all the vision around there so the buff could be secured easily they did and it worked because they know how to do it and and they know how to execute it consistently across the board they've been you know performing again getting the first drake and we take a look at you know again the first you know second dragon aren't as critical as you allow yourself to again look to make sure that you're not putting yourself into a position later on in the game where it's like now you have to force these dragon fights so they can allow a couple to go down early and i don't really feel that they're as pivotal as we've seen you know towards the later portion of the game rift herald though has yet to be touched for the moment and honestly mr reno has just been playing hyper aggressive as well when it comes to the counter jungling able to take not only these raptors but previously evil to try and harass over towards gromp on the bot side and you've got again just about a 1k gold lead nothing that's super over the top but again it's just going to be as they continue to get this opportunity to pull the pull ahead with their objective management and also potential controlled picks where that gold is being allocated yeah and then speaking of gold we do have a very balanced um cs and gold count around the board you, just, you did say it was just a, a 1k um uh, difference and it's not that much especially in, in this early game but we do see that all the cs on both teams they're very very similar Meanwhile, in the top position, nice harassment coming through, playing into the bush. Clorox acknowledging that they can't go into this. They'll get a lot of the extra damage from that wave if they go for a trade here, which can be quite sizable when you've got about a wave and a half there built up to try and push under the tower, and an engagement under that is never in your favor, even though you do have a lot of sustainability from the Mordekaiser to try and compete against the Akali. It's a really safe play there. Yeah. We might be seeing here a double gank. Possibly coming in before, um, coming in first from Volaba and, and the counter gang from Vi. No, she did go base. Interesting. Yeah, JTX at this point knows that the ward's been taken because they've placed themselves in there. But again, since it was a vision ward, it does prevent them from knowing that the Vi has backed. Mr. Reno not being here, I do like the fact that they're staying a little bit, but JTix has to get involved with this. There comes the Xenoblade getting a stun. Solar Flare as well over top, but great recovery here. Gets the dash out. A Ooh. double stun onto two. So despite it being a three versus two, that's a lot of time actually spent from JTix in this bot half for not getting any value. Yeah, we just had a flash. Aside from ultimates, which come back fairly quickly in comparison to summoner spells, yeah, it was just a flash from Von Stellar, and I, I, yeah, I don't think that was really worth it comparing to the the amount of time JTX spent on that bottom lane. And on the other hand, we do have Mr. Reno pushing onto the, the Herald, which is most likely going to get uncontested. Oh, uh, there's a little bit of... I mean, I don't... It's more so the ships in the night right now. At this point, JTX doesn't even recognize that they're going to be taking it because they don't have any vision that far for, that far forward into the river position. So acknowledging that there was the gank down below since Mr. Reno went back for that, you know, base to make sure that they get a purchase and also a completion of their first item, that they'll be able to get this Rift Herald and now they can start posturing towards either this middle or top position to try and get some harassment, open up the opportunity for this main laner from Glorious Killer to go roam to this top or bottom position, give presence globally and uh, just really give them an even more early advantage. Going in potentially for this dive doesn't grab the taunt, but the Rift Herald's still going to come out. Yeah. And as we mentioned from the start, 
Oh. Wow, they're actually gonna go in on that. Xenoblade comes through. Mid laner <laughs> is giving assistance by the support in the bot lane. Huge follow up. The oh. damage is significant, but there's a nice attempted counter. You do have pain coming in from the bottom position to give assistance, but it's gonna be far too oh, late. No. That's a two pickup in the mid lane here for Damon, and they managed to turn the tides and find themselves at once so far in this 13 minutes at a gold lead. Yeah, and we do have the the airstrike there and. It's, it's definitely gonna be theirs. Huh, that's such a shame. I was just gonna say how they were still playing this very carefully and precisely. And then they just instantly make a mistake. It was not a cast of curse. Don't, don't add me. It was not a cast of curse because I was still thinking. I was like formulated it in my brain. <laughs> but I still hadn't said it. So uh, it's, it's just really unfortunate. But... Damon did do that job of knowing, okay, this is a clear mistake from SNAJU that we do have to get the advantage on top of it. I mean, when, it, when we look at the macro play of it, it really was so well done because you not only got the two kill advantage when it came to the mid lane, but you also had the timing perfectly when it came to an additional objective. They rotated down, they capitalized onto the Drake, they managed to get one of their own. Again, it's still a long run before any Dragon Soul comes online, but at least it's you taking these additional objectives to try and gain the advantage economically so that they can use it towards this transition into the mid lane where you do start to see some of these mythic items coming online. Two now so far here for Damon that they can try and recoup value since there is three on the opposing side for SNHU. Yeah, and I mean, they, we have now a 1v3 on, in, in talking about kills on the board. Oh, oh and wow. another like, really amazing goal. Yeah, huge opportunity here. Quickness is going to come out as well with a grand entrance to try and stun Yuriochi underneath it, but actually does get the Zenith Blade, but Pain still escapes, gets out of the radial from the tower shot, so they will survive. Great coverage here overall, but once that movement speed comes back in, they're going to actually go in for a counter pick. Big grand entrance comes up and stuns too with the assistance. Pain in the back still just being able to watch from the outskirts as the damage runneth over onto Damon under the turret. The top laner contributes, and this mid lane has completely been able to take advantage of this initial turret. There's a TP in to try and at least stop this momentum, but the damage has been done. The structure is gone, and we see this ebb and flow back now in favor of SNHU. Yeah, that was really incredible. Well, this time, <laughs> they saw the the opportunity was actually on, on their favor. And it was so well executed, who pointed out the grand entrance by pain. Ooh, that Rakan was so on point. Really nice to see it. And, well, good that we do have the SA Neju that was playing, I mean, before that big mistake on middle lane. And that they they find their way to come back from it and actually take down a turret. I mean, one of the most important ones from, of course, tier one middle lane um, to do, as you said, the the to maintain that ebb and flow. Because after the mistake on middle lane, they, Damon did create an advantage for them. But we do now have more than a two k gold advantage Ooh. for us, and I do. Flash managing to go in, does have the sweeper, so they do try to get the Akali play, but in the back, the TP comes out taunt onto the Mord. Cl Clorox is attempting to try and get this opportunity into the Death Realm to overwhelm before they can escape. Flash comes out into the secondary bush, and you've got this jungler once again. Mr. Reno Ooh. diving in, cease and desist coming through again, and just constantly finding these really great value picks because their ability to rotate and have just this map awareness of contribution mm -hmm. is so vital for them in getting these favorable trades despite it originally looking like damon should have had the better end of it yeah mr reno just positioning so well all the the map awareness like on the palm of their hand and knowing when to engage and when to help their teammates. I have to also point out, Glorious Killer Ultimate at the final mm -hmm. edge. Just close to, to being a dive. Ooh, that was really nice. So, we they have built now the advantage for almost 3k. And, I mean, that's, I think, that's what they have to keep on doing. Mm -hmm. SNH, you have to keep on 
doing these good plays, not engaging in not favorable fights where they are outnumbered, and just be sure. We know we're going to win this, and that's why we're going in. Otherwise, is that really necessary? Is that a buff, or is there an objective we really need? So maybe we shouldn't risk that much, mm -hmm. because all the, the gold advantage and XP advantage that Damon can get, they are thirsty for it, because they that's what their hypercarry ne their hyper carries need. And the thing about hyper carries is that they can get engaged by a TP from an Akali, but that doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> but the thing about hyper carries is that at, at some point in the game, you just don't even feel like they're going to explode you, and then they just come and you're dead. <laughs> yep. Uh, hi, bye, popped, uh, done. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And as we do, you, you, gonna... you touched on the objectives, and I was going to say the dragon now going in favor. It is going to be the chem, uh, it's, or correction, it's going to be the hex drake. I'm, <laughs> I've missed the chem so much. Every time I see it, I just want us to keep it. But again, we do. do really? I do. I thought it was awesome. Outside I the cled bug. Outside, outside the cled bug, I did like it. I, I do have to say, when I'm, because I'm a Trinomere player, so I mean, oh. let's be honest. That's, that's why. Wow. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm even having my prod in my ear telling me that I'm going to be pulled from the network because I just I admitted that I was a Trin player. Yes. Uh, I don't know if me saying that I'm a Vel'Koz support one trick also helps my case. Um, but uh, <laughs> now we're going to do my mic. Now, now it's okay. Yeah, we're, the, we're the broadcast here. is mine, okay? Just, just cut him off. Absolutely. All right, I'm out, friends. Bye. Later. Uh, thanks. Peace. Bye. Um, also, you just hear the Windows sound effect shutting down in the background. Bam, bam, boom, boom. That's a trap. Uh, but as we do take a look and continue on, we did see that Drake go down. So that does open up a very unique dynamic in the map. You do have these gateways now that you can use to maneuver across into these critical aspects of objectives, such as either by the Baron or future dragons, or even just being able to get back into engagements. You can see, again, just utilizing that up forward positioning, dropping some wards, getting some knowledge, and then taking that TP out. Yeah. Ah, that was such a lovely conversation. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we sit love. on that for a while. People in chat right now are gonna be just like real rich red trend player plus Velkov's one trick. That's gonna go down in the books. <laughs> no, okay, let's. Are, are we gonna be revealing secrets here? <clears throat> I I when I played mid lane, I main Lux. I mean, am I? But that's not bad. That that. I mean, people hate her. <laughs> I mean. Would you, I would I I would rather go against a Lux in the mid lane than go against a lot of other things. So <laughs> Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I always get flamed about playing Lux. Well, maybe it's just because I'm a gold player. I mean, you know, I think that's why we talk about the game, friend. That's why we talk about the game. <laughs> that's why we talk. That's why we talk. A little bit of harassment though in this bottom position as we do see i mean you know macro play wise now it's a you know a, a couple of k gold lead just feeling confident starting to get the snowball but i'm really really curious in seeing how damon at this present point after especially dropping the herald in this bottom portion managing to get another objective here there is still this subtle movement forward I'm actually feeling that there's a little bit of underwhelming aggression from SNHU. I think they could be playing and getting a little bit more mm -hmm. for the value that they've already been gaining because of, you know, what they have. And they can't leave this space for too long for Damon to somehow get these positional advantages and to really, you know, start looking towards that end game. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling the same. They, they really can get into so much more aggression and so much more interesting team fights that are most likely gonna come to their uh, their advantage uh yeah i wouldn't blame them for trying to be a little more cautious on the a little more on the safe side <laughs> And now that we reach this 22 minute marker, the Baron is up and available, but major focus here when it comes to vision control is still more predominantly in this bottom half. We've not actually seen for as much as we talked about at the top of the broadcast, Yuriuchi has been present elsewhere, but hasn't really been able to network further than that mid lane and only on very minimal occasions. It's been really reduced, I think, from what we've seen historically by their support play. And it's mostly just because of the hampering that we've had so much value from this play from the Zai and Rakan. It's not allowed as much opportunity, but opportunity is going to be a double taunt with a quickened grand entrance. The ultimate comes out from the Kale in the back to give some opportunity. Same thing with the Stormbringer from the Volley Bear as the 
TP comes through, but what a hero's entrance by the Galio to get the stun. Big Ooh. damage overall Ooh. across the team, blanketing them and absolutely decimating Damon underneath their turret, shot after shot, no one eliminated. And that will be a huge pickup here to shove into this inhibitor. Yeah, and that's that's what we were looking for. That's what you were looking for, that type of regression. And as you said, as we, as we do know, they, they have all the damage and the disengage and the tankiness as well to deal with with Damon. Damon doesn't have that that much power at this point in the game. And with the Hextech gates, they can just reposition and leave so quickly that they decided to go for the turrets there and take down that inhibitor. And, we, now, and now look. Yeah. And now look, they're yeah. gonna be transitioned to the Drake and they're gonna get this this position to be on a Dragon Soul. Everything exactly. works out here for them. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of feels like for us, of course, that they're <laughs> not really playing. Oh, we actually might see Damon trying to rotate for Baron now. Pancake. Even though Pancake is there. Yeah, they're, they're trying gonna... Trying to get a little bit of vision. They're gonna leave before they go from Pancake to Pancake. Uh, as there's gonna be now a five <laughs> stack, actually, on this Baron. They're gonna try and rush it. And the TP is going to come in from the top half. This is going to be a pincer maneuver. They're attempting to get the damage. The splash damage coming Ooh. in as well. And this is what we talked about. The ability to just completely collapse onto their opponent is speaking volumes. That was the one thing I was concerned about. Is that if you were able to get this stack after stack. Okay, again, you have one of the abilities called Grand Entrance and one Hero's Entrance. It is a heroic Grand Entrance. Every engagement <laughs> with a cease and desist slapped in your face. I mean, nobody's going anywhere. Yeah, they really are not. And it's so beautiful to see how, of course, Damon was going to think that's perfect. We saw them using the Hextech gates. They're going for the Drake that uh, has just spawned. We're going to go for Baron. But they did get they did get there so quickly to contest. And also with the, with the TP, was it... Was it from from Galio? Yes, or yeah, Akali? it was, Glor it was glorious Galio, killer. Yes. Had it on, had it in so, the wings to use to make sure they had that re-engage with again. Because again, yeah, heroes exactly. entrance such on a low cooldown for them right now that they're getting back into these fights quickly. Yeah, they have it every time, and along with, as you said, the grand entrance is just knock up after knock up, and they they just have all the power to clear Damon's team, and they have nothing they can do. It's just so such a massive engage, uh, a chi chi, uh, CC chain after CC. Oh it's no! Just, oh no! You oh you trusted that back. I mean, and, uh, that's no. just rough. That's just that's it just was. sad times. And again, they've acknowledged. And to be fair, because again, they acknowledge that Verks at the start of this from their coach is a very worthy worthy playing adc so they know that it's not somebody that they can just sit idly by and allow them to do the work but when they can get cheeky plays like that to find them out in the open they're gonna for sure take it to just burn down the morale yeah and that's definitely what has happened damon's team's morale is going down a cliff oh and it's really sad to see but it's all because of I say they do such great work, coordination and precision on every play. And I think at this point, the only mistake they have made was that one we pointed out earlier on middle lane. And after that, uh-uh, nothing more that Damon could capitalize on. I'm just, I'm waiting for a Clorox. It's going to have a bad time. 5v1. They've got the Baron buff. This is now going to attempt into Death Realm to at least get a one-for-one -one advantage with actually the team coming in from the back line, attempting to see if they can give assistance so Clorox can get out. But look at how forward Yoriuchi is. Goes in with the Zenith Blade and there's no assistance from the back line. Ultimate has to come in to Ooh. completely turn this <gasps> on its head. But they're so far in advance right now. SNHU is dominating in gold in objectives having the baron buff everything has lined up for them perfectly in this first game and i was concerned about how damon was going to handle this because when you have a team green means go and they really did throttle it pedal to the floor and they have accelerated yeah. through this game not even needing to hit a 30 minute marker and stopping at a oh, 27 yeah. minute yeah 
definitely fast and furious as a Nigeria. <laughs> what an incredible performance. Wow. So as we pointed out, that was, that was just one mistake. Mm -hmm. One mistake. And after that one mistake, do you feel like as a Nigeria was just... Mm, Okay, that's that's not gonna happen again. Mm -hmm. My bad. Okay, well, that's not that's not us. That's not gonna happen again. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, even even if it was that, you know, Southern really didn't have as much of an early advantage. Mm -hmm. Really seeing what they were able to do, timing and coordination wise, even if they were behind, I still felt like that how they played that was beautifully. Their timing and the utilization of this Galio in their composition was so dominant, and it was able to get so many leaps and bounds for them to take these types of fights that overall, this was just going to be, you know, one of those things where you could almost call it at the at the draft, the the, the picks and bans. Like, you, you would think that maybe they have an opportunity towards that late game, and they just have to play for it, but they never could, because every time they found anybody even slightly out of position, exploitation, instantly. Cease and desist, comes in, instant lockdown. It's going to be a heroic entrance. That's cool. We're going to stun them, taunt them, and then go in for a quickening with a grand entrance. It's It was just stack on stack on stack. You commented about the CC, and that was 100% the case in every in every yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just entrance upon entrance, and there was no exit for them. Ali, I mean, only exit for Damon was just going back to the fountain, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And, and they, it's it was so nice to see them capitalizing on every opportunity, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And you know, going into this next one, I'm really curious to see how Damon is going to be able to combat that. And, you know, with what they've done, at least, I do have to say that they had some capabilities of adapting to this aggression. So hopefully when they go into this next pick and ban phase, they'll be able to put a composition together that's a little bit more formidable and also maybe take out a couple of key players that were significant for SNHU that allowed them to flourish in that. And, you know, it's going to be time now for them to be able to strategize to hopefully bring this into a Rift 3. But don't go anywhere, friends. We'll be heading to a break. So we'll be seeing you on the other side in just a hot second. been uh, a safest but wisest oh my oh. god <laughs> you've got mr reno coming in with a flash there comes the dash in as well that oh. is a little bit of a turn of events that i don't think that jay ticks was ready for. job on bottom lane of oh and we have a maybe oh, oh wow what a play coming through forces out the old oh. solo vein going in potentially for this dive doesn't grab the taunt but the rift herald's still gonna come out yeah and as we mentioned from the start, oh! Wow, they're actually gonna go in on that. Xenoblade comes through, mid lane <laughs> is giving assistance by the support in the bot lane. Huge follow-up, the oh. damage is significant, but there's a nice attempted counter. You do have pain coming in from the bottom position to give assistance, but it's gonna be far too oh, late. No. That's a two pick. We have now a 1v3 on, in, in talking about kills on the board. Oh, oh, and another wow. like, really amazing goal. Yeah, huge opportunity here. Quickness is going to come out as well with a grand entrance to try and stun Yoriochi underneath it, but actually does get the Zenith Blade, but Pain still escapes, gets out of the radial from the tower shot, so they will survive. Great coverage here overall, but once that movement speed comes back in, they're going to actually go in for a counter pick. Big grand entrance comes up and stuns too with the assistance. Pain in the back still just being able to watch from the outskirts as the damage runneth over onto Damon under the turret. The top laner contributes, and this mid lane has completely been able to take advantage of this initial turret. There's a recon. It's not allowed as much opportunity, but opportunity is going to be a double taunt with a quickened grand entrance. The ultimate comes out from the Kale in the back to give some opportunity. Same thing with the Stormbringer from the Volley mm. Bear as the TP comes through, but what a hero's entrance by the Galio to get the stun. Big Ooh. damage overall Ooh. across the team, blanketing them and absolutely decimating Damon underneath their turret shot. Yeah. Actually on this Baron, they're gonna try and rush it. And the TP is going to come in from the top half. This is going to be a pincer maneuver. They're attempting to get the damage. The splash damage coming Ooh. in as well. And this is what we talked about. The ability to just completely collapse onto their opponent is speaking volumes. That was Back the line attempting to see if they can give assistance so Clorox can get out. But look at how forward. Yoriuchi is, goes in with the Zenith Blade, and there's no assistance from the back line. Ultimate has to come in to Ooh. completely turn this on its head, but 
they're so far in advance right now. SNHU is dominating in gold in object. Welcome back, friends. As we continue on, we do have, as we have mentioned before, SNHU gaining this first game so far and putting themselves now on a match point for this best of three. We can honestly say that Damon, it was unfortunately a little underwhelming for them going into this first game where, you know, there's been a lot of scouting. I can definitely say from that interview that I had earlier from, you know, coach from uh, Southern New Hampshire that they really did their homework and they knew exactly how to play into this and bring a composition that absolutely put damon on the back foot 100 percent. yeah that snhu just seemed to to go on damon's mental and just shatter it mm -hmm. <laughs> like minute by minute with every engage every counter gank every objective secured and they did that so well we were we were discussing how for snhu we felt that Gallio was just that cherry on top yeah. to finish and just compose so beautifully their, their team comp. But I mean, Damon, they, at least from the draft, they, they did have potential, but mm -hmm. they, they seemed so um, scattered across the map and just were lacking so much cohesion in that gameplay. We were saying, well, we, we didn't see much of this or this or this ability in the game or in team fights because the players were just already dead. Yeah. And that's so unfortunate to watch. So we hope that Damon is going to bring a, a better confidence, at least to be more central mm. and try to bring back uh, a fight for this because uh, uh, SNHU has proved they are a very big and competent threat. It's a namaste moment, hoping that they can center themselves going into this next one. And, you know, with with what we've seen, again, it, it was more so even just to put it in perspective that there was this constant need to react instead of being proactive. The, the mm -hmm. proactivity from Damon was unfortunately never there because it, it was never given. There was never a subtle micro moment for them to be able to take advantage of it because of how much just ability 
that SNHU had to take this early advantage. And uh, it looks like we actually do have the opportunity of seeing the picks and bands here coming up in just a moment, which will be exciting to see, you know, what the changeups are here. Do we see the same type of, you know, pick and band that we actually had before where they are confident selections and just adapt in the composition overall? Or do we see a little bit of focused picks once again here? We can at least see the Lux coming out again, which as we mentioned, Glorious Killer cannot give it to them, period. You cannot allow them to gain this Lux play, but they do bring out the Akali for one of the bands to remove. And again, that's more of a selected pick from this previous game. The Akali didn't have, I would say, as much influence. It was just more so like that damage necessary to follow up onto the crowd control. So I still think they felt that there was enough necessity in the way that the Akali was being played, that it's worthwhile to not allow this to go back into the hands of 12 CS a minute. Yeah. Oh, and we do have the Zeri ban yeah, in the first the round, which mm -hmm. we, yeah, which we, which we didn't see in the last game. But yeah, absolutely. I felt what was so great on the SNHU side, of course, as you mentioned, the Akali had the damage that was necessary to finish off mm -hmm. the, those team fights. But it was just that perfect coordination, and surgical precision from them to execute everything and just be be done with the team fight on top every time and we with the first pick we have kaisa okay nice kaisa, have kaisa you, coming in i've seen you in a while right I, there has been a little bit of play of the kaisa when it comes to academy i've seen it on a couple rare occasions just because it has that great follow-through and applied pressure in the back where you're not really ready for it though on the opposing side we're also going to get to see something that is not as regularly seen but has still found value again in the academy scene you know rel i haven't personally seen it in at least a lot of the recent cast that i've had to you know be a part of but but it's nice to see a little bit of this unique flavor, some adaptation, some changes coming through to have that really hard engagement once again. Um, like, not surprising after seeing, you know, the Rakan play and the value it's brought. Rel doing the same thing, understanding this initiation type of methodology behind the champ itself, especially when it's going to be coupled with a Misfortune who has that high mobility, but also great, you know, just poke and harass. That's going to be a dangerous bot lane, and I'm really interested to see what that support's going to be coupled with the Kaisa on the opposing side for Damon. Yeah, me too. Really, really excited, especially because I'm such a passionate Misfortune player. <laughs> so I love seeing anything with her. Oh, and we see okay. a brown here. That's like nice. That. I do like that. The Braum, I think, is going to be a great option to this, especially when you take a look at the bullet time and everything else to really block that incoming shot. Has the wall stand behind me. Everything can just really fuel and give protection when necessary to this bot lane, giving Virix a little bit more room to work with and not be so caught out by potentially, uh, you know, this bot lane duo. Man, interesting. We have a note in. For the jungler mm -hmm. the demon side. Okay. I mean, when it comes to that assassin type play, that's something that we've seen a lot. I mean, there I even just watched a recent game where Talon was was coming out and haven't seen that in a, a while just because either wow. it's banned or not played. So the Nocturne yeah. again does have a lot of that, you know, global presence, similar to like we kind of mentioned, at least for a slight bit when it came to the Galio. So they do have, you know, I'm just more curious of the build path that they're gonna want to go with that. Whereas mm -hmm. on the opposing side, we do see a Shivana. We're just having a great day worth of variety. Uh yeah. is not the typical or normal or go to and also again really curious to see how this is going to be played out as we do get towards the second half of the ban phase where shen's going to be the initial removal and wondering if there's going to be any more focus towards the mid and there's the annie as well wouldn't be surprised if we see potentially the victor for that second one coming out for damon as well yeah maybe we're going to see the zeroth too we did see a zeroth being hovered there or it's it's possible they do Lock in the any ban. And second and final ban for SNHU is going to be. I mean, they're really thinking it out. I mean, SNHU has yeah. the advantage here, so they they do feel confident that they can make a selection. Ooh. The set's an interesting one because I know that they're also a set play as well. Vex. Okay, I like this. The, the Vex is a good pickup to where they want to remove that out of this because, again, Vex, if you can get that, you know, chain control where you're just jumping into the back getting that CC fear onto multiple members with how you've got, you know, Damon looking to play coordinated and grouped 
I, I like at least they're going to remove that because I think in the composition that could be really devastating. And uh, you're it actually going to see a NAR coming out in this top lane. So this is a little bit more of a controlled engagement. And you have to be extremely aware of how 12 CS a minute wants to engage this because of the NAR bar. It's not on-demand engagement unless you specifically solely rely on to Pancake Man, who does have that rel. So if they do want to try and get this NAR play to be the initiator to find an advantage, they're going to be need to be super cognizant in communication of when that NAR bar comes online so they get the actual ultimate to land for these harsh engagements. Yeah. And on the side of Damon, we have the face locked. <laughs> Maybe an on interesting. Oh, and it has yes, yeah. it has been locked. Okay, interesting. So, this is this is going to be a field day. This is going to be a field day to to go into this compositionally. Just a lot of oh, real yeah. nice flavor. I'm wondering if it's almost just like at this point, Damon's just like, let's play a little bit more to comfort. Let's do something, yeah, you know, a little bit more unique and and out of left field, which could be an opportunity to. You know, kind of put SNHU on their head, you know, put them, put them into a uncomfortable position of just this mayhem because, you know, when it comes to the Fizz, you've got a lot of elusive capabilities of evading crowd control, which is significant, again, from the stun, the rel, you know, even just potentially this charm that's going to come out here from the Ari, but Ari is a scary, scary factor. We've seen that rise into power ever since we did have some adaptation when it came into the patch notes recently. So having that high mobility, having the crowd control, the outburst of damage, when you can really get a nice combo off I, I mean i'm curious to see how it's going to fend off against the fizz if this fizz play from solo vein is very very competent so yeah all in all it's really going to come down to i think at this point just outside of the engagement potential that snhu a lot of skill factor for for damon to try and outmatch their opponent right now yeah i definitely agree with that because i mean we we do have the knocked in which is scarily good and devastating in first level, second level, and maybe trying to uh, steal SNHU's jungle. But Kaisa, the fears, they really do require such a good positioning mm -hmm. and such um, confidence in well executing those plays. Whereas, I don't know, again, I, I feel on the side of SNHU, they have a cohesive comp. Mm -hmm. They have nice damage. They have engage. They have front lines. They have uh, disengages as well if they need to. But it, it's going to go down again to an ADC and the middle lane to deal all that damage. And the other team members are just going to be there to enable them mm -hmm. and to make everything work well on those team fights. You did, you did comment on one thing that I want to elaborate even further on is when you're talking about, you know, the Kai'Sa and their mobility and also positioning, how key that is. I really feel that Damon is going to have to look for favorable fights outside of very narrow choke points, because if they find themselves into a position of where they don't have that ability to maneuver and escape and play a little bit more, you know, withdrawn in some cases to look for a re-engagement, I think that's going to be really devastating, especially when you're talking about, you know, uh, this NAR play from, you know, overall, if you get yourself into a narrow position or if you cluster too tightly, that's it, done. Like you, you get a full combo from that NAR and you're out of the fight, period. Like before anything else comes through, you can basically just have that plus a bullet time and done. Plus like, the bullet that's bullet time. It. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 over. it's done. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, looking, looking at that, that's something I'm so going to be hyper-focused on and how well the positioning comes out from Damon. In the previous game, I feel it was a little bit lacking. I'm hoping that's something that they can refine with this composition because if they do continue to have these same tendencies as previously shown, that's the concern. They they have to level up right now and evolve in this short amount of time to really bring this to a third rift to, to give them an opportunity to differentiate themselves. Because again, as we mentioned earlier, that this is a you know seed positioning where they're both at the same point scoring. They need to try and differentiate themselves to be in that top four. That's why it's so substantial between these two because really everybody else underneath them isn't as close in proximity. So it's necessary for them to make that differentiation now so that they can continue to be in that top four segment. Yeah, and I really do hope that the, the Kai'Sa and the Fizz can just rise and shine with all that like precise positioning that we can see those two champions just flourishing so, mm -hmm. so, so much. So 
it will have yeah it would have to be a work of concentration and just centering that mental that was a little bit crumbling on the last game when when they were seen an snag just executing things so well so they they have to gather that gather their thoughts we might we we picked something different in this draft mm -hmm. we we have the the opportunity to give them a, li a little different comp and mm -hmm. we might just have the the opportunity to surprise them and yeah. bring something newer to the table and even further talking about you know the possibility when it comes to the significance of the engagement as well i mean rel is also my biggest fear just because of what she can contribute into this dynamic play from bot lane like we've definitely recognized that you know the adc has such a power position for damon that it is one of them that they've really looked out for and that they've scouted to get information and how to punish it and you know this presence there was a lot more agency towards the top half when they wanted to try and get the jungle roam early to see if they can give the advantage and it did go in favor of snhu and i wouldn't be surprised to see that again or even trying to opt in towards this middle position to give the r the advantage but it actually looks like we are going to be heading to a short break the teams are going to strategize before we enter in now that we've got the picks and bands selected so don't go anywhere friends because we'll be back in just a moment to see if it's going to be snhu able to take this two games in a row or it might be an even one for one and heading into a third rift so don't go anywhere Twitch up CS, top up CS, mid even CS. That's going to be the kill there for Twitch. Twitch going 2 and 0 down there against the bot lane. Echo gets the cleanup kill there, top for the counter gank. Trundle is going to try and go in. He's going to try for the pike kill, but I don't think he will. Yeah, no, didn't even get the kill there. Failed gank completely and even gets the Senna killed. Wave control is going to flip, is going to go for a slow push back onto red side. This is just, wow. This Pike is on his game. I know Riviera don't have an exact rank on them, but I got to assume Platt at the minimum. At the minimum, he's a Platt player. Or they're a Platt player, excuse me. And we see both junglers going in. Jungle actually looks pretty even right now, which I will give full credit to Alpazal there. He was able to keep jungle even. That's his entire goal. Twitch early up CS. Gets the stun there by Senna. Senna doing a great job trying to stun that Twitch as much as possible. You know, Twitch very mobile. Has the invisibility and then just starts shooting arrows at you with his ult. So as a Senna player, as a support player in general, your entire job is to try and stop that Twitch from CSing. Keep him stunned and rooted as much as possible. Senna tries to go invis there. Does, but gets two... Three rat stacks, as I like to call them. There's Twitch's little passive ability stacks there. Tries to get the rat stacks, and that's going to allow the St. Thomas team to at least get a little bit of an invis. Might even back off this ultimate trial for the St. Thomas team. Vigar mid gets the kill. Twitch flashes in for it. He's going to go for the dive. And Jackal there, the MF player, perfect walk away. Had four stacks on her. She perfectly dodged the Twitch and the Pike's abilities even stops a bit of CS there. So great plays. I think this Mercy College team is doing the absolute best they can. They are playing at the top of their game and you'll love to see it. You know, they said they beat us first game. So what? Who cares? Wipe it away. That's the term I use with my people all the time. Wipe it away. Wipe it away. Game one doesn't matter. Let's go game two. Let's go game two. We're going to see this dive here. MF 3v1 can't live you know health can only health is 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 the biggest factor she didn't live there she didn't she didn't have the ability to live i can't even form words anymore trundle and senna gonna try to stop the echo but he's able to get away there what i'm most likely gonna see is bot lane running up they might get the ping on trundle top lane is gonna crash in renekton might even get first played off this if they can survive long enough to keep that alive there's the Ari charm Vigar perfectly dodges that is able to stay alive from the Ari charm 
That's going to get the smite off. Trundle going to go in for the dive there against the Echo. We might even get a counter gank here mid if they can keep it alive long enough. Having to flash or else he was dead there. A lot of players might think, oh, Vygar wasted flash. Ah, really not. Ha! MF stole it. I, I, yeah. That's hilarious. That is funny. MF steals the... Sorry. MF steals the scuttle there just as Renekton gets the counter kill top against the allow. This will be allowing. Welcome back, my friends. As we entered the rift once with a frog, now we find ourselves with a tailed creature that I'm most likely going to say is similar to a squirrel. But who knows from the lore? Somebody's probably going to at me on Twitter telling me exactly what the name of that is. And it's probably listed somewhere in Legends of Terra. But as we enter in onto this, I am super excited that we continue this game to see if Damon is going to be able to take advantage of SNHU with their unique composition that is quite flavorful. And uh, hopefully it's going to be packed with enough flavor that it brings them into a Rift 3. Yeah. They, as you mentioned in the, in the draft, Damon needs this to go well. To, they need this to go to their advantage because it's either that or you're out it yeah, has to just, be has to be eight <laughs> it's just really making sure that they don't find themselves at such a deficit that they can't catch up with the points yeah. going for for Minions how the standings small. are going and at this point mm. again just wanting to make sure that they put themselves in the best position possible uh, as we do look to see now originally you're going to actually have a little bit of a focus though from jtex going to start on blue side uh and you're going to have Mr. Reno start from red. So the focus now after they go through their pathing is going to be towards this bottom position. And I'm really, really curious to see how uh, we're going to have Born Stellar play this bottom position with Pancake because they have tended to be a little bit more of the one to allow the wave to you know, freeze closer to them, which will give the opportunity for Mr. Reno again to take advantage of an early gank potential and maybe even find themselves first blood as they did in the previous game. Yeah, it would be very, it would be very exciting to see that. And well, as as a personal opinion, I do love myself some bot lane action, so <laughs> it's always nice to see that. But as we as we start here, nothing but maybe those waves, some little pokies, cues from Kaisa, misfortune here and there. Nothing much. Maybe we could see a fight coming in after securing that level two on bot lane. I mean, even just also kind of just seeing, again, this bot lane has really held their own. Like we talked about earlier, where it came to, you know, the new players, the mid laner, the jungler, and the top laner. The bot lane has been such a significant consistency for SNHU that, you know, it's really looking to these other lanes and this other presence to give additional value. And they've really held to their own. They've come in, like we mentioned, just one week prior before the first round started weeks ago. And have to give major credit here to 12 cs mr reno and then also glorious killer who have really stepped up and and brought a lot into this yeah we have a decision from from ari and fishing in here oh nice job. nah mm -hmm. and nah, again just also... this this precision in this mid yes. lane i know i've said precision uh, you know quite a bit even acknowledging myself but like it's 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 great to see how well-rounded glorious killer is quite a <laughs> scary opponent in the grand scale yeah. of things here definitely so bottom scutter crab going for snaju nobody's taken the top one yet and uh, as i was uh, mentioning nah did go in and place a deep ward on Damon's jungle in the top half of the map but nothing much happening still, um, aside from Mr. Reno securing both Scuttle Crabs. 
we'll get that early vision too again we've we've not seen it be as much priority ever since the adjustment when it came to the amount of experience that's gained from it Ooh. so it's been very helpful nice decent chip here consistently coming onto this fizz play Ooh. all pots have been expended too so there's no way that they can stick around in this and that's such a weird position to be in when you're going to have to back this early to not really have a lot more in the pocket to work with but as we do take a look here a little bit of a rotation back up to the top half but since you've got 12 cs a minute playing very aggressively no opportunity to get a gank opportunity and just really goes back to the jungle granite gra grab the last option that they've got go for a back and come back in to reevaluate where they need to start applying pressure from Mr. Reno. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to highlight um, the nice decision from Ari in choosing the in choosing the corrupt potion along with the inspiration runes for the biscuits. Just that extra, extra, extra um, sustain and middle lane also from from mana. So they could push in and they knew that that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to pressure the Fizz and give them no opportunity, no space to farm. And just having the range advantage to poke him out of the lane. And it's it's working very well until now. Even something I'm also looking at too, I'm now looking at some of the other runes as well. You've got Pancake coming in with the... Glacial Augment. Again, something that's been really, really rising into power, but as I talk about that, there's going to be still quite a decent engagement here coming out from Clorox, getting a nice presence against this Gnar, who again doesn't have any more pots, so they're going to have to play super safe for the remaining portion of this, because if they do get outmatched like that once again, especially towards the minion wave and allowing to take that damage, it's going to be really detrimental for them, but presence towards this bottom position, Mr. Reno able to get this Drake very early. JTX is going to be like, alright, well, I just saw that on the map. I should have maybe gone and checked, but now lose out on the value. And has to just go uh, right back into their jungle to continue farming. Yeah, it was so sad to see them pass through the, the little vision route and just not... Pop them? <laughs> right. Ooh. Top. You got the... Okay, well, that's what I was talking about. Again, you had to play mm -hmm. cautiously. You don't have any health pots. You don't even have biscuits coming through. Clorox had a really great counterplay onto this and took full advantage of a little bit of the over-aggression, I would say, or overconfidence from 12CS mm -hmm. a minute. Yeah. They're coming in back with a, with a TP, trying to secure... That lane before it crashes under the turret. Oh, and delaying the, the recall as well. And at the same time, we still have the solid, consistent damage from Ari on this phase. Just bullying them so much. You stay you stay where you are. Your place is under the turret. You're not leaving anywhere. <laughs> Gonna try and press forward. Gets a little bit of a stagger. But again, I mean, they're just trying to see if they can hold him here a little bit longer. Virx doesn't really have much mana to work with, so that's the biggest concern. Then they're going to have to stay into this wave since it's going to shove into them. They don't want to lose out on this wave, pressing under the tower. Potentially going to try and maybe keep it into a freeze, but unfortunately, if they stay, they're welcome. Going to get some punishment out, so this is going to now start to kind of reset back into their favor, into this middle position, and not really be able to get locked down as another aggressive play comes in, diving forward. Oh. Attempts to try and counterplay against uh, Clorox, but Clorox is saying, I'm going to get out pretty clean here. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was wonderful. Oh, my apologies. Uh. I was waiting to throw that in here for Clorox. I want it. I mean, it's, it's like it's the Mr. Clean one. He's, like, he's a bald guy. I don't know. But, uh, well, <laughs> you know, somebody who might get cleaned up here is going to be Clorox if they overstay yeah. their welcome. You have this possibility to dive in onto it, though. So there is going to be the ultimate oh, into the mid lane from the jungler underneath. Flashes oh. out, but no. Takes just enough damage, and the flank comes through. Two lanes going in favor here of SNHU. They do actually at least get something in the mid lane and manage to gain one top, so it still makes it a two for two score line. Yeah, and it was that was really interesting because uh, at the same time that we saw. Mr. Reno going on with 2 CS a minute, trying to get that kill on on. We had the Nocturne ulti, which could have scared him a little bit. And we instantly see Nocturne is on mid lane, diving into the glorious killer that does get the, the kill from the last shot of the turret that equalizes the, the trade there. And it still does go in favor on top lane. Whereas Clorox, uh, Unfortunately, it does go down. We do just 
just kind of take a pulse of this game so far. Dragon coming up in two minutes. No real vision control really in this bottom position, mainly even keeping it towards this outskirt position. And curious to see if it's going to start expanding out because we haven't really seen as much roam capabilities from Yorichu. They don't have as much dominance as we thought going into the second one. Attempting a lot previously, but has been more hellbent on staying in this bottom position to give the assistance to Varix, which is so important for them. You do have a little bit of a skirmish into the middle position. Glorious gets the nice proc, almost gets the orb as well, but nice even trade. Just evades that. Also, nice. Chum, the water's going wide. Abilities whizzing past one another, but none truly connecting that's of significant value. Yeah, such a nice dodge from Glorious Killer. Oh, an attempt of trying to capitalize onto that. Oh, no. Oh, I think that is popped. Easy pick up e. here. Patience is a virtue. Solo evades the charm. Once it's placed aggressively, goes in for the dive, evades the damage. Be able to take it now. Going to go into the bottom position. Comes in with the paranoia, having to force the flash out. Going up towards the river position. Heal is well committed. Pain Cake Man also commits the flash. The divide and conquer is not going to be able to give value as Virix now being counterplayed. Mr. Reno slowed, locked down. There's the concussive blow. Has to go over the wall. Three flashes expended. Solo vein over on this movement position from mid lane. Almost gets a second tank down. Would have been beautiful to have that to make it a 2 0 oh, 1 score but that was a lot of summoners spent here from snhu to just get out of that scot free yeah we we have both summoner spells on born stella the flash from pay kinkman but <laughs> pain <-cake> <laughs> say that 10 times fast it's okay pain cake and cake yes <laughs> yeah, you're going to want to always say pancake because I'm also very hungry. And of course, I'm going to substitute yeah. pancake because I really could go for those right now. I love breakfast mm -hmm. food, but what I also I love. Nice. Another flash spent here. Ooh, Clorox has to be careful. Manages mm -hmm. to get out once again. 12 CS is just looking to try and continue to maintain this top position. As now we do have a confirmation. It is Inferno Drake that will be affecting the map, setting it ablaze. And now allowing two Drakes to go in favor of SNHU. And once again, we're seeing all of that precision and cohesion from last game, knowing where to be, to counter gank, secure the objectives, and just keep everything really clean. Rift Herald now being expended into the middle position that Mr. Reno was able to get once again here. Their consistent presence in this early position of the game to get objectives is quite substantial. That's now three in a row over the course of these two games. Wouldn't be surprised if they get the fourth charm. Again, goes wide. Couple of landings for JTX, who is going to be chipped away. That's the second turret shot that they were able to get onto it, almost going down. Can't seem to get enough presence there, since there is three defensively from Damon, as they just abandon their ADC, and at this point, just trying to catch up in the bot lane, because they need this Kai'Sa to be something of dominance to try and compete against what we're going to be seeing stacked for SNHU. Yeah, we we have to point out how Mr. Reno has been such a highlight in these two games. The map awareness and presence has been incredible, guaranteeing all objectives. It's, it's been really, 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 really nice. Mm -hmm. Nice couple of couple of trading blows here between the two beefy players. Ooh. Gets tossed into the wall, but this this is just basically. Two big guys just slapping away at each other. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a slap fight. Just being like, ha, huh, I'm going to get you. Ha, huh, I'm going to get you. Nah, huh, I'm going to get you too. Exactly. And nothing really amounts from and it. Nothing but, you know, happens. it's fun to watch. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> we could just stay on top lane. <laughs> Let's just hard cam that. Oh, oh my goodness. That, oh, you could feel the breeze of that orb mm -hmm. on the fist. Jeez. Yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a close encounter that I guarantee you uh, Solo was... Very happy it didn't go into the direction I think that it could have gone. Because we do still see now at this 13-minute marker, just about to lose these plates here shortly in just under 60 seconds. So most of the gold has been obtained, at least from the mid lane, since they did get the outer turret. The top one and bottom one, really only just one extra plate. So it hasn't been a significant amount of extra gold, which could have been rightfully obtained by SNH, how they've played. As it finally falls, we do see only a 2k gold lead amassed. For SNHU as they continue to just play this very strategically and wait for proper 
opportunities as this engagement on top once again don't really think it's going to go too chaotic gets a couple of landings of cues and once again clorox falls back yeah it just feels like they're playing their own mini game there <laughs> yeah they are it's top island at this point now that uh, yeah, they made the adjustment it's, it's to the tp island. again granted it's going to be online here shortly so there it finally upgrades on the second as i talk about it yeah <laughs> uh, but regardless it was top island and it, it still shall be yeah it's gonna continue to be top violin oh but we do have the gank yeah paranoia coupled with the thor okay yep horn comes out and blows their way to victory in this top position because that's now going to be another advantage damon despite it not being an eventful you know early game once again they've actually been able to get a little bit more benefit and really utilizing this nocturne and its paranoia to gain those valuable picks but glorious killer would sneak up into this top position. They have not been able to land oh. the charm in mid lane often, but they sure as heck can on to Clorox. Gonna have oh. to, gonna have to that enjoy that gray screen. Fine, yes. Uh, that was so charming. Mm -mm. Such a fine landing there. That's definitely gonna give them nice presence on top lane, a little bit of push there, so they can have the older lanes a little advanced to gather more vision and probably rotate for that Jake spawning in 45 seconds. Oh, and the Harold, of, of course. Yep. Second Being five. done by Mr. Reno because they always do it. They're always there. Yeah. <laughs> They're it's always there. They get it every time. <laughs> it's 100% acquisition rate right now from SNHU on the Rift Herald, which is, again, just a, a great opportunity. And the fact that they've got this presence in top lane because the harassment here from Glorious Killer is going to open up that turret. They're making sure to proxy the lane just slightly so that they can get it, and then they can potentially rotate either that Rift Herald towards the bottom position, or actually, they're just going to have to go to the top one. They're going to get the stun onto it, managing to take it down, look for the second. And at this point, Clorox is in a terrible position just has to rotate around the outside can't even get the opportunity to cease the second charge from the rift herald as it will be able to get another big chunk onto the second point as long as they clear out this minion wave but solo is going to say otherwise eh. well they didn't have much to do that well, <laughs> Ari just has such a good clear they were going to take out that wave but unfortunately lose that drake it is the first inferno drake oh no Rattle's gonna come in, in the back position, but the Paranoia dives onto Bourne, able to do some damage, but they get a double, triple now. Born Stellar was the focus, but their play was absolutely stellar. And I'm gonna be honest, if they don't figure out a way to get that execution faster, the combination of 12 CS and this Pancake, player with the route is going to cause some serious problems in a this should be a nice pickup here i'm really hoping solo can get the advantage of it horn god comes in there's the dash coming out from the ultimate glorious just gets away fashionably yeah that's what a kda Ari does <laughs> i know right that's why i not that's why i picked up on that i'm glad you did too <laughs> yeah <laughs> we in sync out here we're in sync just as SNA Bye, bye, bye. Oh, no, that not that kind of instinct. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, a, oh, I'm a clever, clever one. That's the way I like to tell a myself. Clever, clever I'm a clever boy. Is that what your mama tells you? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm nothing but sweet because I'm dipped in sugar. No, I'm kidding. That's terrible. I, oh I stole that God. from Family Guy. Let's be honest. I stole that from elsewhere. But... That's a, that's a topic for another day. It's okay. Face palm for those in the chat. Um, no, nobody needs to know that. <laughs> no, I know. I swear. Uh, but as we do see this continue on, 4K gold lead for SNHU. They once again have found themselves in this middle middle game position to where they are in quite a decent state. As we take a look at the gold allocation and who you know, really does have the advantage, it is well well in the hands of this min laner ari who has been doing some stellar work here from glorious killer really able to get the despite they've even been taken out twice the 2-2 two -two yeah. score line like they're still managing to play dominantly with their cs score and gaining value from that mid lane plate gain and also even the harassment up top with the rift herald yeah that's true we I mean, have got oh mm -hmm. Show him the water does quite a bit of damage, but the double dash gets them out near enough to the tower that you're not going to see Solo look to dive in on that. That's too risky for them to play. Though, you could have this. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, there's the jungle play. You've got the paranoia. Flash fear as well, securing that the melees come through. Oh, I have to give I have to give Glorious Killer some major props for that. Lands the charm. 
oh. and is just out of range so that the melee reset doesn't come through and still yes. able to get another pickup. Wow. That was beyond impressive. Whew. Incredible, incredible play by Gloria Skella. It has to be the second time. I mean, Gloria Skella did die, just like the other Noctin. That's like in the other Noctin gank. But they're taking, they're taking JTX down with them. And uh, yeah, what I was going to point out, we have no turrets taking down on the SNHU side. All their turrets are up. And they have a lot of health, so just almost like 80% on all of them, at least. But it's, it's been really tough for Damon. And I... Um, what would be a, a good... Um, set, a good a good mindset, mm -hmm. or a good play style, do you think it would be necessary for them to recover from this game? I mean, you know, looking at their ability to recover right now, I mean, the biggest thing is that they have to try and maybe find a couple of independent picks and trades, just as you've seen for SNHU, or if they are going to go in for, you know, these Nocturne Paranoias, which we've seen in the mid lane, they just have to be a little bit cleaner. The fact that there is still some counterplay and some distance in the coordination, especially between Solo and Jtrick, Jtix, Again, here, potentially trying to see if they can maybe harass them and push them back. But there is focus towards this top side because, again, Baron is up. Dragon's in 60. I mean, they're trying to find an opportunity early on to this Baron play because they know that the mid laner's bot. You've got this presence <gasps> of the jungler. Big charm comes through. There is the lovely Ever Frost that gets the damage. The health pot is there Ooh. and evades the damage from the minions. So you will have... Solo Vane managed to get out by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, that corrupted potion was definitely what was necessary to keep them alive. I'm interested in seeing they they decided to go for the dark seal. Yeah. I I would say it's more prudent to try and go for that item when you when your team or at least yourself has a little mm -hmm. like a, of an advantage. That I mean. We can we can see a more advantage coming in with this fight on Drake. This yeah. morning right now. You can see the glorious killer in the bot lane already low in health. Does have to force a retreat. They do get the charm to at least buy some space for the moment, as this Drake is the point of fixation for the moment. Already tries to at least poke it. Nice charm once again, but the paranoia comes in. The health value is very low, and I don't <gasps> think you're going to be able to get the counterplay this time. JTix now gets the numbers advantage. Five versus four. The Drake goes down. Can they escape this? Fisher in the back is able to land onto the jungler, but Mr. Oh. Reno into the bullet time. Dives forward. Triple kill. Quad comes in over the wall. That was a massive play from Born Stellar, just finding the perfect angle and waiting to just unleash the pain from the double barrels. Wow, Born Stellar with a six and a coming in with, wow, such destructive power. Oh, the Gnar, the Gnar bar. Oh, nosers, has to force the flash. Surprisingly, I don't think they were very aware of the, the ultimate being online, so they probably could have saved that flash and gotten out of there, but again, better safe than sorry, is now that they're going to be knocking on the front door of this mid lane, getting the tower and opening up the inhibitor. This is once again quite a snowball that has gathered down the mountainside for SNHU and are feeling extremely confident wanting to close this out in just the next few minutes. And it was really interesting to see, Rich, how that glorious killer positioning you could feel like it was a little out of place a little out of place and then snh you just turned that into basically oh, a no. distraction paranoia comes out has to be used in the midst of two four i mean sorry to piggyback off yours even further it, it, glorious killer the fact that they went down it didn't even matter that the numbers advantage was in favor it? of da Damon. Like that's 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 unfortunate. Yeah, because it just turns into a big distraction, and Damon oh, fell no. for it. Oh no! Oh no! They jump out of the bush. I'm sorry. I am sorry for you. Oh, Yuriuchi is gonna be able to escape actually. 
That's actually, I feel, a little bit of a misplay. Granted, I know that SNHU is ahead, and they're they're killing it with this 7k gold leap. But they could easily pick that up. That's, that's where now I'm just going to try and say, all right, like, I know you're doing well, but, like, I, I know you can do better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's only improvement, you know? It's only improvement know, right? for more improvement. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Because, again, with, with bringing in these three new players and the way that they've been able to evolve since the start of this, as I, I've commented a couple of times, it's really true. It's great to see how well they've come through these last few weeks to be such a very high performing team really and, and and honestly it's been great success for a lot of these compositional decisions that they've made and also even just independent play styles yeah y yeah you're absolutely right with that but you might be seeing a skirmish they try to maybe try to avoid that it's just so oh, hesitant right now. They're so yeah. hesitant because the really challenging part now is that you're going to find SNHU on the Dragon Soul point. So they know that in a minute and 40 seconds, they're going to need to try and look for this engagement. It's not enough time for them to get to Baron safely for them to try and compete, especially in the yeah. fact that they've got bounties available for them. Damon has the opportunity to get that subtle extra gold on any sort of objective that they get. So they have to take advantage of it. But this now engagement from the bush. Once again, you do have the wall coming through to try and block the incoming damage. Paranoia activated, looking for who's going to be the target. And at this point, they just have to actually let it fall and use the blast cone to evade. Yeah, you can definitely see how hesitant they have been. And even when they pop the ulties, I mean, it just makes SNHU just be a little more careful, uh, fall a little bit behind and retreat, but really isn't leading to anything. And if they're really going to try and go for the dra the for the Baron now, uh, JTX doesn't have their ulti. They're trying There's to no paranoia now. there. No, there's not. And, I mean, the only good thing is that both TPs are up for Damon and for SNHU. If they do have the bot laners try to harass on this, but the hole breakers that can get really challenging for Damon as they go for the engagement. Instantly going to pop them. Now, you also do have the follow-through from the back line. The Shivana Ooh. play comes in. A double kill once again. Ooh. Stacking up eliminations. Nice play, though, coming out from the ADC, but that leaves the mid laner Ooh. and the support in the mid. Unbelievable job by Solo Vane collapsing into this, gets the triple, and oh for once my. you see this spark of life from Damon, they don't have wow. the NAR for the extra crowd control because once again you see him slapping each other in the bot lane. <laughs> they just switch the lanes. <laughs> I, I feel like we could go five uh, minutes away from this right now and then come back and this still and they're gonna happening. be here. This yeah, still let's happening. do it. They have been doing this for 26 minutes. Oh my goodness, can we talk about Rix and Solo Vein mate? Yeah. What? Yeah, but that's that was the key point. They have the openness of this map because of the Drake. It has opened up segments yes. that they can mm -hmm. utilize for mobility. In that blue buff area, if those walls were there, I feel that would have been vastly different of an engagement. Yeah, definitely with the Shivana, Nah, Misfortune. It's just combos after combos that can be done there. Oh, and oh, the wow. damage from that Kaisa is huge. Carrying a double buff. This is going to be such a challenge. You have to have SNHU play this perfectly to not allow themselves to get overzealous as they saw last time. Because again, this is going to be a five versus five. It was only the four versus four. And the fact that you've got Gnar now in the equation is significant. And you still have the mid laner, Glorious, in the wings, attempting to regain positioning because this fight has to happen near the Drake. Damn, Damon can't manage to lose this Drake. Yeah, they cannot. This has to be Damon denying SNHU the soul. That's going to be incredibly oh, massive this. on that bullet time. Oh, you're going to have 12 CS a minute. Has the Gnar bar up. Looks for Ooh. the slam into the wall. Gets two, but there's no follow-up. So it's just going to be four members pummeling this critter who has risen in size. And they get the Dragon Soul. A worthwhile sacrifice for 12 CS a minute because it nets them a long-running buff for a massive opportunity to transition up towards this Baron that they might honestly just look to take out because they know the jungler's not available. JTix is gone. The Paranoia and Smite are eliminated. 
Yeah, we do have the very insanely huge power of devastation coming from Solar Vein. Well, they're having... Have can they steal oh. it? Can they steal it? No, they're not going to get it. They're going to have the smite and the pickup into the back. That was an opportunity to try and engage it, but it's far too late. It's going to be a 3v1. It, there's no way you can escape on this bot laner. That is a pickup now for them to throttle into this mid position towards the top and even bottom. Spread the buffs, boost the minions, and take even more objectives. Now they've got everything. On a TP from Na, <laughs> taking down that bot turret. Yeah, with the whole even breaker, though they even though they don't the, have Baron, they've got yeah, the whole breaker. That's more than enough here. Exactly. Oh my, that's very unfortunate for Damon. We could see a pattern in SNAG using one of their team members as kind of a distraction to just secure the objective, which is far more valuable, especially talking about a Drake soul. It's just far more valuable than having 12, six, uh, 12 CS a minute. Falling down on a on a team fight as they're gonna be taking down two inhibitors. Just so one, close. just one. Just you can one. see you can see twelve CS sitting there like, do I really want to overstay my welcome? Do I really mm. want to get this inhibitor? Do I really? I'm do? not gonna throw my body against this one. Yeah, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get greedy. I I already died last fight for the team. I don't think this is worth it. Thirty minute marker has been a longer running game than our previous one but it still looks heavily favored in favor of SNHU. Biggest thing. I mean, Damon right now at this point, they have to look for objectives. They haven't been able to find it. They've lost the Dragon Soul. There's pings up towards that top position to see if they can maybe look to try and find some kind of value on any of these turrets. Because like you commented earlier, and it's exactly. going to be a comment again. Well, that's a decent grab. Paranoia comes in. They're trying to collapse onto the back line. Gets the shutdown gold. A second elimination comes oh through. My. This is massive to try and turn, but the health values are still Ooh. so significant when you've got wow. the Ari and also this mid laner continuing a quad kill. A quad kill from Mr. Reno. This Shivana has absolutely ballooned and is such a looming threat because of the amount of significant AP damage that they're able to overwhelm Damon with and now that fight's going to end it despite the efforts against SNHU there is not enough firepower that can outmatch it it was all forced into Born Stellar and Pancake Man but when they get those two pickups everyone else falls to the fires of the dragon oh my god and that last fight was so intense yeah it just felt so much in favor of Damon for such a long time in there they got the first uh kill of that team fight on Bond Stella, and for a second, it just felt like everything was collapsing for SNHU. Wow, so scary. But damn, just Mr. Reno and Glorious <laughs> Killer coming through. Wow, insane. I wasn't expecting that outcome, actually. I, 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 I'm either. very, yeah, I was I, I was actually very impressed with the engage from, from Damon. They saw they needed to go in that AD carry, and it was, it was well executed. SNAT displayed it better. They had already the, the gold advantage that leads into the item advantage that leads into item advantage. Mm -hmm. So, did I say item advantage twice? Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's because it was, that, it was that important. It was that yes. important to, to reiterate. Because <laughs> the, other, the other dynamic of this is I actually don't think that Damon acknowledged how much damage that the Shivana was doing. Because... Yeah. Again, you commented, they really did have an opportunity to dive onto the back line. That shutdown gold was so needed. Those were the gains that they had to get to try and close this massive gap that was there. So they had the right idea. It's just once they delve into this, they found, for those Game of Thrones out there, uh, fans out there, Dracarys from this player. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's setting a blaze to anyone that came near and and that really at, at the end of it was the nail in the coffin and uh we're, we're even gonna have a chance to be able to speak to someone from snhu uh after this as well we'll have we'll have a lovely interview with them get their insight how they're feeling what they believe in the map especially as it's you know towards that team that is just below them in seed ranking so we'll be able to speak with them shortly so don't go anywhere friends because we'll be bringing that back just on the other side of this break
to see them pass through the, the little vision fruit and just not hop them. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Top. You got the... Okay, well, that's what I was talking about. There is going to be Clorox if they overstay yeah. their welcome. You do have this possibility to dive in and talk to it. So there is going to be the ultimate oh, into the mid lane from the jungler underneath. Flashes oh. out, but no takes just enough damage and the flank comes through two lanes yeah, such a nice dodge from glorious color oh an attempt of trying to capitalize onto that oh no oh i did not as tough easy pick up easy. here we didn't have much to do that well. ari just has such a good clear they were gonna take out that wave and unfortunately lose that drake it is the first inferno drake oh no Rel's gonna come in in the back position, but the paranoia dives onto Born, able to do some damage, but they get a double, triple now. Could have this. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, there's the jungle play. You've got the paranoia. Flash fear as well, securing that the melees come through. Retreat. Oh. They do get the charm to at least buy some space for the moment, as this Drake is the point of fixation for the moment. Already tries to at least poke it. Nice charm once again, but the paranoia comes in. The health value is very low, and I don't <gasps> think you're going to be able to get the counterplay this time. JTix now gets the numbers advantage. Five versus four. The Drake goes down. Can they escape this? Fisher in the back is able to land onto the jungler, but Mr. Oh. Reno into the bullet time dives forward triple. Uh, and I mean, the only good thing is that both TPs are up for Damon and for SNHU. If they do have the bot laners try to harass in this, but the hole breakers that can get really challenging for Damon as they go for the engagement, instantly gonna pop them. Now, you also do have the follow through from the back line. The Shivana play comes in, a double kill once again, Ooh. stacking up eliminations. Nice play, though, coming out from the ADC, but that leaves the mid laner oh. and the support in the mid. Unbelievable job by Solo Vane, collapsing into no. this, gets the triple and oh. Oh, that's it on that bullet time. Oh, you're going to have 12 CS a minute, has the Narbar up, looks oh. for the slam into the wall, gets two, but there's no follow-up. So it's just going to be four members pummeling this critter who has risen in size and they get the dragon soul a worthwhile sacrifice Poor for vain oh. well they're having have... can they steal oh. it can they steal it no oh. they're not going to get it they're going to have the smite and the pickup into the back that was an opportunity to try and engage it but it's far too late it's going to be a 3v1 it, there's no way you can escape on this bot laner grab paranoia comes in they're trying to collapse onto the back line gets the shutdown gold a second elimination comes oh through my. this is massive to try and turn, but the health values are still oh. so significant when you significant AP damage that they're able to overwhelm Damon with. And now that fight's going to end it despite the efforts against SNHU. There is not enough firepower that can outmatch it. <laughs>
Hello and welcome, friends. As we return, we saw a stellar, stellar matchup between these two individuals. SNHU really has pulled themselves together with the talk of their story coming in as a partially new roster and having to revitalize themselves over the course of these weeks. We actually do have the opportunity of speaking with Pancake Man, who is the uh, support player that we saw do a magnificent job down below. Initiator, you can see him on screen. Hello, my friend. How are you doing? How are you feeling after that match today? Uh, I'm doing good. I feel pretty good. I think that was really fun. Uh, and I like being able to uh, try new things and mm -hmm. play against new people. I think that's always one of the most exciting parts of playing League. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's lovely to hear. And what, what was your guys' um, idea behind picking the support you guys did for this comp? Um, so for the first game, uh, we wanted to just make sure we had some form of peel. Um, most of our comp was uh, designed to go in, um, which is good. Understatement. But if you, <laughs> if you, if you only have go in, uh, then your comp is kind of one dimensional. So you need to make sure you have other options too. They had a Leona, so uh, they also had the option to go in. So picking a Rakan was uh just a little bit extra that we can do um in the second game we had some form of catch in the mid lane and then we had just a b big bruiser in the jungle uh and top uh 
And so those were good for kind of like skirmishes and fighting, but we also uh, picked Rel so we could have some form of Wombo, uh, specifically with Misfortune as well. Um, it just gives us different ways to play, um, so we have different options throughout the game. Yeah, the variety of strategy really was available to you with your compositions. And again, this is something where we saw and even talked about a couple of times where the composition of your champ select is something a little bit more unique to what we see more so in like the mainstream is this something where you're looking more to kind of test this out because even when we were you know just about to get into this interview you talked about you're really excited looking forward to the games that are ahead of you and what those hold for you are you looking to still kind of keep these unique picks you know in in your back pocket or are you looking to then transition to maybe something more a little bit meta that you see in the upper either academy or pro league scene i think um, we definitely have our own uh, way that we enjoy playing. I think um, if we find something in the meta that fits that, I think it makes sense to uh, okay. adapt that. Um, but comfortability is also pretty big for us. Um, being able to perform consistently on champions and play the way that we know how to play uh, uh, is very important. Um, and there are some champions that are just good right now and meta picks. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we just try and take the best of both worlds and see what overlaps and then take it based on that. Um, I think there are still some pocket picks because we all have champions that we enjoy that may not mm -hmm. be specifically meta, um, but we are good at playing them. Um, so I think that's a, a decent uh, explanation without giving too much away. <laughs> Uh, no, I was going to yeah. say, I know that you're probably like, how do I get around this without giving information since we still have weeks ahead? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you, do, you do a stellar hmm. job of it, so we appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. And uh, do you, would you like to say anything? Uh, yeah, just in general. I think um, we played pretty well. I think our, our everyone on the team performed. Um, I think our coach did a good job prepping us, making sure that we had... Uh, all the information we need and we kind of knew what we were up against um and then uh beyond that uh we also had uh like our own production team here doing work so thank them yeah. as well that's awesome yeah no i yeah. was able to talk with king a little bit earlier and gave some just really great insight about you and the team and how you've kind of really come together and you know found your own with such a unique story and transition to the new players that you have the the leaps and bounds and perseverance that you've had and it's really exciting to see the the direction that you've gone and what we have ahead of you uh, like you mentioned going into these next few weeks and you know for the the final thing is there anybody else additional wise that you would just like to shout out whether if i know you mentioned already the production in the back and your coach of course is there anyone like personal to you that you also want to give a shout out to uh yeah i probably have to thank my parents uh they're probably <laughs> the reason <laughs> they're the reason i'm here so and uh i, I still kind of owe them <laughs> for for that so I, i'll fit them in wherever they can wherever well, i well, can we'll we'll omit the probably part and we'll just say uh, we'll, we'll, we'll throw yeah. that in there <laughs> yeah yeah sorry we can, we should, can change should, that in post back right back on that. we can change yeah. that post right <laughs> oh, sorry about that one oops <laughs> No, you got it. You got to love the parents, though. I mean, again, that's, oh, it's yeah. amazing to, to recognize them and, and allow them to do, you know, what you love and, and be able to do something like this still while, you know, gaining your education. And that's just one of the great things when it comes to, you know, the collegiate scene and, and being a part of it and seeing, you know, what this conference can really bring for us. So we appreciate your time. We're super excited to have had the chance to talk with you. Uh, can't wait to see how things continue on for you over the course of these next few weeks for your conference and uh, looking to see how you continue to grow, my friends. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Definitely. Yeah. Have a good rest of Thank your day. You. Con hey, congratulations. You well. awesome. such Thank a, you. Such a wonderful performance. Yeah. Uh, we're excited. All righty. And again, for those that have been tuning in, that this is not done yet. There's still more League of Legends to come. It's not going to be us bringing you through the action, though. There's still a lot that you can take underway in just a moment as we're actually going to be continuing on after our time. And you're going to be seeing St. Thomas versus Mercy, uh, which will be games continuing after this. But at least for us, we get to say our fond farewell. We do appreciate the amazing opportunity to be working with production. Uh, it's been a fantastic opportunity to be casting alongside of you. As you mentioned at the very top of the broadcast, we've not had the chance to. But uh, Sof, it's been super amazing to be to be working with you in this. And just really really pleasant pleasant all around my friend yeah it's been wonderful such a great experience casting with you for the first time and i hope we get to cast together more often absolutely and for those again stick around don't go anywhere it's bon voyage for us and uh we'll look to see you next time friends so take care goodbye
Good evening and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and all my fabulous friends out there. My name's Chaotic Thunder, and welcome to Esports U. Tonight, we have an amazing matchup between St. Thomas versus Mercy College League of Legends. I think we're going to be getting right into it. I'm looking at both of these teams, I think we're going to have an amazing match tonight. I know St. Thomas is coming in hot, Mercy College is coming in equally as well, and I'm looking forward to bringing you everything going on getting right into the draft it's like st thomas is going to be starting off on blue that early poppy and ivern ban poppy and ivern down there most likely is going to be some jungle bands i'm expecting that to be heavy in looking over at mercy's first two bands the trindamir and the kiana those are going to be really nice probably stopping some mid top lane plays with the trindamir Ooh, the zillion ban zeri Wow, changing it up there. Two Zs. So close, so close. Looking over there for St. Thomas. That Zeri, everybody knows Zeri is just so, so hard to play against right now down there in the bottom lane. Mercy fin finishing off the first round of bans there with the Akali. Again, that Akali is just so painful to play against top lane. I'm not surprised that's being banned out. Personally, it's a near perma lock for me down there in the top lane. Let's see. St. Thomas bringing in SU Dolphin is going to be kind of swapping around, locking in on the Akshan Echo, maybe. Locking out the Echo. That could be really interesting, you know. Echo could be a jungler, could be a mid laner. Today, I played against a match of a Echo jungle that went amazing. But Echo is one of those really interesting junglers to play against because he could swing either way. Mercy bringing in the Jinx. Jinx is really high meta right now. I think last time I checked, she was sitting about 1 2 tier on a lot of the leaderboards. She has that nice damage she has a really good damage graph where she has a lot of early damage with her w and her q then she also scales really late game with her ult coming in so if you can bring a good support into that you could win matches all day it looks like alex for mercy is gonna bring in the janna now the thing is that could be a janna support or if they really want to meme and just cheese this game they could bring the janna top i'd love to see it but I probably won't. So most likely what we just saw Mercy bring in is going to be their Jinx and Janna bot lane. You know, Janna, she had that little flutter there at the beginning of the season where she was a 100% top laner. And now she's kind of switching back into her normal support role. St. Thomas's Diomar bringing the Jin. You love seeing Jin down there in the bot lane. Well, you love seeing him unless you're playing against him. His traps and then his ult are just game changing one ult can swing an entire obj fight the renekton so that'll most likely be the renekton top there from the ultimate trial for saint thomas haven't really seen that much renekton play this season it's very interesting i genuinely can't remember the last time i saw a renekton come top so really interested i'm gonna be very fascinated to see how this mercy team is gonna play that because renekton can scale really hard late game just like his opponent or brother really the nasus so we'll see. Mercy bring in the Nocturne. Oh my gosh. Love seeing that Nocturne come to the jungle. His ultimate and then just diving in halfway across the map is beautiful to see played every time. Personally, I, as a jungle and support main myself, love seeing that Nocturne. And then Mercy's going to be banning out Leona. St. Thomas is going to respond with the Zillion. Two support mains. That's going to clear it off. You know, Leona, just like Nautilus, heavy engage hook champs is the current meta right now down there in the bot lane. Nautilus is near Perma locked or Perma banned. One or the other. You get your pick. Let's see who we bring into it. Mercy's going to be bringing up that next band. So setting up the Jinx Jenna Nocturne. Looks like we're going to have some early squish champs here coming in. So I'm expecting Mercy to bring in some tanks here for the mid lane and that top lane. Most likely a Urgot or a Victor. Something that can tank a lot of damage that the Jinx and the Nocturne can dive in and do that heavy stuff. We see Mercy bring in the Blitzcrank and St. Thomas is going to wrap it up with Ari as our final ban. You know, Ari is just an all-around good mid-ban. That charm does so much damage. Riot's tried to rework it, but it's Riot, so they didn't really rework it, let's be honest. Mercy's going to bring that top lane. is going to be Set. Yeah, that's the kind of tank I'm talking about. Set can stay in lane for just so long by himself that he can tank nearly half a team fight, just take it straight to the face and win it every time. See what the St. Thomas is going to bring. You know, they've got some decent damage from the Jin, decent damage with the Echo, the Renekton, and the Pike support. Oh my gosh, these are big brain gamers tonight. Oh my gosh, and the Vigar mid. 
So that is going to be Echo Jungle. This St. Thomas lineup is looking incredible right now. A Jin Pike bot is the most painful thing to play against. I do not envy Dan and Alex from the Mercy team having to go against that. Nearly two ADCs, let's be honest. Pike's an assassin support, so that's just going to be so much damage down there in the bot lane. And then just swimming up into a Vigar cage mid. I do not want to be this Lux right now. The thing is, it's a smart ban to bring that Lux and the Vigar last there. You know, the Lux is a great counter for that Vigar. So we'll see how both these teams go into it. I think that early game, the St. Thomas team is really going to do damage, and the Mercy team is going to have to scale really late if they want to stay alive. The thing is, if the St. Thomas team can run it away early, they'll win this game outright. This Mercy team is playing for late game 100%. Jinx and Janna do a decent amount of damage early. They are looking to play long game. They're looking to where Janna can just ult and basically revive an entire team. And where Lux's ult is on a 30 second cooldown. And you are just spamming that every second you can. So I'm really going to hope this Mercy team can stay alive as long as they possibly can. Looking at these bands again, I am just... I'm really noticing the Poppy Ivor and coming out early. I'm really expecting that Mercy team. That was most likely some jungle targeting. So based on two jungle targets, I'm expecting Damien, the Mercy jungle player, bringing in the Nocturne to just be the win condition right now. I'm. It's not very often you see one team bring a ban for or two bans at that onto one person without that one person being a heavy win comp for them. So usually you see it thrown on an ADC, if anything. So we'll see how these teams get going. I know I'm really looking forward to see that Renekton against a set. It's two bruisers going into each other, so I think it's going to be an even matchup. I believe the Nocturne has a faster clear speed than the Echo, so I'm assuming that Echo is most likely going to be ganking a lot earlier. You know, you don't really see Echoes going in for a gank. Maybe he'll go for... A level six eight gank maybe top i'd love to see it go bot but i just don't know what that janna her tornado is still high buffed high buffed than what it reasonably should be so we'll see how that goes into it the jinx again she's got the way faster wave clear than what it actually needs to be it's just i am uh Sorry, checking other stuff. That's going to be fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Dolphin. Yeah, yeah, that's about right what I was thinking it was going to be. So we'll see how this team goes. I mean, I am just so interested to see how this... this team plays this into it. I mean, a Lux, a Lux going anywhere on this map is going to be interesting. You know, Lux is such a heavy skill player that it's so interesting to see how she can play it. If you are a high elo player playing Lux, you can land those hook shots every single time. You know, stun heading, heading through half a minion wave is still going to hit you. But then we pop it back same when we see a pike trying to throw a hook and catching you halfway across the map. I mean... Yeah, I'm getting confirmation right now. That is the set Nocturne Lux Jinx Janna, just like I thought it would be. And I'm assuming the St. Thomas team is going to bring the same over there. So I'm just really interested to see what these skill shots are going to be looking like from that Pike versus the Lux there in the mid lane versus the bot lane. So that Janna is just going to have to be working their tail off to make sure that that Pike does not land a single hook. If that Pike land one hook before level three, that Jinx is going to be so far behind in CS that the Jin could basically carry the lane by himself. I mean, it, they have so much lane control. You think about it, when normally you hear lane control, you're thinking of CC champs in the bot lane. You're thinking of Morganas. You're thinking of big AoE people like that, or even Nautiluses with the hook. But a Jin and Pike have such heavy lane control that a lot of lower ELO players don't really think about it. They think, oh, Pike, uh, he can run at me. Jin, uh, he doesn't have any CC. He has his traps, which is a lot more damage than you think they do, especially higher level when he gets some AoE burn items like Demonic Embrace or Mask. So putting those traps down and forcing you right into where that Pike's going to be is exactly the their play down bottom. The Vigar against the Lux, his main goal is just catch her in that trap. Trap, 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 trap. This Mercy team, when they look, they're 
not the biggest heavy engaged teams. They're going to be looking for picks. They're going to be engaging off that set. If that set is dead at any point in the game, the entire team should be running to towers. They are not going to be alive. They cannot take a fight unless that set is alive. He could come in and just... I know Riot doesn't like to use the terms from WD, but it's just an RKO from that set. Takes him out every single time. And that's the thing with it. That Lux, if she can land one hook or one root on the Jin, set's going to jump in. Don't even look at the Renekton. A lot of lower players will think, oh, we have to target the tank. Target no, 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 no. You target the ADC, then you start looking at anybody else. So that Mercy team, the only way they're going to play this game is if they wait for Vigar Cage to be down, then we go for the engage. That's one of those things you just got to be cognizant of. And I'm hoping, looking at the past games and skill level of both these teams, I'm hoping we can take a look and see that they have that game sense. I'm looking over at ranks right now. We see SU Dolphin bringing the Echo is actually going to be our highest ranked player over there with Grandmaster. Same with DMR. Two Grandmasters walking into this game with Ultimate Trial, a Plat, IDL, a Silver 3 for the St. Thomas team. So we're expecting high-level plays, you know, interesting with idl being the silver three you know maybe high gameplay not high rank you know the rank structure in this game is the most wild out of any competitive game let's be honest with ourselves so looking over at the mercy college team we see uh one silver over there versus a plat three silver bronze silver so this is a very interesting lineup um silver plat silver bronze bronze two silver for mercy college going against two grandmasters and a plat four is going to be very interesting i'm going to be very i'd really like to look at this mercy team i mean ranks don't mean anything by no means do ranks compare or are a perfect indicator of your skill level i know that personally right now i'm playing with plats and diamonds competitively but my rank right now is a silver three but it's just those things. It's like, oh, solo queue, I'm all right. But send me into a full game, a flex game, I'm carry. I'm the wind con. You can't stop me. Give me a support main. Hey, I'm a support. I'm a Morgana. You give me the Morgana, it's over. Nobody's walking. And I think that's what we're going to see in this game. Pike, Janna, same conditions. Pike lands one hook, he's golden. Janna sets up one tornado. She's won it. That's the kind of plays I'm looking to see. You know, IDL playing in a silver three, I want him to be heavy engaged with this. That's the only way he's going to play it. You have to punish this bot lane early if you want to win. Looking at the mid lane, Vigar, if he can land one cage, he throws his entire kit. It's the only way he doesn't let this luck scale early to mid game is he just has to cage, cage, cage. Do not let her walk in lane. Lands the cage. I don't care if you have to throw every sum smite dash everything like that that's the kind of stuff we need to be looking at <laughs> looking in the jungle not the perfect jungle player you know i'm just now picking up jungle that's one of those things i'll be honest but jungle looking at that echo versus the nocturne looking to see what the echo can play i know he likes to get i'm expecting an echo gank mid a lot just because those two top those two bruisers top are not going to be something we're going to be looking at a lot. They're not our biggest damage dealers, but that Vigar into the Lux is something I'm really going to be looking at. I'm expecting, just looking at these two junglers, that Nocturne is going to be looking down bot, while the Echo is going to be looking mid. Nobody's looking at top. That's a Renekton into a set. They are both just going to punch each other in the mouth the entire game, and it's just who's going to blink first or who can get a gank first, really. I'm not going to be looking top that much. I want to be looking in the mid lane and the bot lane and then checking jungle. But that's those are the areas we're looking at. You know, I'm looking over here at the bands again. I just like always going, I like looking back at the bands because they can tell you so much. As a captain myself, looking at the bands for a team can give you so much insight into their game plan going into it. You don't, a lot of lower players think, oh, I'm just going to ban who I don't like to play against, which is valid for a lot of teams. But the higher you get, you know, when you're playing with grandmasters, plats, diamonds, champs like this, you start thinking, all right, I don't care. I can play against a champ. I'm going to ban a champ that stops my comp. 
So looking at that, looking at the Ari, Ari into Vigar, doesn't work anytime. Zeri into a Pike or a Jin doesn't work. Zeri's got too much mobility. She can skirt around your traps. Has too much damage. Ivor into a Poppy into an Echo Jungle. Yet they have too much CC. Echo does not like CC. You lock him down for one second, and he's dead. His recall is amazing. Yes, can hit that when you're rooted or stunned or knocked up. So interesting to see what that Echo is going to look like. I know just the Nocturne is going to be incredible to see. Really looking forward to this. We're going to be heading into the game. Starting it off, heading over to blue side with St. Thomas. We're going to be seeing those teams go up. Looks like we're going to see a blue start here for the Echo. who's going to be running in there. And then we see the bot lane. Yeah, bot lane's going to be probing down there. Normal. Looks like right now we're going to see our two teams kind of setting up these normal run-ins. We're going to see Deomar and Dolphin setting up top there. Yeah, they're just going to be in the normal positions. I'm not, I wasn't really expecting an engage, and we didn't see it anyway. So these two teams are just going to be going into our normal rounds right now. Seth's going to be playing around Try. Pike and Jin are going to be around Pixel Brush. Jana Jinx are going to be over there in the bot lane. This is not going to be some grand, amazing plays where we see a thousand and one people invading. This is going to be the the normal stuff we see. I'm not expecting anything crazy. You know, a lot of other players who don't have a lot of game time, don't have a lot of this or that, will think, oh, I, I gotta rush, I gotta rush, I gotta rush. We'll invade, invade, invade every game. It's so tiring to see that. You know, you love a good invade, but on the other hand, it's, oh, wow, we're invading again, or why do we need to invade? It's just interesting to see players with it all the time. Going into the the Nocturne taking Red Smite, Echo taking Blue Smite, that's going to be normal. Definitely thinking I'm going to be looking for that Nocturne. Interesting he took the Red Smite. Quick pause, quick pause. We're all good, maybe? Good? Yep, we're good. Never mind. <laughs> uh, live broadcasting is always fun. You never know what you're going to see. Looking down here in the bot lane, we see the Pike and the Jin start setting it up. We do see Pike brought steel caps. Janet with steel plates. A little bit of technical difficulties there, like I said. Live broadcasting. Always just fun, fun, fun. But what we could see there, you know, top lane... Yeah, that bot lane is just going to be heavy engage. It's interesting to see that Janna taking steel plates, though. I wouldn't have expected her to take that. Normally last... Now, the Janna meta is like Janna, like the wind, changes every second. Ah, see what I did there? Yeah, yeah. Janna with steel plates, though. I mean, we're expecting Spell Thief or Knife there. Not really looking at the steel caps. You know, Janna more of a ranged player. Not really thinking about her walking up and mailing. The pike with steel caps, though. Ah, that's normal. That's normal. Looks like we did see Echo start the red buff there. And I think what I saw was the Nocturne on red buff as well. So it looks like they're both going to be doing uh, red to blue, full clears, and then maybe a level three. Maybe at the bare minimum, you'll see a level three. The Echo, I can see doing a level. I can see doing a full clear, grabbing Scuttle running to mid lane for a gank. But that's it. That's, wow, that that would be... Dynamar would have to really, really be on his A game tonight if they wanted to try that. I mean, uh, the, the Nocturne doesn't even need to look at a gank until level 6 when he has his ult. Nocturne is not a factor as a jungler until level 6. There's a lot of other players who can say, no, 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 not Nocturne can play at level... No, he can't. You're lying to yourself. False. Nocturne is not a champion until level 6 when he starts having his ult and can just travel anywhere he wants. Until then, not a factor in the slightest. You know, Echo can be a champ early game. Igar, early champ, especially with Cage. I didn't get to see what he built early, but I had to take a look at the Echo. You know, he built cube, pretty normal. Vigar taking Cage would be the next normal thing I'd see. Pike taking that. 
think we'll be heading back into it momentarily, but I'm definitely interested to see how these two teams play it. I want to look at that bot lane a lot, see how they play mid lane, even top lane to see what our junglers can do. Heading back into it, looks like Jin and this Jin and Jinx are going to be pretty even CS. The only way they're going to get ahead is if this supports can take it. We see Nocturne. Looks like he actually started on... Yeah, started red buff. Got the help from the set. Set going to be a bit low there, but fighting against that Renekton's normal. Actually seeing a lot of aggro play here by the Jinx, forcing them into tower. Wave is going to crash into blue side here, so I'm interested to see if this pike is going to set up. They did hit the level 2 slightly ahead of red side, but going to be interested to see how this bot lane plays out. Jin hasn't set a trap yet. Looks like he did take it. Going back up to top lane, that's definitely going to crash into the set. Interesting that this set is playing so passive. Not really trying to aggro the wave, not really trying to control it at all. Just letting Cannon go free. I am very surprised to even let SU Dolphin take the level 3 early. And now the wave is going to just completely wreck that tower. Probably looking for even an Echo gank at level... Wow. Level 3 and Echo is already invading top jungle. Probably going to go take Krugs. If not, go for a dive maybe once it goes in. Yeah. Going for the dive. Wow, this is... Not the play I thought I'd see, but Echo with first blood there. Diomar already just clearing up, and that's SU Dolphin, the other Grandmaster we saw, just taking it out early. He's going to have to back, but Wave is gone, and Set's going to waste TP. Wow, I mean, waste is not the best word there. He gets back into lane to save the crash, but wow, not even five minutes in, already first blood down there by that Echo early gank top, and now Echo's looking mid at the Vigar and the Lux duel. You know, this SU Dolphin, this St. Thomas Dolphin team is playing under tower there, but this is just, wow. I was not expecting this much heavy aggro from the St. Thomas team. This Mercy College team is gonna have to really play fast and loose. Here we got this fight down bot. We see the early flash there. Nocturne might be trying to set up for this counter gank. Oh, but misses the claw, and that's going to mess it up. The Jin's going to live. Pike might die if this Nocturne can play it right. He's going to get the full root off. No, he doesn't. Pike is just outplaying that Nocturne at every step. He flashes perfectly to avoid the root, then uses E to dash away and avoid the secondary claw, which is two of Nocturne's massive CC abilities, so perfectly played down there, but Jin is going to be slightly behind in CS, but Jinx just has a faster CS speed, let's be honest. She can just completely throw everything. Good to see Dark Swordsman's actually going to be able to crash wave there against Dolphin, but now Dolphin can just play safe. He's under health, but it's a Renekton. He can get health back in two seconds. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, this wave, this is just interesting. Vigar is going to TP back mid to save that wave crashing early, but Pike going for the second dive is going to kill there on the Janna. Gets the kill on the Jinx with the one auto there. And that'll be our second blood. St. Thomas University up 2-0 against Mercy College. Already nearly a 1k diff in gold. And this is exactly what I was afraid of. The St. Thomas team, such an early team that they are just stomping down this Mercy College. I really really want Mercy College to bring it back. You know, they didn't have the best of drafts. Had a lot of squishies. Okay. Squishies mean damage, though, in this game. We see Dolphin up here is clearing out a lot of the waves, controlling it. Even gonna get a little bit of stun in play. Doesn't have the health for it, but he can pop E and get that back right up. Doesn't have it on the set, though. He forgot. He is fighting a set. He might be getting a second gank here by the Echo? What? We don't. The, the Mercy College team doesn't have any eyes here. Oh, we see the we see the Nocturne though. We see the Nocturne, and we're gonna go for a full gank here. Echo goes in, gets the kill there on set. It's gonna have the backslash, double flash there to keep him in battle. Nocturne gets the shutdown there on the Echo, but Renekton cleans it up and is most likely gonna get second plate off that. So, in set with that early TP is not gonna be able to save tower at all. Going back down bot lane, Pike really low, but he has a lot of gray health left. Perfectly dodges the Lux ability there. You know, this is some 
just wild plays. And there it is. She got him. Double roots there. That's why Lux is such a good play against the Vigar. If he catches you in a cage, oh, so what? You throw a root and you're both stunned. Nobody's doing anything. The lane is shut down. Looking at CS mid, about even. Even CS down bot as well. So I'm very looking to see how these teams can start changing it up. Top lane, top lane's done. All right, I'm, I, I don't like to be the Debbie Downer. I don't like to call teams down. You know, I'm, I'm always rooting for the underdog. Top lane's lost. Don't look at top lane. If Nocturne does not look at top lane. He can look mid lane as he's nearly going to get the kill there. Might bring it off with a burn. But Vigar is going to fall there to Lux, who popped that early, early ult. We might trade this around. Looks like we're going to get a secondary kill here on the Jinx. And that's a double shutdown for Jinx, putting Jin 2-0 in the bot lane. Two kills, two assists. This bot lane is going to be running away hard. He's going to get two waves off that before Jin can even respawn. Janna's has got to force back. I think the St. Thomas team is actually going to get first plate down bot as well. This is just... Oh my gosh, this is one of those games where you just see it coming from a mile away, and it's a car crash waiting to happen. <laughs> Seeing the Respinectin playing under tower a little bit, Wave's going to crash. The thing is, the set has Wave control. He has Wave control, but the Renekton's just running him away. He's 2-0, one assist, he's up 30 CS. We're over 3k gold diff at less than 10 minutes. Half the sums are down on the Mercy College team versus a full... S <laughs> the biggest thing. It's one of those things when you're looking at it from a player perspective and you just, as an observer versus a player, you get a lot more information on the game. We are less than 10 minutes in. Nocturne still has three charges on his smite, while Echo has full blue smite already and is going to grab Rifty by himself. I can't, Echo normally can't grab Rifty by him, first Rifty by himself. He needs a bit of a, bit of a leash on that, but Dolphin and Dynamar can just grab this by themselves. Great gameplay awareness, though, by the Mercy College team. They see Echo going to grab first Rifty. Okay, you grab Rifty, we grab Drake. That is going to take the Drake out, but looks like we're getting a secondary gank here. Set might be able to stay alive. The tower can save him. Goes for the ult, but can't get it off. He's going to shut down the Renekton, but Echo's just going to clean it up. Great play there by the set, holding his ult until he knew he had the time for it. It's one of those things you'll love to see the Renekton just use that ult. But the set just hit him with the RKO all day long. He's going to shut it down. So Mercy College is going to get the first drag there. It's going to be the Mountain. So Mountain Souls down. Have Can't get eyes on that secondary drag yet. Oh! Nocturne. Nocturne's going to go for the strike here. He's going to get the kill there on the Vigar. Lux is going to... Oh! Oh my gosh. He lives with a breath of health. That was a pixel-perfect play from that Vigar. Using Cage to dodge out the Nocturne roots, and then perfectly dodging the Lux ult. Amazing play. And we're going to get the secondary root here. That's going to make Jinx pop heal for the first time. Pike's going to get the ult kill there on the Jinx. You know, that Pike execute is just so dangerous, especially early game against very squishy laners like the Jinx and the Janna. Heading into 10 minutes, you know, you like to say a lot of people will... Laning phase, I'll be honest, laning phase doesn't end until about 15 to 20s where you see laning phase in. Laning phase is lost. This Mercy College team has lost laning phase everywhere but mid. Mid lane, they're winning. And that's because Lux is a near perfect counter. Not perfect. A Lux is that great counter for that mid lane. She's got about 20 CS on him, a full build. But the thing is, with such a jungle gap, such a top gap, allowing Echo to just roam wherever he wants, allowing Renekton to roam wherever he wants, we're just going to send Rifty mid, and we'll already have one tower down. That'll be two. Secondary kill there. Oh, come on, guys. Come on, Renekton. That's a bit of BM. Come on, guys. Really? You pop the mastery emote right when you're going to go for the kill. That's a bit of BM. Come on. You, you've got your lane secured. Yes, you do. But the emotes, that's just... That's low elo. Uh... We see the Renekton's going to meet that setback top, but then we see Pike is just 
the, the jungle's his. Nocturne can't do anything. The only person who has a hope of saving this Mercy College team. Oh, great dodge there by the Jinx. And then dodging Jinx's fourth shot there. The only person who has a hope of keeping this Mercy College team alive is that Lux mid. But other than that, no one else is going to be saving them. And just based on gameplay alone, I'm assuming that Lux is going to be our plat 3 Alephys. We see the Pike is just roaming. Oh, it's biological. Our silver one. Wow. Uh, that's genuinely, genuinely surprising. Nocturne, the other great player who we've seen so far, is our plat three with biological being our silver one. So this is one of those gameplays where I think this just comes down to game sense. We have Pike in Echo cleaning it up. Jin killed Jinx by himself. Didn't even need to use ult. Just straight up killed her. She popped flash. She popped heal. She popped everything. Vigar. Perfect flash saves him from the Lux ult. Vigar is down, I think, three levels right now. Looks like we're going to get another gank here. Nocturnal might save this Janna here. Nocturne gets the shutdown on the pike. He's going to get the second kill. Nux oh, and he gets it. Jin's going to get the shutdown there on Nocturne. Jinx sending the ult might actually kill the Echo. He doesn't have ult right now, so he can't full regen that. But then Nocturne, amazing play there, having the map awareness to realize, oh, I'm in blue jungle. Oh, we're going to have this dive. All right, counter dive. Saves his entire team. And Renekton can just flash right into it. Oh, and the Jinx gets the kill. Dino Mar gets the assist there from the Renekton. Echo's going to get shut down. Yep, gets the shutdown there on the Renekton. But we're going to have this fight here in the river. It's a 4v1. You're a set, you're a tank, you're a bruiser, but you can't live against four people. And Pike's just going to execute him just because. Looks like Pike's still hunting. He's just a hunter. He's got Predator. He's got Blades. He is going for these kills. You know, 12-5, nearly 10k gold diff. Middle, mid lane is the only lane that's actually won so far. in. we have two people on the St. Thomas team with full over th nearly 300 gold of just straight pike with a interesting miss there. that was a really easy hook to land i'm surprised you missed that one but you know when you're 2-1 in a 4-0 5-0 i'll correct myself real quick as it'll is just going to get the fifth kill drag is going to be up it's going to be hex drag so it looks like we're going to be fighting for cloud infernal or ocean soul heading into it we don't even know what the soul is. It's not even 15 in, and this Mercy College team already has full objective bounties. I think Renekton might steal blue buff. Ah, oh, no, he was going for it. I think if I think if Boom if Boom was there, he goes for the steal, but it wasn't there. Uh, I think genuinely, genuinely, Renekton has abandoned his lane and is just he his lane is everywhere across the map now, because Dinomar and Dolphin can just easily, easily take that drag slaying the hex drag it looks like we're gonna be fighting for a cloud soul this entire game and now we're just gonna get the second kill on Lux gonna be shutting down biological top unless they can live it echo goes for the kill she's gonna pop cryo that's gonna be her only stopwatch and Renekton finishes it up Renekton unstoppable right now you'll notice he was able to run through Jinx's traps Renekton Never Renekton pops his ability there. He is unstoppable. So abilities like Jinx's traps. And we're going to for a full team fight. No Nocturne with the ult. Jin with the ult. Going to popping that down. Gets the assist and the kill there on the Lux. Also getting the kill there on the Jinx. As that gets shut down. And this Mercy College team is just playing to stay alive. There's nothing they can do. Jinx and Jin both having to flash there just to stay alive. And it did nothing. Echo with his dive roll. Renekton, again, abandoned his lane. Vigar is going to go free farm top just to get his CS back up, I guess. There's no other explanation for it. 17-5, not even 20 in. 10k gold gap, two towers, one, one rifty, one drag. I don't want to jinx him. You know, you hear a lot of people always saying, oh, the casters always jinx it. I hate being cast if it's there. They always, like, jinx us this and that. I feel like I am well confident to say that St. Thomas has won this game. 
Unfortunately, I think Mercy College is going to be fighting from an underdog position. They're going to be fighting for games two and three because Ultimate Trial is just going to be starting Rifty, is going to get Rifty. Renekton, is, Renekton was able to walk from mid to Rifty to top. Set had plenty of time to set something up, get wave control. Renekton walked into lane, cleared the wave, and set his back fighting under tower. He's having to fight two waves right now if he wants to even stay alive. Nocturne can't even contest the Rifty for a smite duel. You know, you always love seeing smite duels, but when it's this far behind, you can't afford to contest a smite duel. As we see the fight going off right there in front of Raptors, Jinx is going to get the barriers down. Pike's going to pull the Lux back in, getting the assist there from Echo, and we're going to be shutting down the Lux. You know, this Lux is the one person you want to get the shutdown for, and she has not been alive for the past two minutes at all. It's just, they're going to sit in, they're going to sit in River, they're going to sit mid, Pike doing a little dance, he doing his little dancey dance there. Just, they're going to crash the wave. Genuinely, if they can get this second, if they can get this tier 2 tower mid, this might turn into an ARAM, as Nocturne is going to go for his ult, is going to stay alive as Echo has to pop ult there. Didn't matter. Did not matter. Dynamar going godlike as this game is hitting 19 minutes and you're already tier 2 tower down mid. Most likely just is going to turn into an ARAM. I'm, I'm sorry to say it if you're a Mercy College fan. I love you. I do. I really do. And I want you to win. But this is a game where Rifty is going to take tier 2 tower by himself. Tower is not going to do anything. He's just going to sit there and Oh my gosh, Pike getting the kill down on the Lux, Nocturne also falling down, and Jin is going to get just dominating the Jinx down bot lane. 12k gold diff, 5 towers plus the in him. Looks like this the St. Thomas team's A ramming it. Pike killing Spree, secondary kill there on the Nocturne. Nocturne wasn't even up for less than 2 seconds. Wow, the Pike finally gets shut down just in time for the set to kill him. And I thought Rifty was going to be dancing at the end of the game. Where we don't even have super creeps. And this is a just a slaughter by St. Thomas. They're fountain diving them. They are fountain diving at not even 20 in. I think this... Can they get the kill? Can they finish it? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 19-11 game. Wow. Wow. I've been playing League of Legends for a long time now, and I can't remember the last time I saw a sub-20 competitive game like that. Mercy College brought out everything they had. They did their absolute hardest to stay alive, and it just wasn't good enough tonight. This first game is definitely going to be a wash here, but I'm really looking forward to see if this Mercy College team can bring it back game two and three. You know, game two and three, always the win condition. I really want to see them pick up that top lane set. Not a factor at all. That top lane needs to be a factor in this game if he wants to stay alive. And we'll see that next game as we take a short intermission. Baiting top jungle. Probably going to go take Krug. If not, go for a dive maybe once it goes in. Yeah, going for the dive. Wow, this is not the play I thought I'd see, but... Echo with first blood there. The Mercy College team doesn't have any eyes here. Oh, we see the we see the Nocturne though. We see the Nocturne. Then we're gonna go for a full gank here. Echo goes in, gets the kill there on set. It's gonna have the backslash, double flash there to keep him in battle. Nocturne gets the shutdown there on the Echo. But Renekta cleans it up with Rifty. Okay, you grab Rifty, you grab Drake. That is gonna take the Drake out, but looks like we're gonna get a secondary gank here. Set might be able to stay alive, the tower can save him. Goes for the ult, but can't get it off. He's going to shut down the safety from the Luxel. Vigar is down, I think, three levels right now. Looks like we're going to get another gank here. Nocturnal might save this Janna here. Nocturne gets the shutdown on the pike. He's going to get the second kill. Lux oh, and he gets it. Jin's going to So abilities like Jinx's traps are going to look for a full team fight. No Nocturne with the ult. Jin with the ult going to pop him that down. Gets the assist and the kill there on the Lux. Also getting the kill on the Jinx as that gets shut down and this Mercy College team is just playing to stay alive. There's nothing they can do. Jinx and Jin both have to flash there just to stay alive and it did nothing. Echo with his, his little dancey dance there. Just they're gonna crash the wave. Genuinely 
if they get this sec if they get this tier two tower mid, this might turn into an A ramp as Nocturne is gonna go for his ult. He's gonna stay alive as Echo has to pop ult there. Didn't matter. Did not matter. Dino Marketing. God like as this game is hitting 19 minutes and you're already tier two towers down mid. Most likely just to try turning into an A ramp. I, I, sorry to say it if you're a college fan. I love you. I do. I really do. I want you to win. But this is a game where we don't even have super creeps. And this is a, just a slaughter by St. Thomas. They're fountain diving them. They are fountain diving at not even 20 in. I think this. Can they get the kill? Can they finish it? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 1911. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Coming back from that break, you know, we had some time to think, reflect, ingest that game. St. Thomas University just, they walked in the room and said, we're winning. Mercy College said, ah, wait, 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 I can try. St. Thomas said, no. Stop. You're not. You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Mercy College put up an amazing, amazing effort, you know. Love to see the amount of plays there from the Nocturne. Lux won her lane. That's the thing. People say, oh, oh, lane gap, lane gap. Lux won her lane. Undeniable. Vyar can, at the end of the day, say, oh, well, my team won. Valid. Lux won her lane. She did amazing. 
Nocturne did as best he could for the amount of counter ganks he had to play around. Did amazing as well. The set in our bot lane was where I'd love to see some improvement from the Mercy College team. St. Thomas doing well, that Renekton, that heavy early game pressure. You know, I mentioned it when we were in that champ select. Mercy College was playing for late game. St. Thomas was playing, I'm going to pummel you into the ground for the first 20 minutes, and then I fall off. So hopefully going to this second comp, I'd love to see this Mercy College team play some tanks. They had one tank on that team. One. That was the set. St. Thomas, arguably two with Echo and Renekton. You know, Echo can kind of go both ways, but my opinion, he can play it as well. Heading into this ban, St. Thomas throwing out the Teemo ban. Looks like another top ban. Top jungle ban, really. Teemo can go both ways. You know, Teemo is a pain to play against. Mercy College banning out the Kiana again. Looks like we might have a one-trick Kiana play over on St. Thomas. Usually if you only see one champ initially banned every time for one team, usually that's an indication there's a one-trick around here somewhere, kind of sniffing them out. With the Teemo ban going down, let's see what St. Thomas brings. Might be taking out that mid laner. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a Lux ban. This Mercy College team, though, they're going to be trying to ban out everything. I'm, I'm expecting a Vigar ban from this Mercy College team. The Sona ban there from St. Thomas probably... They might be forcing the Mercy College support player back onto the Janna. They weren't very viable with it. Didn't really have much use for it at all. I didn't... Hold on, wait, let me think about it. I don't think I ever saw a Janna ult go down. Huh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Sona's definitely hard to play against. Again, there's the Trindamir. Yeah, Mercy College is definitely trying to force... I believe it was SU Dolph in the top laner back onto something he's not comfortable with. Probably a, a Trindamir player as well. Based on everything I'm seeing so far, Ultimate Trial, who was the Vigar player mid, most likely a Kiana main, and SU Dolphin most likely a Trindamir main, just because those work so perfectly together. And Dolphin very comfortable with the Akali as well. That looks like the Mercy College's big two big initial three bands right now are gonna be played against their two grand masters or the two high players for St. Thomas. Mordekaiser ban, again, St. Thomas is trying to force Mercy onto something they don't like top. Seeing the Echo ban come again there, Dolphin is just dirty with the Echo. I know there's a lot more descriptive words with it, but he's dirty with that Echo, really. Ari coming in by Dark Swordsman is most likely going to be seeing that Dark Swordsman go mid for it. That's what I'm kind of expecting it to be, you know, that kind of thing around there. We'll see how they really, really play it. Dark Swordsman. Dark Swordsman, I think, was actually the top laner last game that I'm looking back at my notes here. Yeah. Yeah, that's that might be Dark Swordsman top, which is interesting. Seeing the Ari. Oh, the Twitch. Oh, not a Twitch. Anything but a Twitch. Please, no, not the Twitch. Uh, Twitch down bot lane is just going to be so much pain. He gets those poison stacks, and that's just an early, early game diff. You know, Twitch does a lot of damage late if you can counter him early. It's kind of a... Of course he does damage late if you counter him early. But Twitch can be a non-factor early in game if you have a heavy tank or hook champ down support down bot who can counter him. Oh, there's the Renekton. I'm really expecting that to be an Ari top then going into the Renekton. Ari top is very, it's viable. Absolutely. You see it all the time. And it's a very good counter to that Renekton. You know, she hits one charm and there goes his entire wave control. But I don't know if that'll matter if the Echo's perma ganking him top because then Ari can't do anything. You know, you see the MF down there. I, I'd love to see who their support's going to be. I, I really hope that's an Olawi top. Okay, so so scratch that. Okay, okay, here we go. I got a whiteboard. I got a whiteboard. Hold on, hold on. Olawi top, Ari mid, MF's, MF's going to be down bot lane. We'll see the Twitch bot, Echo jungle, Renekton top, uh, Blitzcrank band. Uh, nobody likes playing the good Blitzcrank. Personally, Instalock, Blitzcrank, anytime I'm playing support. Zin Zhao band, jungle. So now we're kind of just banning things around. Wow running through my head the different comps the Mercy team can be playing right now and I'm pulling nothing. 
Ari is just a straight counter for the Renekton. Lowey is another tank to fight that Renekton. MF is just a good all-around ADC down bot lane. She's a good damage equalizer with the Twitch. Leona countering that hook champ. And then we see the Diana banned for the jungle, most likely trying to force him onto the Nocturne or something similar to that. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I'd love to see how these two teams finish up this draft. Waiting on these drafts now. The Alawi is definitely going to be sent on support. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, sir. Sent on support. That's what you want to see. It's not the hook champ, which would be the ideal, in my opinion, pick. But that Senna is going to equalize damage against the Twitch. And unless you bring a heavy, heavy tank down bot lane here, X Reva, this is going to be an interesting game down bottom. Okay, Pike Twitch. Same amount of damage as Pike Jin. Yeah, it doesn't really change much. Jin and Twitch kind of even. But Senna, Senna might be a game changer down there for bot lane. Alabi can also do a lot more damage with her tentacles. You know, she likes to get in close, get into those really jungle. So I might expect Lowey to kind of roam a bit more jungle. This is going to be a good match. This is the kind of stuff I like to see. Is that Trundle? That's Trundle Jungle. Yeah, yeah, it's Trundle Jungle. Okay, okay. No, no, I was thinking like, Trundle Top? Where's... No, no, it's Trundle Jungle. This Mercy College team is really messed with my head right now. I'm doing jumping jacks. I'm doing loops in my head. But I really hope they can bring this out. I really, really, really want them to bring this out. I think they can. They have the good comp for it. They have a Trundle who can hopefully stop that Vigar. The Alawi can lock down the Renekton. Senna and MF against a Twitch or Twitch and Pike down bot is even damage. This is going to be a straight skill game going into it. Ari into Vigar. She lands one charm. Cage doesn't matter. He's dead. It's over. It's, a, it's an over game. It's over game. So, really hoping to see how these two teams can play it out. And I think while the two teams get ready and get set up, We'll be heading into a short break.
and welcome back. Coming into our game two, we did have a little bit of a lineup change. We see down in the bot lane, Trishy, Trishy Tawasi. Um, that's TT. Congratulations, your name is now TT to me. Is changing out for Exalra there down in the bot lane. Let's see where these people line. Okay, so we do see the Lowy top, Trundle jungle, Ari mid. Okay, so that was kind of how I thought I'd play it around. Going for an early invade top, maybe? Question mark? Uh, five? Um, yeah, no, we're going for it. Okay, we're going for it. We might get the kill there on the Alawi. No. That was interesting. Okay. What are we doing, guys? We're going on a field trip. That's what we're doing. We're going on a field trip with... Professor Vigar, who's just going to lead us around the map, and we're just going to drop people off along the way. Let's say we drop the Renekton off and the Echo off top. We're dropping Vigar off mid, along with Pike, and Twitch is going to ride a wave down bot. So, I don't know how this game's going to go. I'm being honest. I've played a lot of League of Legends. I've even casted a decent amount now. I don't know how this game's going to go. St. Thomas coming just at the peak of their game. Mercy College changing up their lineup, changing up their comp, changing up a lot of stuff going into it. I want to see how this plays out. Looking down here in the bot lane, we see the MF and the Senna. Two, let's be honest, Senna is a hybrid support. I, a lot of games call her a second ADC down bot lane. She's got first strike, so if she can get a proc here on the Twitch, gets the proc there on the Pike, who takes the E early, takes Q into that's going to land it dashes forward it's going to get that early going Renekton is going to be able to get some early CS back top but this bottom lane is where I want to look at for the majority of this game Renekton's going to be able to have that wave control yeah there goes Twitch early in he's going to pop two Pike gets the stun pops some that's going to be a double kill there might get the second kill because we see the Twitch using exhaust to get that second kill off MF is going to die, but Senna's barely going to live. Renekton, heavy wave control. Lowy putting those tentacles down. The thing about a Lowy, she has great wave control, but only in certain areas. So you see those tentacles doing down both sides to protect the tower. Gets the flash off. Going to go for the stun. Gets it. Pike's going to die here. Twitch is going to try and get that early kill. Pike lives off it. How? This Pike, Rivia down there in the bottom lane is just on their A game today. Wow. Flashes perfectly, lands the Q back in, dashes for the stun even when he's rooted by the Senna ability and still lives when we see Dolphin up here. Three minutes in, has a near wave and a half full control up top. Vigar is just dancing. Echo double buff, probably gonna go here for the gank. Gets it. Oh, and Ari with the flash dash. See, that's why Ari is one of those great, great, great counter champs against the Vigar. She has flash, and then she has her dash, which does not affect the Vigar cage. So, this is just something I'm loving to see. Trundle going against the Echo in the jungle, however, is not what you wanted to see. Trundle, great team fight. Really annoying to play against, really. Not a good jungle counter for the Echo, though. Echo has way more mobility. Way more gank, gank ability. I don't even think that's a word, but that's this is League of Legends. We don't use words. We use whatever feels right in the moment. Twitch up CS, top up CS, mid even CS. That's going to be the kill there for Twitch. Twitch going two and zero down there against the bot lane. Echo gets the cleanup kill there, top for the counter gank. Trundle is going to try and go in. He's going to try for the pike kill, but I don't think he will. Yeah, no, didn't even get the kill there. Failed gank completely and even gets the Senna killed. Wave control is going to flip, is going to go for a slow push back onto red side. This is just, wow. This Pike is on his game. I know Riviera don't have an exact rank on them, but I got to assume Plat at the minimum, at the minimum, he's a Plat player, or they're a Plat player, excuse me. And we see both junglers going in jungle actually looks pretty even right now which i will give full credit to alpazal there he was able to keep jungle even that's his entire goal twitch early up cs gets the 
stunned there by Senna. Senna doing a great job trying to stun that Twitch as much as possible. You know, Twitch, very mobile, has the invisibility and then just starts shooting arrows at you with his ult. So as a Senna player, as a support player in general, your entire job is to try and stop that Twitch from CSing. Keep him stunned and rooted as much as possible. Senna tries to go invis there, does, but gets two, three rat stacks, as I like to call them. There's Twitch's little passive ability stacks there. Tries to get the rat stacks, and that's going to allow the St. Thomas team to at least get a little bit of an invis. Might even back off this ultimate trial for the St. Thomas team. Vigar mid gets the kill. Twitch flashes in for it. He's going to go for the dive, and Jackal there, the MF player, perfect walk away. Had four stacks on her. She perfectly dodged the Twitch and the Pike's abilities. Even stops a bit of CS there, so great plays. I think this Mercy College team is doing the absolute best they can. They are playing at the top of their game, and you'll love to see it. You know, they said they beat us first game. So what? Who cares? Wipe it away. That's a term I use with my people all the time. Wipe it away. Wipe it away. Game one doesn't matter. Let's go game two. Let's go game two. We're going to see this dive here. MF 3v1. Can't live. You know, health can only health is 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 the biggest factor. She didn't live there. She didn't she didn't have the ability to live. I can't even form words anymore. Trundle and Senna gonna try to stop the echo, but he's able to get away there. What I'm most likely gonna see is bot lane running up. They might get the ping on Trundle. Top lane is gonna crash in. Renekton might even get first played off this if they can survive long enough to keep that alive. There's the Ari Charm. Vigar perfectly dodges that, is able to stay alive from the Ari Charm. That's going to get the smite off. Trundle going to go in for the dive there against the Echo. We might even get a counter gank here mid if they can keep it alive long enough. Having to flash or else he was dead there. A lot of players might think, oh, Vigar wasted flash. Ah, really not. Ha! MF stole it. I, I, yeah! That's hilarious. That is funny. MF steals the... Sorry. MF steals the scuttle there just as Renekton gets the counter kill top against the Allowi. This will be Allowi's second death of the game, putting Renekton one and one. Pike gets the stun there. Off the Q. Trundle going to be going down. This is going to be a four, This is gonna be a three-man fight here. Twitch is most likely going to die there. Yeah, Trundle gets the shutdown there on the Echo. Twitch is going to live along with Pike. Vigar is going to live. Trade that four into four. Get one kill. Ooh, the Twitch might get some stacks off here. Might get a stack proc. Vigar might even get a cage off if he can land it. Yeah, gets two perfectly in the cage. Twitch is going to live. Wow. Perfect flash there by the Twitch to live off that. Pikes is down. Uh, this St. Thomas team is playing this the same way we saw this going first game. I'm afraid this is going to go the same way we saw that first game. You know, Riviera is playing this Pike support perfectly. You know, a lot of players think, oh... My E only works if I land my Q. No, no, no. Your E is essentially another Q. It's just instead of throwing a hook, you throw your body at it. So you use Q and E the same way. Oh, oh, here comes the gank. Here, here, here it comes. There's the E face blocking it. Ooh, Pike might die to this, actually, with the trundle perfectly throwing boulder there. Flashes for it. He's going to die. Twitch going 5-0 and oh right now. Gets the root. We need to shut this Twitch down. Twitch is one of the most hyper-scaling champs in the entire game. He's going to get the kill there on the MF. Maybe if they can get the kill off there. No. That Mercy College team is going to perfectly parry that, which is beautiful. Love to see that. Twitch is the most, one of the most hyper-scaling champs in the entire game. And Mercy College is letting him go 5-0 and right now. And the rest of the team is just sapping it up. We have 8-1. Not even 10 in. Looks like we're going to get a second gank here by Echo. It is this Echo player, Diomar. If I can get an interview, I want to see Diomar. I want to talk to this person. I just want to know they are popping off. You know, you see a lot of different things from a lot of different players. You know, oh, this is the win comp. Oh, that's the win comp. I'm willing to argue Diomar is St. Thomas's win condition right now. They are the reason that St. Thomas is winning so much because... They're everywhere on the map. The thing is, it's, oh, usually for a lot of jungle players, especially mid to low elo, it's, oh, I either gank or I clear my camps. Diomar is threading it perfectly where they're camping and ganking. Ari's going to get the shutdown there on Vigar. Pike 
might be able to get the kill. He might. He's got. The, he doesn't have flash. Wow. Ari's gonna live with less than 50 health. Pike's hunting for it. Pike is hunting for this kill. He wants it. They want this kill so bad right now. Gets it with the ultimate and the ultimate shutdown there on Pike onto the Ari. He doesn't have flash. He might die. No, no, no. I'm just gonna, just gonna stop saying words until I see it. Yeah. I, I'm slowly learning. I'm slowly learning with the St. Thomas team. I'm not gonna call anybody dead until I see it on the screen. Until I see them dead on the leaderboard, nothing matters. Twitch 61 CS against Mor Misfortunes 41 goes for the full. Jeez, idle, clearing the entire wave and getting the kill. Renekta most likely gonna get the kill there on the Lowie here unless she pops ult. She does pop ult. Doesn't matter. Renekton with his clone kills it, and he's going to get the full wave. That's 100% top tower. Mid lane holding even. Bot lane, if Twitch can ride a wave, that'll most likely be bot tower as well. Ooh. Aw, oh, Renekton with the emotes. Come on, guys. That'll be the kill there on the trundle. Just incredible plays here. You know, this is the kind of stuff you expect to see when you say, I am a collegiate esports player. I play League of Legends competitively at a collegiate level. This is the gameplay I like to see with it. Twitch is rooted. Didn't care. He didn't even try to dodge the root. He went for it because now he can get the setup. Echo's going to get the kill there on the turret. Going to get the kill there on the Senna. Might even set it up. Perfectly feeds it. Twitch with a double kill. You know, a lot of players will think, oh, I want the kill, I want the kill, I want the kill. This Mercy... Wow. Twitch, full Echo rebuy there. Legendary with it. Jeez. Twitch going 7-0 and right now. 17-4, to 10k gold diff, two towers at not even 20 in. I, I think Mercy College will live longer. Yeah. Twitch, over 6k gold by himself. Nine kills, zero deaths, a 700 bounty on him, going nearly 40 CS above the MF there. Twitch, hyper carry. Hyper carry, hyper... S just a hyper champ. He's a, he's a rat after all. Come on. Wow. This Twitch is just dominating this game. I think genuinely, genuinely, Twitch is going to be able to just start one-tapping people if we go into a team fight and he pops his ult. That's just dink, 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 dink. Entire team dead by myself. Thank you very much. Redacting going to get a shutdown there on the Ari. Going to trade it in with the assistance from the Pike, who gets the execution kill there on the Trundle. And Senna and MF are just trying to save towers. Allow is going to let the second wave crash in there as we are defending tier 2 tower top. Tier 2 tower bot is going to be under siege here soon. We pop everything and still only get one kill mid. Literally, MF popped ult. Senna, Senna didn't pop ult because she didn't have the chance to. Trundle was still respawning. That's going to be tier 2 tower top. Going to be sieging tier 3 and in him here in a sec. And now Twitch is just stealing jungle just because they can. Here comes Rift. You're going to take out that tier tier one tower mid. Wow. I am sad to say I, I want Mercy College to fight back. I want the underdog. I want the 20, 20 to 5 upset to come in. But Trundle trying to 2v1 the best he can with the assistance from the Alawi. Pike's going to go up there. Echo's going to be there. Renekton's going to get it. Alawi gets the shutdown. The Renekton might get the kill here. And they... Dude, Echo's going to stay alive. Lowey stays alive. Trundle stays alive. That's a perfect play. Where has that play been all day, Mercy College? Come on. That's the stuff I want to see. Twitch, 11-0 right now. 17, 15 in. This is incredible by the St. Thomas team. They are playing this pixel perfect. One wave, and Ari finally gets a shutdown there on the pike. Pike going 3-3 three and three with an 11 and 0 ADC carry, you know. Twitch just shutting people down left and right. This is what I'm saying. An 11 and 0 Twitch, it's going to take near all five Mercy College just to kill Twitch by themselves. By themselves. Twitch is going to be walking into Fountain and buying whatever he wants. Yeah. 
buys Collector. I, I, I legitimately believe Twitch bought Collector and Boots straight from Gold. That's that's a, that's a that's a legitimate thought from me. He bought Boots and Collector straight from Gold. Renekton gonna be running up just to kill the Alawi. Nah, he's just gonna kill her. I think he will. He might here. <laughs> Echo and Echo and Vigar are gonna be sieging that mid tower with the assistance of Pike. We see Twitch just ah, he's just grabbing camps. He's just grabbing waves just cause. That mid tower is gonna be gone. We have one Rifty, two towers, 10k gold. 19 or 12 kills pike just dodging every re charm like it's his job which it is so you love to love to see it i think we're about to see a mid fight here sin is gonna be popping it off twitch does have r i believe no twitch's r is down vigar's r is up and so is echoes pike has r again let's see it there goes red turret down mid Sieging that top turret, and top turret's about to die here in a second if Renekton can siege this wave through. This is just... I think we're about to see bot lane turret go down as well. Pike and Echo. Twitch is going to auto it. Yep, this is going to be bot turret right here. Pike and Echo. Pike and Twitch are just going to just auto the wave. They're just going to auto the wave and kill it. Renekton's going to go one for one here. Come on, Dolphin. Come on, really? You're winning. Don't throw the mastery. Come on, that's BM. We're better than that, guys. Come on. We're collegiate athletes. We're better than that. There goes the Senna ult. It's going to shut down the pike. Twitch is still going to get the turret off. Hunt him down. Hunt the Twitch down. Ah, hunt him down, guys. Come on. Oh, Twitch is going to be able to run back. You might even get the kill here. Gets the shutdown. Echo gets the Senna. We're going to see Ari running behind, but he's going to... Ari's going to be fighting 2v1 right here. 2v2. But that 2v2 is the Twitch and the Echo. We're going to get the TP here from the Vigar into the back of the fight. 3v1. He's going to land the cage here on the Ari and shut him down. Misses. Yep, there's the cage. There's the smite. Trundle 2v1. Echo does not have Ari. He might die here. Except I forgot who the other champ was behind him. Was the Twitch. Twitch going... 14 and 0, Renekton closely following 7 and 1. 27 and 9, that is for those mathematicians out there. That's a three differential kill for St. Thomas. I can't remember the last time I saw three times the amount of kills on one team to the other. Pyth gonna land the Q, lands the E, Senna's gonna be there, Lowey's gonna be there doesn't matter. Rex is just bodying tower shots now. She's, she's going to die to the Twitch. Double kill there. Renekton going going 9-1. Wow. This St. Thomas team is playing it perfect. A lot of other games, a lot of shooters especially, you'll hear people use the phrase pixel perfect. You, know, you hit a pixel perfect peak. And what we're seeing right now is St. Thomas playing this pixel perfect. If you notice one thing for a lot of the observant viewers, that's tier one drag. That is a tier one drag. No one's even touched the drag. Echo hasn't even looked at the drag the entire game because why? I don't need to look at your drag. I can take it whenever I... Ari gets the kill there on Pike, shutting him down. 5-3-5 five, five on that Pike there. See? I mentioned it, and now they're going for it. Oh, that's... Oh. Eh, we're just going to grab the drag. Yeah, we'll grab the drag because why not? Echo didn't even take more than, I would estimate, 200 points of damage there. Wow. Hex drag is going to come up. And I think this St. Thomas team is just going to take the Hex drag just because they can. I legitimately think they're going to take Hex drag just because they can. It's that kind of game we're seeing tonight. Ari is going to try and just clear wave to keep CS even. We see a 167 to 113. I, I can't even comment on these Twitch kills anymore. He's just walking at people and they're dying. He's going to kill the MF by himself off screen. Allow he's going to pop ult and can't even do it. MF was full health and Twitch just walked at her and killed her. Lowy is going to get the shutdown there with her ultimate. Senna ult's going to go down. Doesn't matter. That's a near ace by the St. Thomas team. I think the only reason Senna lived is because she's in base. 
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. 16 and 0 from the Twitch. You know what? I'm Mercy College. I know I'm going to lose here because uh, I'm, I'm going to lose right now. I want to kill the Twitch. I want to kill the Twitch. If I'm Mercy College, if I'm anybody on the Mercy College team, I want to kill that Twitch just because. I don't want to ever see somebody walk in and flawless me a game. I want to kill the Twitch just because I want to. Idol going legendary, going 17 and 0. Mercy College is going to outlive their previous game time and take us into 20 minutes. MF going to try for the kill. Kill the Twitch. Target the Twitch. Dolphin going to go on a rampage. All office, the Trundle is going to execute Pike, but then Echoes doesn't respond. We take inhibs. We're going on a checklist. You know, a lot of people go on college checklists just because Twitch dies. Twitch died. Yes. Finally. Finally, the Twitch died. Thank you, Mercy College. Thank you. You killed the Twitch. Thank you so much. You killed the Twitch. Senna gets the kill there on Renekton. Ari is going to try for the kill there on the Vigar, but he takes the tunnel out. Might even get the kill there. And, oh, the Nexus might fall here to just Siege Creeps alone. We got the kill on the Twitch. Twitch going 17 now. I want to know how much gold that MF got. I think she legitimately got nearly 17k gold there from just that one Twitch kill. Mercy College is going to be able to stay alive, just focusing nothing on creeps. But I don't think they're going to be long for this world. I think we'll be seeing maybe a two-minute game here as Siege Creeps are sieging all three lanes now. And people are just going to be taking objectives. Baron and Rifties weren't even looked at. Nobody even looked at. That's Tier 1 Rifty. Didn't, didn't care. We're sieging creeps now. We're going to be focusing the entire time. Mercy College is going to be focusing every creep they can. They're not even looking at kills. Here comes Twitch. Ari's dead. That's Twitch R down. He's going to get the second kill. Triple kill. Twitch is going to go for a Penta. He might go for the Penta. They're not going to give it to him. He's going to go for the Penta. He's going to go for the Penta. Nah, Echo denied him the Penta. Good on you, Echo. Deny the Twitch the, the Penta. Oh, come on. Really, guys? That's BM. I'm calling that right now as a captain and player myself. That's BM. That is bad manners right there by the St. Thomas team. You've won. You flash in to get that. That's... Uh, St. Thomas has won this game cleanly. St. Thomas winning the game there. I don't think there was any doubt. I really, really wanted to see Mercy College try. They put their absolute heart and soul into that game. They did everything they could. I love seeing the Senna bot lane there by TT and Aphilias. Yeah, Aphilias down there in the bot lane. Or that was Trundle. Excuse me. I believe that was Jackie Jackie down there in the bot lane with TT. They tried. They brought everything they could. I... I no doubt in my mind, Mercy College was trying their best. They were doing everything they could to win that game. And St. Thomas just said, no. No, 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 no. You're done. Twitch going, I believe by the end, 20-1. I don't think there was anything anyone could have done for that. St. Thomas just walked in and won. They were... They were just going for it the best they could. Hopefully, we'll be able to talk to one of the St. Thomas players. I'd love to get an insight into their mentality, thought process throughout the game. I really want to know what they were doing, what their thought process walking into that second game is. But until we can get that interview all set up, we'll be taking a short break. So stay around. There goes Twitch early in. He's gonna pop two. Pike gets the stun. Pops some. It's gonna be a double kill there. Might get the second kill because we see the Twitch using Twitch up CS. Top up CS. Mid even CS. That's gonna be the kill there for Twitch. Twitch going 2 and 0 oh down there gets the bot lane. Echo gets the cleanup kill there. Top. The counter gang. Trundle. Then game one doesn't matter. Let's go game two. Let's go game two. We're gonna see this dive here. MF. 
Miles will steal Lowey's second death of the game for, for an exit point of one. Pike gets the stun there. Off the cue. Trying to go down. This could be a point. This could be a command fight here. Which is likely going to die there. Yeah, trying to get the shutdown there on the echo. Which is one. They want this kill so bad right now. Gets it with the ultimate. The ultimate shutdown there on Pike on Diari. He doesn't have flash. He might die. No, no, no. I'm just going to stop saying words. Until I see it. Yeah. Who did? Didn't care. He didn't even try to dodge the boot. He went through it. Because now he can get the setup. Echo's going to get the kill there on the turret. He's going to get the kill there on the setup. He might even set it up. Perfectly feeds it. Switch with the double kill. You know, a lot of players will think, oh, I want the kill, I want the kill, I want the kill. This mercy. Wow. Switch. Full echo rebuy there. Fight. And he pops his ult. That's just dink, 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 dink. Entire team dead by myself. Thank you very much. So next we're gonna get a shutdown there on the Ari. They're traded him with the assistance with the pike. We get the execution kill the bot is gonna be under siege here soon. We pop everything and still only get one kill mid. Literally, MF pop ult. Set up Senna did pop ult because she didn't have the chance to run the pop. Oh, it's good to be able to run back. Might even get the kill here. Gets the shutdown. Echo gets the setup. We're gonna see Ari running behind. He's gonna Ari's gonna be fighting 2v1 right here. 2v2. But that 2v2 is Twitch and the Echo. We're gonna get the TP here from the Vigar into the back of the fight. 3v1, he's gonna land the cage here on the Ari and shut him down. Misses, yep, there's the cage. There's the spike. Trundle 2v1. Echo does not have R. He might die times the amount of kills he's going to the other. Pike's gonna land the Q, lands the E. Senna's gonna be there. Lowey's gonna be there. Doesn't matter. Rex is just bodying tower shots now. She's, she's gonna die to Twitch. Ari's gonna try and just clear the wave to keep CS in. We see 167 to 113. I can't even pop one of these Twitch kills anymore. He's just walking at people and they're dying. He's gonna kill the MF by himself off screen. Allow he's gonna pop old, he can't even do it. MF was full health. And Twitch just walked at first kills him. Allow is gonna get the shutdown there with the ultimate. Senna ult O. Mercy College is gonna outlive their previous game time. Take it in 20 minutes. MF gonna try for the kill. Kill the Twitch. Target the Twitch. Dolphin is going on rampage. All off this struggle is an X to Pike. The X is going to take in his. We're going on a checklist. You know, a lot of people on college checklists. Just because. Twitch dies! Twitch dies! Yes! Oh, come on. Really, guys? That's the end. I'm calling that right now as a captain, as a player myself. That's the end. That is bad manners right there by the St. Thomas team. You've won. You flash in to get that. That's... Uh, St. Thomas has won this game.
And welcome back. The, again, an amazing game there by St. Thomas University versus Mercy College. St. Thomas just bringing their absolute S to your gameplay today. Outdrafting, outplaying Mercy College. Mercy College doing their best to stay alive as long as they could, but they just didn't have it. wasn't in the heart of the cards, as, as an old character used to say. But now I'm going to be joined by the ultimate trial, the mid laner there for St. Thomas U University. Saw so him playing. Vigar, how you doing tonight, Trial? Obviously well off that game. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, glad that we were able to get a win on stream for once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that. That kind of implies what well, last stream wasn't that well, sounds like it. I I, I think it was just stream, Chris, because we lost the last three games on stream. So. <laughs> oh, I've always heard of the caster's curse. I've heard that so many places about it, but... Let's walk into that first game. Walking in for it, you know, talk to me about what your uh, thought process is going into that draft. Um, I think the big thing was uh, when we looked at their uh, when we looked at their accounts and what they like to play. Uh, we really didn't see any real priority bans, so instead we decided to pick things from them. Uh, their jungler plays a lot of Echo, their top laner plays a lot of Renekton, so we picked Re uh, Echo and Renekton straight from them. Uh, things yeah, like that. Yeah, saw that going saw into that game going... 1 and game 2, and I think I think your top laner and your jungle need to look at playing a bit more Renekton and Echo, because they were just pixel perfect on it. Your Renekton had near perfect wave control that first game, not letting the set even get, I think it was nearly twice CS by the end of the match. Echo double ganking their perma ganking top and then just barely looking at drags and rifties until it was 15 in where they ju were just controlling the entire map he's uh he's sort of known for uh being able to just uh split push very well that's sort of been parts of our core strategy uh where we were able to just one four and mm -hmm have the confidence that he's able to 1v3, 1v4. He's 1v5'd in comp before. It's, wow, wow. I, uh, I think last semester he was able to first-time Jax and 1v5 in split push. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I believe that. Based on the gameplay we saw, you know, Grandmaster, you kind of assume you'd have that ability around there. But I, as a support main myself, I like looking at the bot lane a lot. Bringing the gin and then the just the twitch. Yeah, I think twenty, uh, 20 and one, one, and one was the final, was the final count? count. I think so. Uh, I know it was. It was very yeah. It was twenty one and eight. He he yeah. absolutely popped off this game. Uh, we've yeah. yeah. We've uh, not really had a lot of games where we could play through bot. A lot of times that was because I was the sport. Uh, my uh, my hands don't work as we saw by me. <laughs> Every single Vigar Q in existence. Oh, let's, uh, I would, I would, I would down, there, down you know, there, you know. Going in going Vigar against a Lux, a Lux and an R is not, is not an easy, not an easy matchup. matchup. Lux being near one of those great counters, both of them with her root and then Ari's charm. It's just one of those really hard things to play against the Vigar. But I also think one of the things that helped the team, helped that Twitch just hyperscale, was your Pike player down bot, who that was, um, God, oh, their name is escaping me. I have to pull it back up. Xavier, yeah. Ravex, yeah. Ravex, yeah. And then a, a, a TT. No, TT was for Mercy College, sorry. Yeah, the Pike player. Pike I know player, I've I know. played a lot of support Pike recently, but that was a different level of Pike play. Yeah, we've swapped around the roster a lot, uh, but he's actually supposed to be our main jungler. Uh, and then, you know, a DMR wanted to swap to jungle, uh, so we moved some people around, and I think now we've sort of solidified what we want to do. But uh, having having an assassin player on a pike, just being able to roam around the map. Uh, That's and... an incredible condition to have. I wouldn't call it win con. You know, in League, it's always, oh, jung diff, top diff. You know, we got the win con. I wouldn't call an assassin pike player a win con down bot, but wow, was it effective. Yeah, I think uh he's he's been able to do a lot of things that uh, i wasn't able to do on the more like sort of soak soak damage tank things uh he's been able to do a lot more than i have uh like he's able to hit those hooks a lot better than i was uh when i was playing things like blitz and nautilus yeah so i think he's 
I think he has done a lot better uh, now that we have him in the support role. Yeah, I saw amazing plays out of them both games. Uh, just the amazing timing. A lot of uh, players, and I think you can attest to this, just playing in ranked and in draft queue. A lot of players, when they play Pike for the first, or even for a lot, they think, oh, the Q and the E are separate abilities. But I think your player showed perfectly tonight to all of our viewers that the Q and the E are one and one. You throw Q, you throw E. They are meant to be used together. I think that's something amazing we saw tonight. And then going back to your top lane, I just have to go back to them because they were, they were splitting. They were winning by four minutes in second game going against an Alawi or Renekton against an Alawi is supposed to be a complete shutdown you know tentacles stop the clones Renekton having to get in close and do damage it was completely the opposite way even without the echo ganks that didn't even happen until minute seven on game two was just shutting it down perfect wave control right into a champ who's supposed to have amazing wave control with her tentacles yeah I think uh he he knows a lot of the matchups because uh, he's played a lot of those matchups uh, uh very well. He's actually from Brazil, uh, and oh, they wow. have a lot wow. more of an aggressive play style in Brazil. Uh, mm -hmm. So he he knows how to win lane, and he knows how to just play by himself. Uh, but when it comes to uh, coming in and showing teamwork, I think that shows that he's able to do a lot more than just play by himself mechanically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was some great teamwork there between our top leader and your jungler the entire time. I think there was a lot of communication. You know, from the spectator role, we only make to really see pings, no no comms. How how was your team's comms throughout that game? Uh so a lot a lot of them were uh we we really didn't have to ping because we were all calling it at the same time. We we were calling our cooldowns uh, when we had certain things, when this person could gank. Um, there was a point in time where uh, we were thinking about diving the Ari, or, or uh, Ari was pushing into me, but right, uh, I had right. to call that I was out of mana. I didn't have to ping anything. Uh, he just continued on his jungle path. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I think we saw that, yeah. It's sort of things where we don't really have to ping uh, because we can just say, oh, I'm coming. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going this way, I'm going that way. Uh, I'll cut him off, things like that. Yeah, and that's one of the hallmarks of a great esports program and a great esports team is when you just make one call, low mana. A lot of players think, oh, low mana is only saying, it's just saying, oh, I have low mana. But I think you epitomized it perfectly with I have low mana is saying that one character is low. That affects the jungler means, well, I can't gank. Or the bot lane means that, well, we can't play, you know, super aggro because that means we can't get a rundown. Things like that. And I think your team epitomized that with their comm. So I have to commend you on that perfectly. Yeah. Well, I've kind of exhausted everything that I wanted to speak about. Do you have any other comments you'd like to make before we finish it, finish it up? Um... I think I, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dio for uh, being able to uh, take the swap to jungle so well. Uh, it's not his main role. Uh, he hit challenger in two different roles, neither of them jungle. Uh, but uh, I, was, I, was, I, I wouldn't I, be surprised I, if by the end of the season he hits challenger in jungle now too. Yeah, uh, I think he's already hit grandmaster this season. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Looking at that. He's been uh, he's been doing it pretty well. Uh, He's, we've been able to do a lot uh, of picking around him, being able to just understand that uh, if we take away uh, some priority picks and bans, then that sets, up, sets us up in the draft really well. Uh, if you go back and look at our bans, there's, there are a few memes in there. Uh, yeah. yeah. I thought I saw <laughs> that. I thought I saw that. But uh, I think... I think it really comes down to just having Dio there uh, and him being able to just do everything that needs to happen and be the main shot caller and things like that. Yeah, well, well thank you thank so you. much for coming in and speaking with us. If you have anything, last minute things you'd like to shout out, you can go ahead or else we'll roll on. Thanks to any fans we might have. Uh, I, I hope that uh, even though I don't think we're, we're going to make it as far this year, I hope that we're able to bring it uh, much harder back next year.
Yeah, well, thank you so much, and congratulations on your wins once again. Speaking to trial there, I think you can see the communication, thought process, and overall gameplay that high ELO and high competitive teams bring into League of Legends. Stuff like having a jungler call things, the communication, the pings, having two grandmasters, a guy picking up jungle for essentially the first time, and then having a top laner 3v1ing, 3v4ing second game, and then allowing your ADC to just hyperscale to the point where it's not even a fight. Amazing job to St. Thomas. They walked in, cleaned up that game like it was nothing. Great job to Mercy College. They did their absolute best. They brought their A game, but sometimes it's just not enough. With that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. I've been Chaotic Thunder. Thank you so much for watching tonight. And as always, continue watching. Follow here at EsportsU. Following us here on Twitch and all of our social media handles. But with that, I'm going to wrap it up tonight. So th again, thank you for watching. Have a good night.